Okay, test, test, one, two, three. Can you hear my microphone? Okay. Um, we are going to go ahead and get started here, even though we are experiencing, uh, I believe, a little bit of technical uh, difficulties with the uh, the tornado warnings on the on the screen, the, the red blocks and everything. That'll all be fixed here in a moment. But we, don't, we need not worry about that uh, because uh, we've got uh, plenty of information to work off of just on uh, the radar here. I want to go ahead and let you know uh, that we do have two tornado warnings currently uh, in effect in um, Illinois, uh, just to the south and east of Davenport. Uh, we've got Henry and Mercer counties in Illinois under tornado warnings. And man, we've already got some really, really impressive looking supercells um, driving those warnings. So uh, the first one here that I want to talk about is riding Interstate 80 just to the south and east of Genesio or Genesio uh, and south of Atkinson. This is the one, uh, the, the first tornado warning that was issued. Uh, it's moving uh, towards Anawan or Anawan, uh, Illinois right now. And this is uh, what I'm talking about uh, when we talk about the area of concern. OK, the hook echo where a potential uh, a tornado could be forming is right down here uh, where you can clearly see clearly see um, that we have uh, some inflow working into the storm we have some rear flank uh, some downdraft winds on the backside uh, they're meeting in the middle here and uh, that right at the base of the storm we've got a rotating mesocyclone forming and uh, once again this is a classic uh, look, uh, you know, for a supercell thunderstorm that's capable of producing a tornado uh, on radar. Actually, really kind of unheard of uh, for February in this part of the world. So uh, it's incredible that we're seeing this, but also really unfortunate for the locals that live in this area, because I do believe that this storm is very capable of producing a tornado as it moves towards Anna One, uh, Illinois. Once again, uh, let me zoom out just to show you a little bit more of like where we are. These storms are just to the south and east of Davenport. Uh, we've got, uh, they're also to the south and west of Chicago. We've got some more storms over here west of Chicago that are moving into Chicago now. Um, those are bringing about uh, one and a half inch in diameter uh, hailstones with them. They're gonna move into DeKalb and then Aurora first, and then they're gonna move into downtown Chicago and likely cause some problems tonight in uh, the form of uh, large hail. Uh, so get ready uh, for that. Um, and then uh, the other tornado warning that we have that was just issued right before we went live uh, is going to be for Mercer County and, and a little bit of Henry County. Uh, this is uh, right around Windsor right now. And let me show you once again, the area of concern right there, the little dangly bit. You see the thing falling off the bottom of the, the storm? That is kind of what we're really looking at as far as, you know, what could become the tornadic portion of the storm. We got warm, moist air flowing into the storm, rear flank downdraft back here, rotation in the middle. If there was a tornado, it would be right around Windsor right now. I don't know if either of these are currently uh, producing. I could be wrong. We want to assume that they are. Um, but you can see that there is broad rotation uh, via radar on, on both of these right now. We expect that that rotation will tighten up if the storms continue to present uh, the way they currently are uh, on reflectivity. They're, they're getting stronger uh, as well, already producing half inch to one inch in diameter hailstones. Um, and that's going to continue to get more intense as we go forward. We've got a lot of storm chasers out there. Uh, the closest ones that we have to these storms, uh, that's going to be Hunter Hurley and Nick Gorman. Um, so I believe um, Brad Arnold is also on those storms, and you can kind of see the top of them through his camera there. Uh, the, the storm chasers have a lot of... <laughs> Um, they've got a lot to consider with today's storm chase. Uh, you know, there's going to be two different modes. Uh, currently, we're looking at some really impressive supercells with uh, forming potential forming tornadoes uh, up here in northern Illinois. We're probably going to see a very similar situation, maybe even a, a more serious situation unfold farther south uh, later this evening uh, in the Ohio River Valley. And the storm chasers have all kind of positioned themselves in the middle here, and they're going to try to pick which one to go after. Uh, some of them have already decided to commit uh, to the south, uh, but some of them are still trying to make up their minds. Uh, but Hunter Hurley, once again, I think that we're going to have him on that uh, storm very soon. And uh, once again, if there's a tornado on, on any of these storms today, because we have a, a, you know such an awesome team, we've got some of the best storm chasers on earth uh, working with us today, uh, we're, not on, we're not only going to be able to show you what that tornado looks like and where it's going just based off these you know abstract colors on the screen, Hopefully, we're going to be able to actually show you it as well, uh, where it's been, where it's going, what it's done, and what it is capable of doing in the future. 
so uh, I think that we're going to have a really busy night. I'm not going to have very many opportunities to do this little plug that I do. Uh, so please, I'm just going to say this once. If you haven't already, please share this stream on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, whatever you want to do. Um, get the word out there to as many people as possible because the way this works, the way that we have uh, saved lives, I believe, uh, in the past through uh, this kind of broadcast is simply by people like you sharing uh, this video on other social media sites or this live stream on other social media sites and getting it in front of people who normally don't watch the news or wouldn't, you know, turn the TV on in the event of, you know, oh, I hear thunder. Um, those people are usually the ones that are most in danger during situations like this. They don't know exactly what's going on can't rely on the you know sirens so we want to be there uh, for those people so please help us uh, spread the word if you don't have other social media um, sites I don't blame you at all but uh, what you can do is just hit like here on YouTube and the YouTube algorithm will take care of the hard part for us and put us in front of those people who uh, really need uh, the informa information okay all right, so once again, if you're just now tuning in, we've got Brad Arnold out there, Hunter Hurley, Freddie McKinney, Steven. Uh, we've got um, also some people. I don't know who those last two storm chasers are, but it looks like the, uh, the, the overlay is still not uh, updating correctly, but we'll get that fixed momentarily. Uh, but we've got a bunch of good uh, storm chasers out there, and we've also got um, uh, meteorologist Andy Hill in the background. He's going to be turning the, the, the lights green just as soon as he's got some uh, input for us here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, already, here we go. Uh, Andy, go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I'm actually here to give you an update on the Atkinson and one cell. Um, from the, on the velocity, you can see there's a very tight couplet right in the hook, which is the worst thing. Uh, you don't want to see that happen. Um, so I expect that this may be producing a funnel cloud, may have a visible funnel cloud right now, should be uh, readily visible to any storm chasers in the area and also to these towns. But it has a, a very nasty look on the radar right now. So I would uh, go ahead and give one another warning to Anna 1, Illinois, along I-80 here uh, before this storm reaches you. The dangerous part of this storm for sure is uh, coming your way. So hopefully that didn't produce anything just then, but this storm is in a really unique spot on the northern side side of a uh, dry line that we actually have in Illinois where the moisture changes rapidly over a few miles. Uh, so there's certainly a ton of lift right near the low pressure center here and the storm is going to probably continue to the east for quite some time right along I-80. So go ahead and let everyone know uh, at ahead of this thing along the I-80 corridor into uh, north central Illinois that these uh, storms are coming in the tornado watch. So uh, we will be here all night for that. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Andy. And now the uh, National Weather Service has also upgraded that uh, to a uh, confirmed uh, tornado warning for Henry uh, County, Illinois. We, we have a tornado on the ground here uh, moving in the general direction of Anna 1. Um, so please, uh, please take shelter uh, immediately if you haven't already. Once again, that's going to be for Henry County. Uh, we've also got um, uh, the LaSalle's. Yeah, LaSalle and Lee County, Illinois, under a tornado warning as well. That's a little bit farther to the east. Uh, let me uh, show you that real quick, and then we'll get right back on that other one. Um, this is just a huge mess of a storm here with a big uh, rotating uh, core in the middle of it. That's going to be moving towards Compton and Paw Paw and the I-39 corridor um, just to the west of DeKalb, uh, Illinois. So make sure you're taking shelter over there as well. The most uh, impressive storm right now, though, by far, is the one just to the south of Ad uh, Atkinson. If you're in Atkinson, Illinois right now, you're probably getting hail, some really heavy rain, some wind, and all that stuff. Um, you should be taking shelter. Uh, you should definitely be taking shelter. Uh, but the part of the storm that we are most concerned about right now is right down here, the hook echo. The, uh, the This is the part where we think the tornado uh, is forming, and it's going to be moving in this general direction, maybe a little bit more east uh, towards Anawan and Mineral, um, uh, Illinois. So please take shelter right now. This looks like the real deal. I, this is honestly one of the more impressive supercells that we've seen on a live stream in a long time. So um, let's get to shelter and uh, don't be scared. Be prepared. Get into the most uh, interior room of your home. Okay. And cover your head. Uh, a lot of times the most interior room of your home is going to be an interior bathroom or closet, whichever one of those has the least amount of glass. That's your best bet. Um, uh, if you've got a basement, if you've got a storm shelter, by all means, 
use that first. Um, I know, uh, I don't know, some of you guys have the survive storm, uh, storm shelter, uh, but like anything like that is your first option. If not, if not, uh, then you want to get into an interior room or an interior bathroom. Imagine like if you're in that room, if you punch through the wall, is your hand going to go into another room? Good. Punch all four walls. If your hand goes outside, I would try to get more interior than that. And also at the, the bottom floor of your house. Um, and then if you've got time, uh, bring a, a bicycle helmet. If you've got kids, they've got bicycle helmets. Grab them real quick. Because the number one way you're going to get uh, hurt in a situation like this is from fl uh, debris falling on your head. Uh, so we want to protect that noggin as much as possible. And, of course, a charged iPad or, or tablet or any kind of phone. Uh, because uh, sometimes you'll be able to keep uh, cell service. And we'll be able to continue talking to you. And you'll be able to continue to talk to family members or whoever you need to get a hold of uh, for quite some time after the power goes out, hopefully. So that's what's going on now. If you're just now tuning in, I know we got a lot of people uh, funneling in. We do have a confirmed tornado near Atkinson, um, uh, Illinois, moving into Anawan, Illinois. Um, trying to see uh, what our last update looks like. Okay, yeah. Uh, the, the, the storm looks still looks very impressive here near Anawan. Um, it hopefully, uh, if the tornado is st on the ground right now, um, hopefully it goes somewhere between those two towns. But guys, listen, everybody in both of those areas needs to be taking shelter. And also this is a very, very highly trafficked interstate that this is about to cross highway or interstate 80 between Atkinson and Anawan is one of the most dangerous places you could possibly be in America right now. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. And everybody should be taking shelter in Henry County, LaSalle County, Lee County. Um, those counties in Illinois need to be taking shelter right now. The storm to the south um, that also you know, prompted a tornado warning is looking a little bit less impressive right now. But these storms will cycle. And we, um, yeah, we've, the, the confirmed tornado warning up here for Anawan continues. That was the update that we just got there. All right, give me just a moment. I don't know um, who's listening to me right now on the back end, but if we've got somebody working on, I don't have audio again uh, for the warnings that are coming through. So if we could get a refresh on that or, or something, that would be helpful. That, yeah, that's definitely um, a, probably a photogenic uh, supercell if there's somebody. I don't know if there's any storm chasers currently on it. Certainly don't uh, recommend <laughs> anybody coming out of their shelter to try to get a, a, a picture of that one. It's getting dark out there. You can see the top of it, though, through Brad Arnold's stream. Look at that. You see the darkness on the bottom right of the, the horizon there? I do believe what we're looking at in that particular shot from Brad Arnold is the, um, uh, the kind of like the, the flowing top uh, off of the, uh, the top of one of these storms here. Way off in the distance. Give me just a moment here. Yeah, so it looks like there has been a couple of uh, reports of a funnel. Oh, yeah, super photogenic. Yeah, <laughs> there's definitely some, some people that are currently uh, up close and personal with this storm right now, and it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, once again, unbelievable for February in this part of the world. Um, uh, I think what, what we're witnessing though here on radar is the original, um, circulation is probably about to be absorbed into the uh, supercell, but the, the way that the supercell looks, it, it still looks incredibly healthy and it looks like a new, uh, rotation is probably going to immediately try to replace it here as the storm gets closer to Anawan. Uh, so please, please, uh, take uh, shelter now. If you're in Anawan, um, Illinois, uh, other places to take shelter. Uh, because you are under a tornado warning, include uh, LaSalle and Lee counties in Illinois. Let's take another look at that. This one, uh, as far as the tornado goes, sorry. As, as far as the uh, likelihood of there being a tornado in this one, I'm not as convinced as, you know, the other one, but this is still an incredibly strong storm. There is some rotation there, and this is going to be a nasty storm for anybody that gets hit by it, whether you get a tornado or not. This has got two inch in diameter hail in it. Uh, we're talking about 60 to 70 mile per hour winds as well, and this is a big 
chunker of a storm, all right, and it's moving in a way where there's going to be a lot of rain that falls in this general vicinity. So right after the damaging winds and the, the, the huge hail stops, maybe you've got to worry about flash flooding in this area as well. Um, as uh, the storm moves off uh, towards the east, you're starting to really feel the ominous energy of the storm there in DeKalb. That's going to continue to increase in places like Elgin, uh, Batavia, and Wheaton, as well as this approaches uh, Chicago. But the areas that are under a tornado warning right now are specifically Compton, Paw Paw, The Berg, Roxbury, and uh, East Paw Paw. Uh, take shelter now. Okay, we just got a new warning, um, and that's going to continue to be a confirmed tornado warning here. Uh, for our storm that is going through Atkinson and Anna one right now. And this is a big warning that tells us that the national weather service is uh, fairly confident that this supercell is going to be long lived. Um, and we're going to be watching it for the entire duration of this box here, which is going to be the next hour to hour and a half. So unfortunately it looks like the tornadic part of this storm is going to try to ride the interstate 80 area. Uh, so uh, all the way down the line here, Mineral, uh, Man Manilus, uh, Wyanet, Princeton, uh, all these places, uh, Langley and Limerick in Illinois are all in the direct path of an extremely dangerous supercell capable of producing a tornado. I don't like the way uh, this looks, just to be honest with you. This has got to look that, you know, once again, we, it's been a while since we've had isolated supercells on the stream uh, and we know we all know what they're capable of. So please take shelter. You've got a huge heads up if you're, especially if you're downstream there in uh, Man Manlius uh, or Wyanet or Princeton. You've got a huge heads up. It'll be, it probably will be an hour or so uh, before the tornadic part of the storm gets to you. So you've got time, uh, not only to take shelter but to prepare yourself. All right, put on clothes, uh, put on a jacket. Uh, put on uh, shoes. Put on shoes um, that you would, you know, wear outside uh, to go you know, in the rain or something, uh, you know, go ahead and prepare a go bag just in case you have to, you know, evacuate your home in the event of significant damage. Uh, go ahead and, and prepare in all these different ways um, so that um, whenever the storm does get to you, you are not scared. You're prepared. You know exactly what's going on. You know where you're going to go. You know where your shelter is. You've got your helmet, you know, all that good stuff. And let's hope that the storm completely fades out or it misses your area entirely. There's, you're not going to be upset that you got prepared in that event. Okay. You've got nothing to lose unless you don't heed the warning. Right? So uh, go ahead and uh, take the time to uh, get prepared there uh, in uh, places uh, in uh, Bureau, Henry uh, and LaSalle counties in Illinois. So that is a, a really interesting looking uh, supercell there. We'll see what happens with it as we go into the future. It's, it's likely that this is going to recycle and try to produce another mesocyclone. The, the original one, it, it looks like it's been absorbed. It's occluded into the storm. Um, I don't know if the same thing's going to happen with the smaller supercell to the south and west, but it's possible. We're going to continue to watch it. But the tornado warning that was associated with that one has been allowed to expire. Um, let me really quickly, because we got started... I mean, just guns a blazing here. I, I want to give you a, a broader picture of what's going on and tell you, you know, what the plan is for tonight. This is the latest SPC outlook. Okay, uh, the, the orange areas, that's our enhanced risk of severe weather. Uh, almost 17 million people are uh, under the gun for potentially a significant severe weather tonight. Uh, the main threat up here with our storms that we're watching right now and the ones that will move into Chicago later is actually large hail. Large damaging hail is our main concern now. Concern there, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, obviously the tornado aspect is still uh, with us. That changes a little bit whenever the storms start popping up farther to the south later tonight. Uh, the main threat down there, the, the, the part that we're going to be watching uh, the hardest is actually the tornado threat. Now, we're still going to get some big hail, damaging winds, flash flooding, all that's going to be a problem with the storms farther to the south, but there's actually an element to the atmosphere that leads us to believe that significant tornadoes might be slightly more likely in the southern mode uh, than the uh, the northern one. Um, and the fact that we're already seeing, you know, some really impressive looking storms in the northern uh, storms is, you know, maybe not a good sign for what we'll see later uh, in the southern ones. Because right now, the atmosphere near Evansville and Indianapolis and all these places is just cooking up, right? It's just, it's building up. Um, and, you know, we're, 
whenever the storms do eventually form, uh, all that energy is going to be absorbed by them. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I would definitely go ahead and be preparing for a night of severe weather in places like Evansville, Louisville, Kentucky, Cincinnati, maybe even all the way up towards Dayton uh, and just to the south and west of Columbus, uh, even near Indianapolis. Now, the, the gap between the southern enhanced risk and the northern enha enhanced risk is a big question mark. Um, in fact, if you're in Indianapolis today, or Lafayette, or Muncie, or any of these places in central Indiana, in my opinion, the environment for uh, potential tornado genesis is going to be way more uh, prominent where you are than anywhere else. But the likelihood of a storm actually forming in that area is much lower than uh, to your north and to your south. Uh, if a storm does form in western Indiana today and then tries to grow and, and become stronger as it moves into central Indiana, unfortunately, I think that that will probably become the the focus of, of our stream tonight, and that will probably be one of the stronger storms that we see. We're going to hope that no storms form in that area, though, which is likely because there's a cap in place, um, uh, and that's why you're not in, included in the enhanced risk of severe weather. Hey, Ryan, it's Riley. Do you hear me? Um, yes, Riley, what's up? Um, we have narrowed down our issue to SRT on your computer, so if you could restart SRT in Streamlabs, that would be amazing. Alrighty, right, right, right. Let me just see if I can remember how to do that. Okay. Alright, are we fixed? It is restarted now. It looks like we might be fixed. I did not get the ding. I mean, we got the ding in there, but the the thing is, is like the tornado warnings and and stuff that that's popping up. I'm just not getting audio, and then some certain parts are not coming through. You heard you heard the ding. Maybe we just didn't see it. Um, what about the names, the Storm Chaser names? Are those correct now? Yep, the only issue we are having is the audio on your side. Okay. All right, but... Some... And it looks like chat said that they heard the okay. ding and there was no um, visual for that ding, so we are all good now. All right. Sweet. There we go. You guys know, whenever we do these live streams in the spring... I mean, it's a well-oiled oiled machine most of the time because we're doing them every week almost. In the winter, sometimes there's three weeks, four weeks, five weeks that pass where we don't do a live stream. And, and whenever we finally do start it back up, everything's broke. But we're, we're, we're good to go now. We're fixed. Um, if you're just now tuning in, uh, here's a view of our team of storm chasers. I, don't, I, I guess we're, we're still not getting a signal from Freddie. Maybe we need to, if there's somebody else out there that we can pick up for that spot, we need to you know, fill it in. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, that we've got some people out there in Illinois. Uh, we've also got uh, Jordan Hall in Canadian, Texas. I don't know if his, his camera's frozen or not, but earlier um, he was uh, giving us a live view at the incredible wildfires uh, that are happening right now in the uh, panhandle of Texas, which I'm sure we'll talk more about uh, later this evening. But, of course, right now the main focus is our um, big time uh, thunderstorms uh, and, and potential uh, tornadoes that are going on here. Um, latest scan on the uh, Anna One storm. I mean, it continues to look in incredibly impressive. Uh, in fact, that's probably the most impressive velocity scan that I've seen of this storm's lifetime. Uh, the hook echo, the, the actual reflectivity doesn't look as impressive, but I think that during the occlusion process here, we might have experienced uh, at least a funnel cloud or maybe even a touchdown here hey, Ryan, in this North Brad, Uh Storm Chaser Brad Arnold, by the way, is with us. To the main thing that uh, that's what happened with that southern storm near Cambridge, it looked really good for a couple of scans and then that, uh, that cold front came and, came and undercut it. So cold front is coming through right now in Cambridge. Um, but if this cell can stay in front of that cold front, uh, there is no reason that this thing should not keep chugging along. So uh, we're going to watch that storm, and, and we're going to go head towards Princeton and try to intercept it there. 
Um, if these storms start to look more like hailers, our plan is to, uh, we're going to go long tonight. Uh, we're going to head down south uh, towards that other area. We're, we're keeping an eye on it as well. So uh, we're planning on streaming for, you know, quite a few hours tonight. Um, it's going to be an overnight ordeal, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, as you know, nocturnal tornadoes are typically the most deadly because people are asleep. So hopefully people are, uh, hopefully people are heeding these warnings. But we'll be out there in it, and I'll report back once I hear anything or see anything. All right, sounds good. Hey, uh, that was, Ryan, oh, you got a minute? That was Brad. Hunter's trying to come through. I just want to say that um, I know that the stream went down uh, momentarily. I don't know why, but we're back. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think that'll happen again. Um, let's hear from Hunter. Um, Hunter, what's up, man? Wow, Hunter's got an incredible view right now. Hunter, we're live on YouTube. Um, can you hear me? Um, we've, we've got your stream pulled up. It looks intense. Yeah, Ryan, I copy you. We're coming up the storm just east of Sublet, and we've been seeing intermediate wall clouds for the lightning flashes. We're trying to get past a little tree line up here to get you guys a better picture of it. Okay, so Hunter uh, Hurley, I'm trying to figure out what his exact location is. He's, uh, yeah, he's a little bit to the east. Hey, Ryan, do you have a copy of, of an stores. important message? <laughs> yeah, what's up? We are working on getting Adam Lucio put in. I believe he has a tornado on the ground near Earlsville, Earlville, Illinois. Okay. All right. Sounds good. We're going to get Adam Lucio on the stream here as we continue uh, to work on uh, our bugs. I think everybody, you can see us now. We're good, right? We're good. Okay. Um, I still see enough rotation here, by the way, on this storm to um, promote the idea that we uh, potentially still have a tornado down uh, moving up towards Man Manulus uh, in, in Illinois. So please stay sheltered in Man uh, Manulus and uh, Princeton uh, in Illinois. Okay. And then the storm that Hunter is on, the, the big lightning storm that you're seeing there uh, right now is actually the storm that's a little bit closer to Chicago. Um, so Hunter and Freddie McKinney both are on this huge, nasty storm uh, that is uh, located currently um, just uh, near Sublette and Paw Paw. It's tornado warned, and uh, as he said, you know he saw multiple, uh, you know, uh, rotating areas, lowerings uh, on the the front of the storm. And I believe that there's a lot of different places uh, on the 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 bottom of the storm that could be rotating. So we want everybody in Paw Paw and Stewart to take shelter. Right now, we're also probably going to try to see some rotation happen here with the storm that's uh, on the leading edge of this uh, south of DeKalb. Um, that right there definitely looks like something we should be watching. Uh, if we get enough inflow in here, we might see a little bit of rotation try to break out uh, with this one as well. Um, all of this energy is moving in the general direction of the uh, western suburbs of Chicago. So everybody in, over there should be getting ready for at least a very intense thunderstorm, maybe a severe thunderstorm with large hail, and maybe even uh, some tornado concerns. Yeah, there's a lot of... Hey, Ryan, do you have a copy? Um, yes, go ahead. Uh, I have multiple reports now that that tornado that was on Adam Lucio's stream is confirmed. Okay, all right, so Adam is live with us now it looks like we're having obviously the closer you get to a tornado the less uh cell service you have in in our experience uh <laughs> but uh we we're getting some frames here and there from storm chaser adam lucio and uh you we're gonna see the structure of this in just a moment and uh, riley if you could come through i don't have his location on my map so uh, can you kind of give me a better idea of exactly where he is or do you know he's he's near where hunter is isn't he I th I'm pretty sure he is. And Earlville, uh, Illinois. Oh, oh my goodness. I just saw it. I, 
I if just... you want to go ahead and pull up livestormchasing.com in a browser that has the okay. LSM map on it. Did you guys see that? Okay, all right, I see. Yeah, Adam Lucio, his exact location is right here, uh, just to the uh, south and east of Roxbury and south of uh, Paw Paw. Um, and what we just saw was definitely a tornado um, on the ground here right in front of him. So we're going to keep that uh, stream up. Wow. Wow. So once again, this is the, the storm uh, the, that, in my opinion, uh, really uh, didn't have as much uh, rotation on it as far as what we could tell through the um, uh, velocity signatures. And that's why every single time there's a daggone tornado warning, you need to take it uh, seriously and uh, take shelter uh, in the moment that you get that warning. Man, Hunter's got a great view of that, too. Uh, but anyways, we've got a tornado, I, I believe, down somewhere uh, in the general uh, vicinity of Compton, Illinois. Okay? Um, and it's going to be moving uh, generally to the north and east towards Paw Paw. Okay? Um, so please take shelter if you are anywhere uh, in, in the, the vicinity of Compton or Paw Paw, Illinois. I do believe that if this continues to rotate or if this continues to produce a visible tornado, um, uh, the, the tornado warning will be allowed to uh, extend farther east, maybe towards uh, Shibana, Waterman, and Hick, Hickley and Big Rock uh, in Illinois. This is uh, on the western side of Chicago, you know, probably about a two-hour two drive to the west of uh, Chicago there. Unbelievable storm. Screenshot warriors. <laughs> did somebody screenshot that? If you did, send it to me on Twitter or something. Because hey, Ryan, I, I there's could a screenshot be seeing in stream text. Okay, yeah. There it is. I got it. I wasn't seeing things. I've got cat-like vision reflexes. <laughs> That's what we just saw in, the, in, a, flat, in a lightning flash uh, just moments ago through Adam Lucio's uh, live stream near uh, Earlville, um, Illinois. Now, he's, he's in Earlville. This uh, tornado that we you know seen uh, through the live stream is, is north of him, somewhere closer to Paul Paul. Um, in, in Illinois. Okay, so please, uh, if you're anywhere in this uh, general vicinity, take shelter now. This is a, um, and I do want to emphasize that this is a little tornado, but this is a big storm. And I think that because of what we're seeing here, there, there could be like multiple instances of this, right? There could be uh, multiple little tornadoes down on the, on the bottom side of the storm. Inside the storm, we've got baseball or, um, you know, uh, golf ball to tennis ball size hail, frequent cl crowd, cloud to ground lightning, heavy rain, damaging winds. This is just all around a bad storm. Whoever, if you're not maybe in the direct path of that tornado, for example, you're still going to have a bad evening if you get hit by the storm. So we want to make sure that everybody um, takes their precautions equally here. Um, so everybody in that warning box here, respect the polygon. You've heard that before. Everybody in the purple polygon needs to be taking shelter now. Because we could have a tornado here, we could have one here, we could have one here, we could have one here. You, you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of different uh, potential areas of uh, concern. Uh, uh, production, is there any way we can get Hunter Hurley in uh, spot one? His camera view is unbelievable. We cannot have that in number two. My goodness. Are we expecting hey, tornadoes I have here more in Kentucky? Information well? on that storm. Um, uh, yes, uh, near the Ohio River uh, area, uh, specifically close to uh, Louisville, there's an increased chance of tornadoes tonight. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, uh, go ahead. So the storm that we just saw a tornado from on Adam's stream seems to have multiple tornadoes down. I've seen the elephant trunk tornado as well as multiple pictures of a tornado associated with the um, sort of wall cloud, or not wall cloud, shelf cloud at the front of the storm. 
So I do believe that we have two or three tornadoes going on with this storm. Yeah, uh, so Riley is pretty much uh, you're talking about the same thing uh, that we, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about earlier with the just the complexity of the storm, how big it is, and how dangerous uh, anywhere. A new tornado warning it's has be. been so, issued. Um, I, I, I agree. I think we could have multiple uh, tornadoes down with it. Uh, damaging winds inside of it, huge hail in, in the hail core. So uh, everybody, once again, in LaSalle or Lee County, Illinois, needs to be hightailing it to their safe spot. And, of course, this live view from Hunter Hurley is from that storm. He's, uh, he's actually quite a bit south of it right now. Uh, well, actually, he's, he's near Earlville as well. My goodness. Oh, here's the picture of that. If I can get it to work. Oh, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, Hunter Hurley's uh, photo that he just took not too long ago of the storm near Paw Paw, Illinois. It's February 27th, y'all. Not something you see every day. Uh, funnel cloud, uh, multiple photos shared uh, via social media show a funnel cloud near um, Paw Paw. Uh, also, if somebody from the production room can come in here and... Uh, turn my overhead lights on. I'm having a hard time seeing if they change colors right now because I don't have all of them on. <clears throat> yeah, the, the ones right above me. I don't. It's it's the it's that one. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Andy. If I've missed uh, <laughs> if I've missed any of your uh, calls, I'm sorry. I just I wasn't able to see anything. Okay, um, Terry. Thank you so much for that. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, we are currently tracking a uh, severe weather outbreak uh, going on right now. We, we have um, uh, reports of multiple tornadoes uh, down in the, the, the Paw Paw, uh, Illinois area. So anywhere between Sublette, Paw Paw, and Hickley, uh, Illinois, is currently in the, the vicinity of a dangerous storm capable of producing multiple tornadoes, very large hail and excessive golf ball size, and damaging uh, severe winds. So we're watching that. All of this energy is moving towards Chicago, generally. And um, we're also watching. Uh, let me turn this off. We're also watching another storm a little bit farther to the west that produced a, an incredible uh, hook echo earlier. Um, that is now kind of uh, less impressive, I guess. Uh, but there's still a tornado warning for Manlius, Dover, and Princeton uh, in Illinois. Take shelter now. Uh, the lights have turned green, so meteorologist Andy Hill does have uh, some words for us. Go ahead, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I'm most concerned about this the storm in DeKalb County right now um, here in Illinois. That storm has gotten a huge um, uptick in velocity on this latest scan that just came in in the last 30 seconds. Um, the inflow has accelerated quite a bit, and we've also had a nice rear flank downdraft on the other side of the storm, and those are about to connect due north of uh, Waterman, Illinois, on State Road or County Road 23 right there. Uh, the storm is moving to um, kind of in an erratic uh, direction. Uh, the, a new the tornado warning is kind of has like been moving issued. around itself. There's another uh, tornado warning for that or an extension of the one to the south and west. But this is definitely the storm I have my eye on. Out in front of it, the uh, helicity is not that great. It's not that um, conducive for a tornado to form. So I don't know how long this storm has as it enters uh, maybe into Kane County next. But in advance, uh, y'all watch out, out ahead of this thing. I, this is definitely the most concerning signature. Also coming into view uh, with the terminal radar. 
uh, from, um, let's see, one, one of the terminal radars in the Chicago metro. So definitely want to cover this one most closely. Y'all watch out ahead in uh, Caneville and Kane County in Illinois. Okay, uh, thank you very much, guys. That was a meteorologist, Andy Hill, um, drawing our attention to the same cluster of storms that we've been watching, but a separate uh, uh, updraft here that is now really really starting to kick up here north of Waterman. Uh, I would believe that, um, you know, we've got a tornado forming here. If it's not already down, we're going to assume that it is down. If we live in Hickley or Maple Park uh, in uh, Illinois, I'm going to maybe give you some uh, more detailed uh, spots as well. Uh, Afton Center, Troxel, uh, Perry Road, um, Seminole. Oh, man, I don't know that one. Uh, but hopefully you can see it on your screen there. Seminock Road, uh, Highway 10 and Highway 7 uh, in uh, Illinois, just to the south and west of uh, Maple Park. Uh, an incredibly dangerous storm is on the way, and I would just about bet my bottom dollar this is going to produce a tornado if it isn't already. Um, uh, so please take shelter uh, right now. If you don't get hit by a tornado, you are going to get hit by severe winds and potentially hail uh, up to the size of um, you know uh, golf balls. Okay, so uh, another thing that we're watching uh, is uh, the rotation just to the north and east of Paw Paw. Now, this is the 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 rotation I believe we've been seeing a lot of actual uh, photo reports and and, and videos uh, coming out of this area of a tornado. If that's still down, it's going to be going up towards Shibana and Shibana Grove within the next little bit. Um, if you're just now tuning in, all the counties that I'm getting ready to list off are under tornado warnings, and you need to be taking shelter right now. DeKalb County, Bureau County, LaSalle County, and Lee Counties, all in Illinois, uh, you need to be taking shelter. We've got multiple uh, tornadoes, I believe, uh, happening or about to happen, uh, ex hey, especially Ryan, concerned about Brad, the one south of DeKalb. Uh, we are headed north uh, out of Ottawa, headed to Leland, Illinois. Uh, we're not going to go after that one that's headed towards Princeton. It looks like it's getting undercut by the cold front. Um, and these other ones that are up on the main warm front are uh, are really rocking and rolling, uh, obviously, with the amount of tornado warnings. So we're going to head up north uh, towards Leland. Um, these will be a little bit more messy uh, in nature, more rain-wrapped. Uh, we're going to see what we can go get into. Okay, so that was Brad Arnold. Um, I don't know if you guys heard him. Uh, for some reason, the volume got low on me, but... Uh, um, Brad Arnold is in LaSalle County, and he's going to go after uh, one of these tornado-producing storms as well. Um, and we've got some news. The lights are orange, uh, so we've got some news. Uh, go ahead, uh, Chandra. Um, I just want to give you an update. I know these storms are getting really crazy, um, but I just wanted to tell you guys about Texas so far. So I don't know if you've heard about the wildfire. But wildfires. <laughs> some things are just hard to say, you know. But right now, there's currently 10,000 people without power in that state, and the wildfires just keep on getting crazier. Um, as of 4.45 p.m., the governor, Greg Abbott, has issued a disaster. Um, so, ha has issued it a disaster. So, we're keeping updated with all those fires and the families going through all that, and we just hope that it's over here soon. And definitely prayers for all. And definitely watching this Illinois area for sure. So. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much, uh, Chandra. I believe um, Andy's got something for us as well. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, I was just coming through to tell you about the debris ball that you have centered on your screen right now. So we can confirm there is a tornado down north and east of Waterman, Illinois right now, uh, headed due east again. We'll cross into Kane County in about uh, six to eight minutes or so, uh, north of Hinkley and north of Highway 30 and going to intersect Interstate 88 somewhere near uh, east or southeast of Caneville for uh, y'all watch out ahead of this thing. Expect another tornado warning in Kane County. Uh, let them know ahead of time. And then um, I had something else to say, but I forgot what it was. My bad. Okay. All right. Get, get back to us whenever uh, you can. Um, all right. So uh, that's meteorologist Andy Hill drawing our attention to uh, now a debris ball. Um, on radar here, uh, just new to information. The, uh, this tornado warning of, has been uh, upgraded in Maple Park. I believe. Yep, we've got a. This is now a confirmed uh, tornado warning, uh, and uh, we've got a tornado on the ground. On the ground, uh, noted by this debris ball right here. Do you got something else, Andy? 
yeah, I thought of it. Uh, just a quick thing, if anyone at KLOT, if any radar techs are operating that, it'd be great to get this in sales mode so we have more frequent uh, scans of this thing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, um, Andy. Uh, okay, so uh, we've got, this is a pretty, uh, it's getting into a pretty populated area. It's not quite uh, there yet, uh, but unfortunately it looks like this is a tornado that is happening and it's about to impact some people here um, uh, between Hickley, uh, yeah, Hickley and Troxel. Uh, in uh, Illinois. If you know where DeKalb is, uh, the, if you're in DeKalb or Cortland or Maple Park, you've got hail, you've got lightning, you've got wind, it's, it's a bad storm, you need to be you know, sheltered. Uh, but to your south, uh, that's where the, the tornado is, somewhere between Highway 23 and Highway 7 to the west of Troxville. We've got a tornado on the ground. It's moving up in the general direction of Troxville and uh, Interstate 88 near Caneville uh, and Caneland Estates. Okay, um, This one looks like you know, I don't know how long it's going to be down, uh, but if it does stay down for that long, uh, it could cause some uh, some damage here in the, the Troxel area. So if you know anybody out there, uh, let them know what's going on. Um, once again, that right there is what we're looking at uh, as far as where we think the tornado uh, is currently. And also, we've got a pretty uh, apparent uh, CC drop here as well. We've got debris in the air. Um, so... Yeah, this is this is as real as it gets. There's a tornado there, uh, and we're uh, expecting it con to continue to go east. Let's zoom out a little bit, and we're going to come right back to that. I just want to make sure we don't look over anything. I, you know, some people tuned in from one storm, and then we move on, and you know we're, we're watching all of them. Don't worry, uh, Paul. Paul, right now, the tornadic part of the storm that we were concerned about with you has moved off to your east, but now you're experiencing some really strong winds. That's going to continue for another 20 minutes or so, and then the storm, that storm at least, uh, will be mostly uh, over. Um, uh, let's go back a little bit farther to the west. We've still got a tornado warning in effect for Manlius and Dover uh, in Illinois. This storm looked incredibly impressive just moments ago. Now, thankfully, it doesn't look so impressive. It's still got a tornado warning on it. We still need to be sheltered, but thankfully, I think this storm is weakening at least for now. Um, so hopefully we won't see a reissuance of that tornado warning. Uh, currently, I, I know we've got a lot of people watching right now from southern Illinois, from Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio. You guys are going to get all the attention later tonight. Unfortunately, it's not a good thing. <laughs> so I, and I'm not, I know I'm not talking a lot about that area right now, but your storms haven't even been born yet. Um, they're coming. Uh, and as soon as something happens down there, we're going to be the first to let you know. Uh, unfortunately, we've got to continue to you know, uh, focus on these northern storms because they are extremely dangerous right now as they enter a, a very, very populated area. We've got pictures coming in galore, tons of pictures uh, of uh, tornadoes and funnel clouds uh, in and around this area. Uh, so we've got to take every one of these storms uh, seriously. And if you want to see any of this stuff, I'm retweeting it all on Twitter. Um, you know, uh, some of these photos and, and videos that we're getting. Uh, Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, at Ryan Hall, y'all. And also, if you want to go ahead and follow me over there, it's the quickest and easiest place to send me reports, tag me in newsworthy things, uh, send me pictures if you can do so safely. Um, I'll be looking at my notifications periodically over on Twitter, at Ryan Hall, y'all. It's a big part of how we interact with each other here. <laughs> if you don't like Twitter, don't worry. I, I just use it for weather. Only follow me. If, you, if you've never had a, an account before, like just only follow me. Use it for that, and, and it'll be great. Or don't. It just helps. Okay. Yeah, there's 40,000 people in DeKalb. Uh, there's a huge storm going on in DeKalb right now. I know that whenever we start naming off town names like that, you know, people start pouring in from that area. I want to make sure everybody knows that DeKalb, downtown DeKalb is not under a, a, a tornado warning. Uh, DeKalb County is, and it's south of DeKalb where the uh, tornadic, um, uh, you know, uh, concern is. But we, I would still be in my safe spot if I was in DeKalb anyways. I mean, why not? What do you got? What do you need to do? What do you need to do outside right now? You know what I mean? Uh, the the really concerning part, the, the the tornadic part of the storm is a little bit farther to the south between Cortland and Hickley, moving east towards Troxel. Troxel and Maple Park needs to be uh, in their safe spot right now. Pronounce the L? DeKalb? DeKalb? Okay, my bad.
That's a big storm, y'all. It's going to be a nasty one uh, in Chicago uh, at, at some point here in the uh, overnight. Uh, lights are green again. So Andy's got something for us. Go ahead, Andy. Yes, Ryan DeKalb. There you go. Um, I was um, coming in here to tell you about this uh, area of rotation wrapping up very quickly to the south and west of Waterman, Illinois, south and east of Shibona or um, however you pronounce that one. Um, this one looks like it's going to produce a tornado very quickly um, to the north and west of where Freddie is and north of Hunter. Uh, I do think that's coming together so fast that um, Waterman needs another warning here uh, along Highway 30 because um, there's been multiple warnings in this area. I'm sure mul people have received multiple warnings on whatever devices they have, and one may have you know lasted longer than the other, and they're like, is it okay now? It went to the north. But this one uh, is quickly wrapping up and may, may get... Uh, pretty close to the town if it does do something so once again uh, let them know in waterman you know these next few minutes are the and the most important to be taking shelter as the storm approaches from the west okay thank you very much uh meteorologist andy hill for the update there this is the area of new rotation that we're concerned about now moving up towards waterman uh like andy said uh if you're in waterman right now you've had you, your phone's going nuts you, you've got a bunch of different warnings one of them you're right in the middle of the other one you're just on the southwest corner of what's going on don't worry about any of the other warnings right now just know that uh, imagine a new one's about to be issued and, and there's another uh, a, a brand new storm that you got to be concerned about coming right up on the western side of town. Uh, so if you if you haven't taken shelter yet, or if you've thought, felt like you could come out of your shelter, uh, it's time to get back in there um, and um, just wait this one out. We've got a really strong storm right now near Shibona moving right towards you there in Waterman. That one's also going to impact Hickley as well. Uh, so that, that's why the storm is so dangerous, and that's what we've been talking about for quite some time. There's multiple little areas of rotation in this giant complex of storms, and they're kind of fleeting. Like one will get real strong and then go away, and then before you know it, in a completely different part of the storm, another area is rotating strongly, and you focus on that one, and, and then the moment you focus on that one, another area is starting to rotate. So the whole blob here, the whole big red blob that you see on your screen should be taken seriously and treated as if it's a very dangerous storm. Uh, as it moves east. Uh, so everybody downstream needs to be preparing for that. You're you're feeling it in DeKalb right now. Very strong storm. The tornadic part, thankfully, isn't affecting you uh, as much. Uh, but you're going to get the, the big hail, the damaging winds, and all that stuff in Sycamore as well. Lily Lake, uh, Elgin, and West Dundee uh, over the next little bit. 1.5 inch in diameter hail, maybe up to 60 mile per hour winds, okay? <laughs> These are the only two tornado warnings we have right now. Uh, right here in northern Illinois. Um, so we're going to kind of lock in on this uh, for the next little bit. Let me go back to the multi-view there. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I see a lot of you guys are tagging me and stuff on Twitter. I really appreciate it. That helps me more than you know, and it also helps Chandra in the back. Um, who is monitoring Twitter, uh, find uh, information for us. It looks, like, um, it looks like there has been some significant damage in the Anawan, Illinois area, about uh, three miles to the northwest of Anawan, Illinois. I'm seeing some photos of uh, what looks to be pretty extensive damage um, to, well, it's to like a metal, uh, like wooden, you know, like my industry building but definitely looks like tornado damage to me. Um, so yeah, the, just to give you an update on that, we were talking about this storm earlier. It looked very likely to have a tornado on it on radar, and now it looks like uh, there's no doubt that there was a tornado here uh, just to the uh, northwest of Anawan, Illinois. That storm specifically uh, has been, uh, it's no longer producing a tornado, okay? And uh, I, I'm not gonna, you know, uh, put that on the stream those damage photos uh, because it's not a storm chaser that we work with. But once again, I'm retweeting that on on Twitter or X. If you want to see the extent of that damage, it's over there. Uh, somebody in chat just said uh, it always misses Cincinnati. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> um, don't go to sleep just yet. Um, 
you know, obviously don't stay up all night and if you don't want to. <laughs> like it's severe weather. Like we, you've you've been through it before. Uh, but we do have a very, you know, rare February um, enhanced risk for tornadoes tonight in the Cincinnati area. The reason we're talking about the Chicago area and the northern Illinois area right now is because your storms farther to the south have not formed yet. Okay, uh, that's still that's we're maybe a couple hours away from uh, from that. I'm hearing that there's sections basketball going on in the Caneville area. Uh, so there's probably a lot of people uh, out and about uh, right now in Caneville, uh, Illinois. So uh, if you've got family members or friends or if yourself is, is in the Caneville, Illinois area, uh, please know that uh, a very dangerous storm is knocking on your doorstep. Right now, if you go outside, there might be a little bit of light rain. You you definitely see the lightning. You, you hear the thunder in the distance, but like nothing is really going on right now. That's going to change dramatically uh, within the next 30 to 45 minutes. One second. Just looking through. Twitter here. Lots of stuff to take in. Obviously, uh, Chandra will chime in uh, from time to time if there's uh, breaking news. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to kind of pull my uh, focus away from the news feed here and then come back to the radar and update you on what's going on there. Okay, so let's let's go one by one, uh, each of these storms that we're watching right now, and then we'll do another broad view of uh, everybody. Uh, so first of all, big giant blob of red moving towards the western suburbs of Chicago, Elgin, Wayne, Wheaton, Naperville, uh, Caneville, Aurora. All you guys are about to be uh, in the zone uh, for receiving uh, severe winds and damaging hail. OK, uh, there is a small part of the storm that is also capable of producing tornadoes. That part is probably going to go towards the Aurora, Oswego, and Naperville uh, area. Uh, but right now, more immediately concerning, uh, we are worried about the Waterman, uh, Hick and Hickley, and Big Rock areas. Uh, if you're down there, you need to be taking shelter right now. There is a tornado warning. Um, but the, anybody that gets hit by the storm is going to have to deal with the hail and the lightning and the rain and all that stuff. The, the good news is... is um, our tornado warning a little bit farther to the west has been hey, allowed Ryan, to expire. Brad, um, we are south of this tornado warned storm. A new tornado uh, warning has Paul been Paul. issued. Um, we're we're uh, headed towards Yorkville. Uh, very, 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 uh, I mean, tons of lightning with this storm. Also, we're noticing a shelf cloud on the southern side of this. Um, so that would that would uh, show that it's an outflow dominant storm. That southern cell, at least, there, there are numerous cells north of it uh, that are inflow dominant. But as far as the southern cell, it's kind of broken off a little bit. That is outflow dominant. There's a shelf cloud, so strong wind and, and, and very large hail uh, with this one. Uh, we're headed to Yorkville right now and probably going to go into the Chicago metro, um, unfortunately, for obviously a big population area. Yeah, absolutely. Big population area. And, and speaking of that, we've got a new tornado warning that just came out um, uh, for Caneville. OK, so now Kane County is under a tornado warning. Uh, to, uh, radar indicated uh, that also is going to include a Caneland Estates, Elburn, Donny Hill Meadows, and Lily Lake. Take shelter right now. Uh, the rotation is, um, well, we've seen it bounce back and forth. It's not as impressive right now. It will be 15 minutes from now, more than likely. Uh, and it's going to move in the general direction of Maple Park, Caneland Estates, Elburn, and Lily Lake. Uh, and the, the strong winds and, and you know, the, the dangerous part of the storm will also hit Caneville as well, uh, where we're hearing that there's, uh, uh, you know, some basketball uh, games going on. So we need to make sure those people are aware of the very significant severe weather that's about to happen there. Uh, flood advisory also just been issued for DeKalb and Lee counties in Illinois. That's going to probably 
be a problem as well. I don't know if we're going to see enough rain to promote a, um, uh, a flash flood warning, but you see all this energy back here. If that continues to convect, um, you know, we, we're probably going to see a lot more rain kind of move over the same areas over and over again. I do expect there will be some flash flooding problems, at least in, isolated in nature uh, for some people who get hit by these storms. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of uh, Brad Arnold, so right now you can only see uh, Hunter's uh, camera uh, above me, and that's good. He's, he's got a great view. But let's say that you wanted to see Brad Arnold's camera and you didn't want to wait for me to switch to him. If you guys have the Radar Omega app, you can actually look at him yourself. Look at his beautiful uh, picture right there. He's, <laughs> it automatically updates on your map, on your phone. You can see where Brad Arnold is. You click on him. You click on him. And then boom, there you go. You've got his live feed up. He doesn't have service right now, but you can click on any of these storm chasers and you can see um, exactly where they are and, and see the, um, the, the data on their uh, weather stations at 69 degrees on Brad's vehicle right now. Um, and that's an exclusive feature of Radar Omega who you know, supports our stream. So please download that app if, if you're looking for a Radar app. There's a link in the description. And, and Andy has something for us. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, I've been watching this storm uh, a little bit north of our current tornado warnings, just inside the severe thunderstorm warning near uh, Pingree, Pingree Grove, Plato Center, and Gilbert's here. Currently not warned, but is rotating. I do think this storm is outside the best conditions, both thermodynamically and kinematically uh, up here. So I'm not sure if it will produce a tornado, but that since it is not warned right now, I do want to bring awareness to uh, that area. It's actually moving a little bit more to the north as it's on this northern side of the uh, complex of supercells and other storms embedded in this mess here. Uh, but just in case you guys haven't taken a look at that one and you live maybe up closer to Huntley, West Dundee, um, it's a good idea to be aware of this storm just in case it does get warned. We'll have the first look at it. Okay, thank you, Andy. Guys, that was meteorologist Andy Hill drawing our attention to uh, a little bit farther to the north like he was talking about there near Gilbert's, West Dundee, Carpentersville. Um, uh, this is something that we're watching. Uh, it's rotating a little bit. Um, if a tornado warning is issued, we're going to let you know. If not, there's still a big nasty storm on the way, so get ready for that. Um, a little bit farther to the south, the rotation that we've been concerned about, um, uh, well, both areas of rotation, for now at least, have led up a little bit, but the, the entire storm uh, is looking more impressive, right? So we've got a lot of outbound winds, uh, probably producing you know damage uh, down here uh, near Shibona Grove, moving into Franks and Hickley right now. And we also still have some inflow uh, coming in. So this is going to pose the opportunity for a, a new tornado to form at any time. A similar situation is happening up here near Caneville and Elburn, but this one's actually, you know, there, it's a little bit more focused in. It's a little bit more tight. It's not, you know, it's not tight yet, uh, but this could be kind of wrap up into a more concerning uh, area of rotation within the next little bit. So we are concerned about the Elburn, Cane, and Lily Lake area. Please take shelter now um, as the storm uh, approaches you. Uh, I, I do want to, uh, Chandra came through earlier and uh, told us about um, the, uh, the situation in Texas. Uh, we do have storm chaser Jordan Hall, who is in Canadian Texas right now, uh, showing us a little bit uh, of what's going on with the fires there. Earlier, before we started the stream, the, the views that we were seeing from his stream were apocalyptic. I, I haven't seen anything like it uh, in terms of like a, a wildfire. Um, I think I don't know the extent of the damage. Um, Chandra hopefully will uh, update us again uh, at some point about what's going on down there. Uh, but my goodness, uh, the, the wildfires in Texas have been um, incredible today. And as we get more information, uh, we will update you on that as well. Because, uh, you know, obviously our main focus here is on the tornadoes and, and all that kind of stuff. But and that is related. The, the, the dry air uh, and, the, and the high winds uh, that are uh, in, impacting that area are one of the ingredients that are being injected uh, into uh, our storm system uh, today that's allowing for the, the, the tornadic concern that we have. So that's what's going on there. Three tornado warnings. Uh, three, torn three tornado warnings currently in effect. I did just talk about this, but I was just reminded to once again point out that this is the first of two risk areas, and the second risk area is not out of the woods yet. There will be an update 
on the fire in four minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I do want to show you that one more time here. Let me go into my Radar Omega app. Hopefully a bunch of you guys have this for the first time now. This is kind of like a, a tutorial. Okay, I'm going to go into the sidebar on my phone here. I'm going to click the little thunderstorm icon, and I'm going to turn the categorical day one. A new tornado warning on. has been issued. 17 million people in an enhanced risk for uh, severe weather today. The, you can see that this one, the enhanced risk up here near Chicago, it's popping off right now. In fact, we just got a new tornado warning for the storm that we were talking about moments ago on the northern side of that complex. Um, but look at this. What's, what's going on down here? We've got a big enhanced risk from, uh, you know, Paducah, Kentucky, up through Evansville, Louisville, Cincinnati, Dayton, but there's no storms. Does that mean that this area has dodged a bullet or nothing's going to happen down here? I don't think so. I think that um, as we expected, this is a part of the forecast. This is, you know, this is what we knew this was going to happen. Uh, the storms are firing up here first. And it'll be a little while longer before we see them fire uh, farther to the south. The storms are still coming down there. You're not out of the woods just yet. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that. We'll be live for quite some time tonight. And um, as soon as you've got warnings and stuff going on, we will be telling you all about them. All right, so that new tornado warning up here in Illinois includes Pine Greek Grove, Gilberts, Carpentersville, East Dundee, and West Ridge Village. And um, this is the area of concern as far as a uh, potential tornado goes. Hey, Ryan, when you got a second, uh, we just got a glimpse of a lightning of a cone funnel cloud coming down intermediate to the ground. All right, that's Hunter. We're going to pull him up. I think I saw it too there. Uh, Hunter's location is a little bit farther to the south. Let's see if I can't find out where he is. He is um, a just new to the south of Big Rock and has been issued. And if he's got a funnel cloud, uh, that's likely going to be associated to the storm that's uh, actually. Uh, just to the south of um, Hickley right now. There's, there's two areas of uh, rotation that I'm looking at here. Um, but this is also just a... Uh, man, what a mess of a storm system. <laughs> what a mess of a storm system. So what Hunter is showing us right now uh, is the tail, uh, the, the, the updraft zone of this supercell, but it's being rammed into by the forward flank of another one down here. Just a, a huge mess down here. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, actually, we're in between scans right now between the velocity and the reflectivity, and I do think that uh, the storm that's right next to Freddy there on Highway 30 just south of Hinkley is producing a tornado. Um, low ZDR values and a lowered correlation coefficient, I think, is good enough to confirm that as a debris signature right there. So it's just south of Highway 30 and just northwest of Hunter. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. Um, this is where we think the, the tornado is uh, occurring, um, and it's going to continue uh, off to the east there. So um, if, if it does, by the way, uh, the, the Hickley and Big Rock area are uh, of most concern, uh, so please take shelter uh, right now. Freddie McKinney is very close to it. I don't know if we ended up getting his stream or not, uh, but uh, Hunter uh, Hurley is almost just as close to it, and we've got a, uh, a view from his stream uh, above my head there. Yep, Hickley, uh, Illinois, that's where we're talking about right now. Um, downstream, Big Rock, Sugar Grove, and Caneville, uh, all you guys need to be taking shelter. Um, Andy, go ahead. Yeah, Ryan, the... Uh... I, I think that these two circulations right there near Hinkley and Big Rock, Illinois, are actually going to combine. And two areas of enhanced surface vorticity or near surface vorticity could prove to be a very uh, problematic near-term scenario for Big Rock and Sugar Grove in Illinois along Highway 30 if they do uh, come together constructively. So an, a special, you know, watch out for that. And please, you know, if you need one more uh, reason to take shelter, one more stimulus to take shelter, let this be it. Uh, just in case this goes 
you know, worst possible scenario. This is a dynamic situation that we're not sure if it will result in a strong tornado or result in them being torn apart. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, some some more information uh, about where this thing is and, and where it's going. Once again, uh, Hickley and Big Rock, Big Rock uh, specifically and Sugar Grove, uh, you guys are in the path of an extremely dangerous storm. Um, and also anywhere in between those areas, either on uh, Highway 48 or Highway 30, um, we've got to be uh, taking shelter right now. This isn't a very populated area, but if I zoom in on the Radar Omega app, this is a house. Okay, this is somebody's house, this is their outbuilding, this is their garage or whatever. Um, you can zoom in on any random spot here along these roads and probably find isolated uh, residential areas. So it's these people that we're trying to reach, okay? And then the, they are unfortunately in, in the path of what could become uh, a, a strong tornado based off of what we're seeing on radar. We're hoping that an accidental or an atmospheric hiccup happens and, and that's not what we're talking about, but it is possible. And that's why we're here is just to let you know um, what could happen. So uh, Aurora, Illinois is now included in the uh, tornado warning associated with the uh, storm that we're talking about now. Oswego, you guys are uh, also included in that warning. And Batavia, you guys are included in that warning. You guys have a lot of time to prepare, not a lot, maybe 30, 40 minutes. Um, but if you're watching right now and you live in this part of uh, Illinois and you've been thinking, oh man, I hope this doesn't hit me. Well, go ahead and get ready for a worst case scenario so that you can not be scared, but rather be prepared. Uh, we've got uh, time to gather a go bag, charge up some devices that have cellular uh, access. Um, we've got time to put on some shoes and, and you know, scout out the best uh, place to take shelter, hopefully in a basement if you don't have a basement or storm shelter, uh, then uh, the best option is gonna be to uh, get into uh, yeah, an interior room, like a bathroom or a closet, whichever one has the least amount of glass. Cover your head, either with a helmet, grab the mattress off the bed, you know, something like that. Um, because an injury to your head is gonna be the number one thing that could, you know, really uh, hurt you uh, in, in a situation like this. Uh, and get just get ready, like you have time to prepare, which is, a luxury that a lot of people that deal with tornadoes, um, you know, sometimes don't have. If you're watching this stream and you live, you know, downstream in one of these tornado warnings, you have more heads up than most people get. So um, that's what's going on there. We've got a bunch of, I mean, we've got a bunch of counties now under tornado warnings in uh, Illinois. This complex of storms is inching ever so close to Chicago. Uh, next in line here, uh, some, some places that we're going to be talking about before too long is Elgin, Wayne, Naperville, uh, Bolingbrook, and Wheaton. Um, the closer these storms get to Chicago, I think the less likely that we're going to have to worry about tornado problems. Uh, but the uh, the hail and the damaging wind risk is actually going to go up, and the tornado threat isn't going to be zero. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, every, lots of people out here are going to experience a long night of severe weather. Just check back in uh, on our storm a little bit farther to the west. Not a lot going on out there, thankfully. <coughs> New information. Right, Kane County this tornado County, warning County, has been upgraded. Illinois. That uh, warning is now confirmed. And that's that, man. That's the one that includes uh, Aurora and Batavia. So this storm right here, this area of rotation that just went through Big Rock is producing a tornado, is currently producing a tornado. And we'll continue to produce a tornado as it uh, gets near Sugar Grove. Let me dive into a little bit more of the mesoscale here. Oh, Adam Lucio. We've we still got his stream up. Uh, Adam Lucio is uh, on the storm, is on this storm, and this is a picture of it. So there you go. That was just moments ago. This is the tornado. Uh, that we are uh, currently tracking uh, through Big Rock, and next up, it's going to go towards Sugar Grove, Illinois. And it looks like that it's trying to get bigger. So take shelter if you're in uh, anywhere downstream here. Uh, 
want to give you some more information about that. Sugar Grove. Okay, so it, this is, uh, if this tornado remains on the ground, it's going to kind of uh, ride the Highway 30 area um, and, and stay just a little bit to the north of that. So I believe it crossed uh, Highway 30, uh, probably somewhere near uh, Plowman's Park or the Central Machinery uh, Movers Incorporated. And it's going to go up uh, towards the um, Air Classics M Museum, the Whitestone Events uh, area. And then uh, eventually, the closer it gets to, to Sugar Grove, uh, the, the more we'll see it get near that, uh, that bend in the road near Highway 47 over there where the Burnt Barrel Social Grove is and the Village Bible Church. All right. If you know where that stuff is, I think that as this, that as this storm as this tornado approaches Sugar Grove, that's around where um, it'll it'll come into the picture at. Uh, now, this is a situation where, you know, we, we've had uh, several little areas of rotation, you know, they come and they go, that might happen again even before it gets to Sugar Grove. So it could, you know, a tornado could come into any part of Sugar Grove. Um, but I'm just trying to give you a, um, uh, you know, uh, a detailed review of what I'm seeing here currently on radar. Everybody in that general vicinity needs to take shelter, including Aurora, Illinois, North Aurora, and Batavia. Take shelter now. What a mess of a storm system. Um... Production, I don't know if we've got any other options out there as far as uh, storm chasers go, but it would be nice to have a, a something else in spot six. I'm trying to look, see if there's any. Also, it looks like Chris Hall needs a refresh. Maybe Steven. Oh, no, we've got Steven. Ryan Scholl, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Aurora is known as the line for Chicagoland. Okay, yeah, so this is, I mean, this is, we've been talking about it for a while. This is going to make it into the western suburbs of Chicago and eventually into Chicago. And the the closer it gets to that area, you can see it's really trying hard to become a a line of storms. Now, <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about how that means that this is less of a threat uh, because this looks like a nasty line of storms and it's going to continue to be able to produce uh, tornadoes in the way that we've seen for quite some time. Look at that. That is just just such a unique. Uh, wow, that is such a unique radar uh, presentation. So we've got the parent uh, supercell here. This is their, our big troublemaker. The, its updraft is way down here, right? This is where the tornado should try to happen. But the uh, the top of, uh, or the, you know, the, the forward flank of the supercell to the south has kind of crashed into it. But it, it's, it's also kind of like wrapping around the circulation here. Are you seeing this? That is some crazy stuff. And the last scan, uh, as far as uh, rotation goes, also looks uh, pretty concerning. So I still believe we have a tornado down here um, just to the north of Sugar Grove. It's going to cross the road pretty much exactly where I was talking about um, minutes ago uh, near that burnt barrel uh, Sugar Grove social area. Um, that's also pretty daggone close to the Todd Library and the, um, uh, the Wubbanese or the Wubbansee Community College. If you guys know the area, you know what I'm talking about. That's where this tornado is right now, in that bend on Highway 47 between Burnt Barrel Social Grove and the Wubbin Sea Community College. Uh, from there, it'll go towards the uh, Hannaford Woods Brian, to give you an update, farm. we have a few power flashes to our left as we're passing through this little town that we're in right now. A few power flashes going on to our left. Okay, so... Um, uh, Hunter Hurley is now seeing power flashes to his left. 
which is perfectly in line with what we're seeing on our radar here. This is Hunter Hurley's location. You see his little dot there. If he's looking to his left, he's looking this way, and there's our tornado. Uh, Wobin, Wobin C, Wobin C. Okay, sorry. Um, I, I think I saw the lights change. Does anybody have anything to say? Or was that a a, a bloop? Okay. I don't know. Oh, I guess that was a destructive severe. I see. Or considerable. I don't know. Something happened. Um, if you're just now tuning in, the uh. The feed that you see above me is um, Hunter Hurley. He's on a tornado worn storm that's moving into the North Aurora area and uh, north of Sugar Grove in uh, Illinois. We think that there's a tornado down right now. Um, if there wasn't, you know, if there's not right now, then there was moments ago uh, where he's seeing uh, power flashes. And we're just trying to give you an idea of exactly where this is and, and where it's going to go next. I'm concerned about Batavia, uh, North Aurora, and all these places uh, in uh, Illinois here. Take shelter if you're in Kane, Kendall, uh, or Kane or Kendall counties uh, in Illinois. Wow. Aurora is the second biggest city in Illinois behind Chicago. And um, uh, specifically in Aurora, uh, obviously uh, everybody needs to be taking shelter there because you are under a tornado warning. That's why you hear the sirens. That's why somebody probably sent you a link to this stream. Um, you need to take shelter. Um, but I think the biggest problem we're going to have in Aurora is uh, very strong winds and some big hail. Uh, big hail is possible. Also down there towards Yorkville, that looks like it's probably going to try to produce some big hail um, tonight. But uh, we're most immediately concerned uh, about the sh North Aurora, Batavia area uh, for a uh, tornado right now. Power flashes, yeah, so uh, when the storm chasers come through and they say they see power flashes, that is different from lightning. Uh, what they believe that they are seeing is not coming from the sky, it's coming from uh, the ground, uh, and only the ground, uh, because it's a transformer uh, blowing up or uh, a power line snapping or something like that. And usually, if you see more than one power flash in a specific area, uh, that and you also see what we see on the radar right now, that can sometimes indicate um, uh, you know, where a tornado might be. So they say it was out they was to their left or technically to their north, which lines up perfectly uh, with what we're see seeing here on radar. So we, I, I do think that there was a tornado down on the ground when they said that, and there very well could still be one. Yeah, you can see the little bit of a correlation coefficient drop there, too. So we've got some debris uh, being lofted here by this uh, tornado. Uh, another area that should be starting to get uh, concerned about the incoming storm is probably the places just north of Batavia near Geneva. You're not under a warning right now, but I'm sure one will be coming. Um, and regardless of whether you get hit by a tornado or not, you're going to get hit by the very strong winds and potential hail with the storm. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, actually, we're getting that tornado warning right now, but I was going to back that up for Geneva. You can see the 
the, the storm or the tornado is actually taking tornado a line to the northeast been issued. out of the uh, current tornado warning that we just had. But now we have this one, which is good just in time uh, as the storm approaches these areas in this new tornado warning for Batavia, Geneva, and St. Charles in uh, Illinois here. All right. Thank you, meteorologist Andy Hill, um, St. Charles, Wayne, uh, Batavia, um, Geneva. You guys are all under a tornado warning now. That is a, it can it is an observed tornado warning. Uh, so we still believe that this tornado is going to be on the ground here as it approaches your area. So that's south, southeastern Kane County and northeastern Illinois until 7.30 p.m. Central. A tornado-producing storm was located near North Aurora or near Batavia, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. It's a radar-confirmed tornado. Uh, it's important to remember that flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur, and tree damage is likely. This tornadic storm will be near St. Charles, West Chicago, Batavia, Geneva, uh, Geneva, uh, and North Aurora around 7.15 uh, p.m. Uh, and Wayne around 7.20 so that is what we are looking at uh, right now. St. Charles, uh, Geneva, Geneva, sorry, you need to be taking shelter because, man, this continues to look uh, impressive uh, as uh, we get new radar scans in. Yeah, we've still got a tornado on the ground here just to the west of uh, Batavia, Illinois, um, and it's moving in your general uh, direction. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, my hope is that this tornado in particular does not continue. If you look really closely at the velocity, you can see the tornado itself, the the vortex there, and then a little bit of that uh, dead zone where there's a much quieter winds right out in front of it. This seems to me that um, maybe the inflow isn't connecting with it anymore and that it won't have the chance to continue for much longer. However, even if it goes a little bit longer, it's still going to impact some populated areas with a, a well-defined uh, debris signature here. So this is a tornado doing damage and please take shelter regardless of whether it ends up doing nothing to your neighborhood or or not. You know, we hope that it doesn't, but uh, signs right now say that it may be on the weakening phase, thankfully, as it heads into these uh, these uh, suburbs. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Andy. And uh, what he's talking about here is how this couplet is a little bit uh, disconnected from uh, the the big area of inflow winds that we would be watching uh, to support this storm in the future. So hopefully it doesn't continue uh, for a long time, uh, but we do expect it to continue long enough uh, to uh, hopefully guide you or, or, you know, motivate you to get to your shelter in Batavia and Geneva and St. Charles, even if you didn't need to go, it's a good idea to go now. Okay. Uh, because we've seen, We've seen this happen time and time again. You know, if the if that goes away, another area of rotation might pop up soon. And now we've got a whole different uh, scenario to worry about. The good news is, I think, though, is as I take a more broad look at this entire complex of storms, it's very quickly going to a vertically linear system. And there's still going to be some uh, possibility for parts of this line to rotate and produce tornadoes. Um, the threat for long uh, track uh, tornadoes and, and, you know, some of the, the more uh, dangerous uh, kind of uh, storms are, is decreasing. And now we're fo focusing more on a damaging wind and hail threat at the farther east this goes. Uh, but in the very short term, this is still very much a tornado threat, and we need you to get in your safe spots in Geneva, St. Charles, and Batavia. Uh, Andy, what's up? Yeah, Ryan, as this uh, previous tornado we were just talking about you can see sort of that inflow is kind of riding up by it now and there may be another tornado that forms just to the north of it that would be closer to st charles and geneva um, as it heads off to the north and east so if this one uh, starts to become an issue maybe we see it, it, some debris coming out of it on the radar then we'll have uh you know ryan will tell you exactly where this thing is you know down to the street level so we're watching both of these areas now that are that are um you know dynamically interchanging so very, very unique situation here. As for the long term, I am also concerned about the southernmost cell that's down near um, Plano, Yorkville, Oswego. Um, I I do think that the southernmost cell, if it does turn tornadic, will be one of the most, um, will be in the best condition. So hopefully that doesn't happen. It's currently not tornadic, uh, currently hardly rotating, but it is more of a hail producer. So over the next 30, 45 minutes, I have my eye on that uh, in particular. All right.
thank you, Andy. And um, man, the, the the look on the reflectivity is still very impressive on that storm. But what Andy is talking about here, and just like that, once again, our, our focus can shift so quickly in these situations. Our, our original uh, rotation that's kind of being decoupled or, or taken away from the, uh, the, the inflow uh, is, is separating itself while um, the inflow continues uh, by itself to go off to the north and potentially uh, interact with uh, another area of outflow from the storms. And, and we think that that could produce another tornado here soon, uh, maybe as it goes into St. Charles and Geneva. So that's why we want to stay in our safe spot, even A though tornado maybe the, warning has been the issued. culprit that started the tornado warning may not be a problem anymore. Anything can happen. One second. So yeah, St. Charles, Wayne, Geneva, uh, get in your safe spot. It's about to hit. Um, strong winds, hail, the whole nine yards, it's coming. Uh, we, that new tornado warning is uh, for places farther to the north. This includes Cary, Lake Barrington, Lake Zurich, Trout Valley, Barrington, Barrington Hills, Sutton, and Iverness in um, uh, Illinois. That We're getting close to the lake. We started tracking these storms way over here near Iowa, and now they're about to uh, get into the, the Chicago, Evanston, uh, Waukegan area, so get ready. Lots of rotation, uh, sparking several tornado warnings throughout the northern half of this line of storms here. The southern part, however, is not as active as far as rotation goes, but... As Andy was talking about earlier, uh, if that changes, if for whatever reason uh, the one of these storms or this storm moving into Yorkville does start to interact with uh, the environment that's in place in a way that promotes a, a tornado, it could be uh, one of the more um, uh, significant situations. A new that we tornado see, uh, warning, uh, has or been that issued. we've seen so far this evening. We're going to hope that we continue to see an outflow dominant situation down there, though. Another new tornado warning. Now. Uh, this one for Carroll Stream, West Chicago, Streamwood, and Hanover Park. So now we're really, we're pretty much in Chicago here. We're in the western uh, suburbs here near Carroll Stream and Hanover Park. You are under a tornado warning. And the, the area of rotation that has caused so much problems <laughs> today uh, from Paul Paul to Shibona to Waterman to Hickley to Caneville to Batavia and Geneva, is that same storm, that same area of rotation is about to move into West Chicago, Ingleton, and Carroll Stream. So take shelter now if you haven't already. Yeah, multiple areas of uh, potential. Uh, like uh, multiple potential areas where a tornado could form in this whole complex. Uh, <laughs> what's a warning mean? Uh, so a tornado warning means that um, a tornado is either happening or it's, uh, it, 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 it's about to happen. Uh, if you're under a tornado watch, uh, that means that con conditions are favorable uh, for a tornado. Uh, sometimes a tornado watch can be issued before a storm even exists. Uh, but a storm has to exist uh, and uh, conditions have to be very, very favorable for a tornado or we have to actually see a tornado uh, before a warning is issued. So it's a much bigger deal if you're under a warning uh, versus a watch. So you are under a warning right now in Ingleton, Carroll Stream or Streamwood in, in uh, Illinois. So take shelter immediately. I'm sure you guys have seen the the taco graphic um, uh, right now in your kitchen, you've probably got the ingredients to make tacos. So there's a taco watch, right? But if you actually get up and you go in there and you start assembling those ingredients to make a taco, then there's a taco warning. So, yeah. Hey, Ryan, do you have a second for an update on the fire? Uh, yes, go ahead. So just a reminder to everyone that this fire is in the northeast panhandle of Texas. It's been officially named the Smokehouse Creek Fire. Um, we did not get a new update in the hour, but the last update was 250,000 acres burned. That is greater than 300 square miles. 
Um, it's still 0% contained, and if you want to go take a look at the Amarillo radar, uh, that's Cama, the last 50 frames, you can see a wind shift. So the fire that has been traveling to the east is no longer traveling east, and it's traveling south. And the winds are very, very strong, and it's so dry out there that this fire could be moving at upwards of 60 miles per hour. Okay, so devastating, devastating fires today um, in Texas and I believe uh, in parts of Oklahoma as well. Um, and, uh, you know, th this is in impacting, you know, residential areas as well. And it's not contained. It's not stopping. It's continuing into the overnight hours um, and it's moving fast. So um, everywhere, uh, you know, in that general vicinity and similar to a, a tornado watch, you need to be paying attention to the weather and the direction of the winds. And if you see or sm smell smoke tonight, um, because it's crazy how fast this kind of stuff can happen. Uh, before you know it, uh, flames, you know, can be, uh, overtaking an area and, and you, it almost seems like, um, it, you know, it moves faster than what you would think. So, uh, that's what's going on in Texas. I, I don't know as much um, about that because I've been focusing so much on the, the tornado aspect of today, but so thankfully we've got Riley, uh, and Chandra who will be chiming in periodically updating us on the, uh, the fire weather situation over there. Uh, that will continue into the overnight hours tonight. Um, uh, but also, uh, we're going to be talking uh, very much so about the uh, tornadoes as well. I don't know if we've got any convection yet um, associated with our southern mode. Um, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like anything's happening down here. Um, it's currently 8.23 Eastern, 9.20 or was it 7.23 uh, Central. Um I would say that within the next hour or so, uh, we, we will start to see something. And I don't think we'll see, you know, big storms uh, an hour from now, but we'll start to see the beginning stages of whatever um, will be, you know, what we track later tonight. And, uh, you know, coming back up here to northern Illinois, th these storms... Continue to look impressive. We, we've, we've definitely still got um, a reason to be in our safe spot in Carroll Stream and Hanover Park. Um, I think we're probably going to try to see another spin-up happen somewhere between Carpentersville and Lake Zurich here soon. Uh, so all of those places, including Barrington, Barrington, Illinois, need to be in their safe spot. Um, uh, but the storm down there near Yorkville uh, in Oswego continues to look interesting. Um, as it, it's going to try to rotate at some point right now, it still doesn't look like much is happening. Um, but, um, we're going to keep you updated that this is a, an area of concern for us, regardless of whether or not there's a tornado. Um, you know, as this moves East places like Bowling Brook, Orland park, Oak lawn, Oak park, downtown Chicago, Wheaton, Naperville, Elk Grove, Evanston, all these places will be hit by the storm. Um, and you can expect hail around 1.25 inches in diameter and maybe up to 70 mile per hour uh, damaging winds. So now that's, <laughs> that is one of the biggest severe thunderstorm warnings I think I've ever seen. Um, th that big red block there uh, for pretty much the entire Chicago area. Lake Zurich. And just to uh, <laughs> just to update you, if you're new here, I will mispronounce your town name. I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize in advance. But thankfully, whenever I look at the chat and everybody's like, oh, bro, it's Zurich or, you know, Zurich. Like, you know what I'm talking about. That, that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. All right, you know what I'm talking about, uh, but I will. I do try my best to res <laughs> to respect the pronunciation of these names, and once I know how to say it right, I'll try to say it right for the rest of the stream. I cover the weather for pretty much everywhere in the U.S., and I couldn't tell you how many places have the exact same spelling for a, a, a particular town or, or place, and, and they pronounce it completely different everywhere.
looking through Twitter again. I really appreciate you guys for tagging me and stuff and uh, sharing your photos with me. Remember, don't do so. Don't take photos or videos or anything if you can't do so safely. trying to get caught up on chat here but um if you i I see a lot of people are asking questions about the southern uh, part of the severe weather risk i I promise you guys we're going to get there enjoy the moment that you don't have to worry about severe weather right now it's coming it looks like um emergency services are heading west out of Batavia, Illinois, to respond to tornado damage. This is from uh, Hunter Hurley. He's behind uh, what looks like a a convoy of uh, emergency response videos uh, looking to uh, respond to some tornado damage in and around the Batavia, Illinois area, which makes sense that that's perfectly in line with, you know, what we've been seeing on radar. Um, And hopefully everybody in that area was in their safe spot because I, you know, there was definitely a huge uh, heads up uh, as far as the the warning lead time and and stuff like that. So hopefully, you know, I think that the tornado threat, it's at least for this particular storm, uh, I think the tornado threat is going to try to start to go down. Um, but hopefully, um, as we do have a lingering tornado threat, uh, everybody else that's in a tornado warning right now, even if you're way far downstream near Schaumburg, Carroll Stream. Uh, Lake Zurich. Um, hopefully you guys are in your safe spot right now so that if something happens and your town does get hit by a tornado, uh, you are much more likely to come out of that unscathed. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Ohio is not an issue yet. Yeah, there's not a storm. In Ohio. The O'Hare Airport will definitely be impacted in some way. Um, I don't know the details of of that just yet, uh, but this storm is not going to miss Chicago. It's definitely coming for Chicago. Uh, Zachary Smith, thank you very much for the super generous super chat. He says, hey, I have a roof camera pointed right at the storms in Plainfield, Illinois. I can send you a link to stream it. Um, I'm sure we would very much appreciate that if you want to send it to somebody in our Discord server. Fix your mic input. Is there something wrong with the mic? Uh... Uh, will the southern storms be a line or supercells? So uh, it's looking like pretty similarly to what we've seen with the northern mode. It's going to start potentially as some supercells uh, and then turn into a multicellular uh, system. And then eventually it will turn into a line or multiple, 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 multiple. <laughs> I can't talk today. Multiple multicellular systems that and maybe even separate lines, too. It's It's going to be a mess. It's not going to be a clean Oh, here's the one little spot where there's might be tornadoes. Now it's gonna be, it's gonna be a mess. But right at the beginning of when those storms pop up uh, farther south is when we're most likely gonna see uh, supercells. Um, and how how long the isolated nature of the supercells last before they start, you know, crashing into each other and becoming, you know, big messes of systems. That's honestly probably gonna determine a lot about how significant the tornado threat actually is tonight. If it happens fast, if we get a lot of convection all at once, uh, it might be a little bit less. But if we only if we get like a couple storms here and there that uh, tap into you know all the energy and get it all for themselves, uh, we could be looking at a more significant or serious situation. So, it honestly, we just gotta wait and see. Let's just wait. Let's wait for the storms to start popping, and we'll let you know. Uh, 
Uh, any chance of bad storms in Buffalo, New York? Um, it's going to rain. Uh, the, this storm system will impact that area, but I don't think it's going to be... Uh, we're not expecting severe weather. And it'll be much later before it gets there. Not a single storm in Ohio yet. Yep. A new tornado warning. Okay, so we got a new tornado warning. Issued. All the way to the lake. Uh, tornado warning for North Chicago, Evanston, Highland Park, Arlington Heights, Elk Grove, and Park Ridge. This is the uh, this is the g big area of rotation that they're warning for. Okay, so there's lots of inflow coming into the storm like this. There's uh, rain cooled air coming down the backside uh, like this. It's trying to meet up here in the middle and produce a tornado. But right now, this is this is a huge area of uh, rotation, right? Um, so it could happen up here. It could happen right here. It could happen down here. That's why the tornado warning that they've issued is so big. All right. As this complex of storms move off to the north and east, there might be a moment where a tornado drops up here associated with this area of rotation. There might be another moment where another tornado happens in this area associated with this part of the rotation. That's why the, the tornado warning is so huge. We don't know exactly where the tornadoes will happen just yet, um, but you might as well get to shelter because there's a, a better chance than normal that you're going to have to deal with that this evening. Uh, go ahead, Andy. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, I would actually show that uh, storm that's just north of Streamwood, Illinois, and southwest of South Barrington. I would show that on the terminal radar, if you can, T-O-R-D. That's uh, situated to the south and east of it, whereas our Doppler radar is, um, or our dual Doppler radar is due south of it. So we can only see winds that are uh, on each side of it. We can't see winds that are along the radial. So uh, the terminal radar here will give us a lot more information on the rotation. And it does look uh, particularly worrisome right here next to South Barrington. Uh, so I would uh, definitely, you know, take this into consideration in terms of, um, you know, warning anyone out ahead of this in Inverness, Palestine. Palatine or Palatine, Buffalo Grove, Long Grove, River Woods, and up towards uh, I-94 and 294 Junction. Uh, I think that this part of the storm is the most concerning, and it looks the healthiest and most possible to produce a tornado if it is not already doing so. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, meteorologist Andy Hill. That is uh, definitely uh, a concerning look on the, um, uh, the on the storm here near Iverness. Uh, I, would, I would expect that... A new warning uh, would be issued if maybe we saw a couple more frames like this. There it is. Or oh, nope, never mind. <laughs> I haven't gotten used to the light changes yet. Uh, but I would expect that we see an update to this warning if that continues, uh, because I, like Andy, you know, I believe that this definitely is capable of producing a tornado if it's not already. And this is moving into a very, very populated uh, area there near Arlington Heights and Palatine. Take shelter now. Um, and we're going to wait for the next radar scan to come in while we listen to uh, an update from Chandra. Uh, go ahead, Chandra. Hey, y'all. We have another update from Texas. So from about an hour ago, the National Weather Service actually said that the smoke is so significant in Amarillo that it's diminishing the air quality and is becoming a problem for those who have um, respiratory problems. So if you're in that area, definitely seek shelter and try to make it as way as far as way as you can, because that's definitely becoming something that you don't want to deal with. So just keep an update on that and be watching your local news stations, too. And we'll try to keep you updated as much as possible. All right. Thank you, Chandra. Um, Andy, go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. I do believe, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this South Barrington um, rotation may be producing a tornado right now. If you're going to analyze the correlation coefficient, do be aware it's in non-uniform beam filling because the hail it's hitting before it gets to the circulation. So we can't confirm it via a correlation coefficient, but um, basically everything else tells me that the storm is quite dangerous. And you can see um the reflectivity kind of wrap around right in that where the vortex center would be so it's got a donut hole on reflectivity and um thus i would not be surprised if this is upgraded to a confirmed warning so please be taking shelter especially in inverness <clears throat> palatine uh Bu buffalo grove long grove out in front of this thank you andy uh yes this is um definitely looking more and more concerning inverness baldwin palatine buffalo grove wheeling 
take shelter immediately. Um, I, I do want to show you that even now on the the regular uh, radar, the uh, KLOT, um, uh, we can see very clearly now um, what it looks to be uh, like like a tornado. So even with the the decreased visibility there, uh, we we can see a concerning situation unfolding. This is entering a, a very very populated area. Um, so once again, I'm hoping to goodness that people have heeded the warning here um, in uh, Inverness and Palatine. I'm, I do want to. I'm, I'm not going to call out like very, very specific areas because we this, there's a pretty big margin of error as to where exactly this could be. And I don't want to say that like if, you, if you're in the northern part of this warning, you don't have to take it as seriously as if you're in the southern part of the warning. But I do want to give you a better idea as to where I think the tornado is. Just so hopefully it rings some bells hey, and Ryan, do you have a copy? jives with somebody and makes them take shelter. Um, right now... I do believe that um, if this is producing a tornado, and we do believe that it is, <coughs> just to the north and east of South Barrington, um, it's near the. Um, uh, let me let me make sure here. Yeah, it's near the uh, Inverness Golf Club area and the Holly Family Catholic Community Parish. So that that stretch of road between the Jewel Osco and the Raymer uh, Reservoir Park. Uh, that's where the tornado is. Um, and it's going to be moving into Inverness if it's not there right now. Beyond that, it's going to cross the Highway 14 area somewhere around the uh, the YMCA. Uh, so if you know where the YMCA is, um, that is the general path. That's where I think that this will eventually cross Highway 14. And then we do think that it's going to continue towards the Palatine and Hidden Creek area. And that's where things get... Um, that's where things get even more populated. The, the, in the direct path of this, we've got the Palantine High School, uh, Hobby Lobby Walmart, Lexus of Arlington, you know, all of these places right along Highway 58 there. Um, hopefully, we've got people in these areas taking uh, shelter uh, right now. I think we've got an update from Riley as well. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, um, I knew we had a question about um, airports being affected. It looks like um, Midway is not having any departures to um, Ord in the next um, or until 830. And they're both on, going to be on ground stop, ground stop here shortly. OK, thank you, Riley. Wow. Just a crazy look there on reflectivity. Inverness. Illinois uh, may have just taken a, a, a direct impact or, or at least somewhere in the general vicinity there uh, from, a, a, from a tornado. And now that's moving into Baldwin, Long Grove, Buffalo Grove. New information. <clears throat> this tornado update. warning has been upgraded. Uh, it's confirmed. One second. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, an observed uh, confirmed tornado now. for Cook, DuPage, and Lake County, Illinois. Weather spotters confirmed tornado near Inverness and Palatine. Additional tornadoes are possible within the warning. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yes, sir. I want to call out some additional locations as we play back but the last few frames of uh, radar data here. We can see it's, it can also take a, a much more northerly track. Um, up towards Kildeer, Hawthorne Woods, Vernon Hills as well, if it does, uh, in fact, occlude, and um, that will that will cause it to go further north, and that's why anywhere in that kind of, uh, you know, angle of suburbs that we called out is, uh, uh, is in the risk area for this uh, possible or confirmed tornado now. Um, so please be taking shelter all, all all out ahead of this in the in the tornado warning. And for everyone watching uh, who may be getting this tornado warning, I know this is a very populated area. I would say anywhere south of I-90 at the moment has um, a much less uh, chance for tornadoes to happen. The orientation of the line is a little bit more to the south and west, and uh, that will cause the lowest level winds to be crosswise as they get ingested into the storm. So we're not going to see as much of a tornado threat down there. That's why we're not talking about uh, any of the areas from Bloomingdale into the south. Uh, thank you, Andy. Um, so uh, when we were calling out locations earlier, um, we were kind of uh, assuming that the tornado would go uh, in the path of the 
the the parent storm. Uh, all the storms are generally going in this direction. But as Andy just pointed out, there may be an occlusion happening where the rotating part of the storm kind of gets sucked back up into itself. Um, and that would cause the, the, a more northerly uh, trajectory uh, in the storm, which would take it um, up towards Deer Park, Quinton Corners, Kildeer, Forest Lake, and maybe Hawthorne Woods. Um, so uh, once again, either one of those paths is possible right now. Okay, We don't want to get too... Uh, nailed down. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody, <laughs> even close to this thing, is in their safe spot right now. Because as the National Weather Service noted in their warning, more tornadoes, multiple tornadoes are possible uh, within this uh, uh, whole storm. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I, I do think there's a tornado going on right now somewhere near Kildeer and Hidden Creek. Uh, and everybody uh, in the immediate downstream area from Long Grove, Buffalo Grove, Wheeling, um, on all these places needs to be running, not walking to their safe spot. Um, as because this is a very, very dangerous uh, storm. Wow. And as Andy was talking about as well, there's the same storm pretty much it is affecting a lot of the Chicago area. Um, but if you're south of Interstate 90 right now, it looks like the main threat for you is going to be the hail and the, uh, the winds. OK, uh, so the tornado threat is pretty much reserved for areas north of Interstate 90. Um, and probably uh, south of, uh, you know, Vernon Hills. And there's a channel of the that where this is going to continue to the north and east up towards uh, maybe uh, Wheeling, Northbrook, Deerfield, Highland Park uh, and those areas. But this is still going to be a very dangerous and loud uh, storm uh, for you guys a little bit farther to the south. Downers Grove, Darien, Oak Park. Um, uh, Bowling Brook, uh, all you guys are about to experience maybe one inch in diameter hail and 70 mile per hour winds as this powerful line of storms moves through your location. Oh, wow. And the hail is getting big. Look at this. Uh, this is from Luke. He says, massive hail in Elburn. That is definitely uh, some, that is some hail right there. Uh, and more hail is expected uh, in, in places like Downers Grove and Lombard and Addison within the next couple of minutes. Sorry, I'm just looking at, uh, oh my goodness, uh, quick, quickly, this is going on right now too. the fires out there in uh, Texas and Oklahoma. This is just a, what it looks like when you fly over that area right now. This is Texas, United States, y'all near, uh, near Canadian Texas, just to the South. Jeez. All right, um, a little bit farther to the north up here, closer to Chicago, we do have a tornado warning for Cook County, DuPage County, and Lake County, Illinois. That's an observed uh, tornado. Uh, uh, weather spotters confirmed a tornado near Inverne Inverness and Palatine, and uh, additional uh, tornadoes are possible within the warning. Right now, that rotation... Uh, is a little bit more uh, to the north. It's Inverness. Even the warning had it spelled differently. Uh, but uh, I would say that the, the rotation now is somewhere between Baldwin and Kildare, moving towards Long Grove, Forest Lake, and Vernon Hills. Take shelter immediately if you live in any of those places. And my goodness, Hunter has quite the view. Hunter Hurley is back towards uh, Geneva, okay? So he's showing us the backside of the storms that are going through Bloomingdale and Wheaton right now. Uh, Kendi, kindly KN, thank you so much for that. Mr. Brad, no problem. David, thanks for being a member. Appreciate the support, guys. 
Um, and uh, I also thank you for sharing. Uh, I know that we've got people tuning in that uh, didn't know that that probably are hearing about this whole situation first from their interaction with it on YouTube. So hopefully we're helping some people. Uh, this is the O'Hare Airport right now. Looks like people are taking shelter. This is from CJ. We've got people uh, kind of huddled in the hallways of O'Hare Airport right now. I don't know. I don't know the the status of you know every flight or you know every terminal or anything right now, but certainly uh, things are going to be at a standstill for a little while as this powerful line of storms approaches. Observed means um, observed means that it's either been seen um, or reported by a trained uh, spotter. A confirmed usually means that it's uh, you know radar confirmed, so it's not been physically seen, uh, but like it's unmistakable via data that we have from the radar. Yeah, that's good. Get get in the hallways like the <laughs> you don't want to be near those giant windows at the airport. That's for sure. The hallways are probably a good place to go. I'm sure that there's staff there directing people as to where they should be going. OK, here we go. Forty four seconds ago. We've got an update from the Storm Prediction Center about you guys farther south. The severe threat will increase overnight. With Boeing segments and supercells, a new tornado watch is likely. So we're about to see a new tornado watch be issued for Evansville, uh, Owensboro, Paducah, Louisville. Um, maybe it might even include Indianapolis, Bloomington, and Cincinnati. So all you guys that have been hooting and hollering down there, and now's your time to shine, it looks like. Um... Unfortunately, we're going to be tracking some nasty storms with you guys through the evening. I don't know, I don't know like when the stream will end. I don't know exactly how much of a window of opportunity we're going to have here for these to really shine. I'm expecting that the the peak uh, tornado time, I guess, down here is going to be somewhere between an hour from now and like 1 a.m. There's something like in that general. Uh, time frame is when we'll be really focused on that area. No, this is not in Wisconsin. There are some storms in southeast Wisconsin below severe uh, limits. Uh, the tornado warning right now, the one tornado warning that we have for Lake County, Illinois, uh, that's up here in northeastern Illinois. And the rotation still looks very impressive here, so we want to make sure that um, we're in our safe spot. This is no longer an observed or confirmed uh, warning, though, uh, so uh, this is radar indicated. But I still think that a, a tornado could form here if it hasn't already uh, near Vernon Hills and, and move up towards Metawa, Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, and North Chicago. So get in your safe spots. And then hopefully what's going to happen is that tornado producing storm hey ryan we're going to be coming up on what may be more substantial damage here in a few seconds um and we'll track this line through chicago and maybe we'll have a brief break uh before things start popping off down a little bit farther to the south to really dive into the fires because um i think from what i can tell on twitter there's a lot of you guys watching from that area as well Hunter is saying that he's about to get into some damage, so let's pull his stream up here. Oh, he's got some hail.
yeah, so his location right now is um, he's back there between uh, Batavia and North Aurora. So this is an area where we suspect a tornado went through earlier. We, I have, yeah, you can see the debris in the road. We've definitely been hearing a lot of reports from this area um, about uh, tornado damage. So, like, I'm sure he's about to get into the path. Uh, Simper, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. He says, uh, any advice for people in low rise buildings? A lot of Northern Chicago is old four to six story buildings. Uh, plus there are high rises. Um, obviously every building is unique. Uh, every building is different. Hopefully your building has a posted plan, a, a tornado evacuation or, or sheltering uh, plan somewhere. Uh, you could, you know, call management, figure out what that is, but like the general, idea the consensus for a sheltering in a tornado is no matter what kind of building you're in you want to get into the most interior part of it away from windows and you want to get as low down to the ground as possible underground if possible a lot of times big buildings have basements i don't know how that works with your building um but uh yeah i would you, you're not uh, you don't have to be confined to your room if you're like on the top floor if you don't want to you know what i mean if you don't have any other option just get in the middle, get in the uh, most interior part of it. As far away from windows as possible. Or hallway. Yeah, even the hallway probably would be better than the, uh, the like a window facing room. Yeah, there's lots of people driving. Uh, usually we would say like, oh, what's going on? Why there's so many people driving? But like this is a very populated area. There's, You're going to see people on the roads uh, in situations like this, which is why it's so dangerous and why it's so important that um, the, the warning gets out. Yeah, so the, the, the tornado threat is not incredibly high right now for Chicago, but man, the, the line of storms that's approaching Chicago looks nasty on radar. That is definitely going to look ominous as it comes in. Uh, the lightning and thunder, I'm sure, are already nuts. Um, and then you're going to get hit by a wall of rain, hail, and wind. And then before you know it, it'll be over. The strongest part of the storm looks to be on the southern side. Uh, Darien, LaGrange, uh, Oaklawn, Alsip. You guys are probably, you've got the best chance, I think, of seeing some larger hail. Downtown Chicago certainly has a chance of seeing it. Uh, the tornado producing storm is still a problem. Okay, it's not gone yet. Uh, Metawa, Lake Forest, Libertyville, North Chicago, you guys still need to be in your safe spots, but hopefully here soon this rotating part of the storm will exit. Hey, Ron, it's Chris. You got a copy. And we can... Uh, you know, we can come out of our safe spots there. Uh, Chris. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. We've been in the middle of uh, nowhere, Illinois, with hardly any service, but we're finally getting down closer to I-64 nearing Evansville. I guess you've seen the new mesoscale discussion. Uh, we're sitting at 72 over 60, so it's definitely a primed environment to get something going. So um, just letting you know that we're, we're in position. We're just uh, waiting storms to pop off. All right, you heard it there from Chris. Uh, he's actually going to be one of the probably one of the first storm chasers on the more southern storms because all the other ones have are up there in northern Illinois. Um, but yeah, he's in a good environment. Uh, he, you know, he's down there near Evansville, and it's crazy. Once again, it's February twenty seventh, seventy two degrees, sixty degree dew point. We had a little bit of a dry line situation today in Illinois. Um, very uncommon, uh, and that's why you know we're looking at the the kind of uh, 
situation that we're, that we're seeing here. It's a dynamic situation, so we'll see uh, all kinds of uh, crazy, interesting uh, storms uh, tonight. Man, where did everybody, everybody in Michigan is here now. You guys are fine. No tornado warnings in Michigan. There is some strong storms moving into the Waukesha area and Milwaukee. You guys are going to get in on some storms, but uh, they're below severe limits right now. Um, uh, yeah, the, the tornado warned storm is uh, moving it towards Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, and North Chicago right now. Take shelter. It'll, it'll pass, and once it's, once it's gone... We can all breathe a sigh of relief and come out of our safe spots. And then the, the rest of this thing, this big Boeing line segment here, is about to slam into Evanston, Chicago, Oak Lawn. That is going to be a very loud storm for you guys. Hey, man. Hey, uh, just checking in with you. I know it says you're offline, so you may not get this or not. I got two notifications that some people, uh, two two companies, pulled the stream. Um, I didn't know who it was. I was just curious if it was Fox Weather or TWC or who it was. I'm up in just at, in the Chicago suburbs right now. We're about to drop south and try to get some of the stuff that's going to form a little bit later in southern Indiana. That's Brad. Old Brad Arnold. The tornado sniffer, as we call him. Uh, Morgan, uh, thank you so much for sending this in. This is Morgan Brady's view of the storm coming into downtown Chicago. So you can see the lightning there in the distance. That is only going to get much more frequent and much more ominous um, as every minute passes. Hey, Ryan, sorry about that. That was supposed to go to someone else. I apologize. I figured. <laughs> I figured. It's all good. Oh, look at here. Uh, Steve, Steven, one of our storm chasers, is actually in a very similar spot, I think. Yeah, we had multiple uh, confirmed tornadoes this evening in Illinois. I don't know a number yet. I don't know any really anything else about that. Um, that information will pour in throughout the night, I'm sure, and we will share that with you. Um, crazy Baboon, thanks for being a member for over two years, an official sponsor. That's huge. Thank you so much. Glad to catch a stream. My mom is worried about tornadoes north of Detroit, Michigan later tonight. What's the over under? You guys are good. You guys are good. Uh, some winds, uh, you know, some thunder. Like it's going to rain. Like the, the leftover remnants of these storms will make it to you. Uh, the tornado threat is uh, low, 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 low. Okay, it looks like we've got another update from Chandra. Um, go ahead. Hey, y'all. Um, I just want to give y'all an update. Um, there's 3,000 people <laughs> without power in Illinois, but we are also having a debate back here of whether it's pronounced Illinois or Illinois. No, nah, you can't um, debate I'm that. I'm team Illinois. <laughs> for whatever reason so i would like for everybody to back me up thank you i don't think very many people are going to back you up on that one i think that might actually be offensive to some people in illinois <laughs> what did he say? but um uh and you say the three thousand power outages that's in illinois oh i don't think she can hear me now but um yeah so <laughs> that's an update from uh, uh chandra back there in the production room um, Chandra's job is very com complex. 
tonight. She's uh, pushing the buttons, getting the uh, Storm Chasers uh, feeds up on the stream, looking into the the news, uh, and then also relaying it. Um, where you know as it comes out. So thank you to Chandra, but it is not Illinois. That is a cardinal sin. Let's see here. What else we got? <laughs> uh, Enrique, thank you so much for becoming a member. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else on the, uh, other than that um, SPC mesoscale. Hey, uh, this is Brad. Sorry, I sent that message earlier to the wrong person. I uh, wanted to let you know, give you an update on what we're doing. Um, these storms appear to be mainly wind producers now. Um, we're still up in the Chicago suburbs. We're near Oak Lawn, um, southwest of the Chicago metro. Watching these storms as they're coming through, it does look like mainly a damaging wind and hail threat. Uh, now up in these areas, soon enough, these storms will push off over into Lake Michigan. Noticing a little bit of development near Valparaiso, Indiana. Keep an eye on that. Uh, but we're watching those storms that are going to our south near Effingham, Illinois. We're going to drop south towards the other 10% risk um, and, and try to try to stay with those. We're starting to see a little bit of a weakening of the cap there. Uh, so we're going to it's we're going to be uh, just driving for about an hour and a half or so to get in position for the overnight event, which um, it's going to be sorry three hours. Ryan just told me three hours, so uh, we will. Uh, it's going to be a late night, so uh, get your caffeine ready. I've got all the coffee. Absolutely. Um, Storm Chaser uh, Brad Arnold is stocked to the brim with nader beans out there. That's what's keeping him awake. And that's what heightens his tornado sniffing abilities. Um, uh, additionally, uh, I do want to, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about the Southern mode before we come back and watch the storm come through Chicago. But I do think, uh, does Chandra have an update? Does, did we have a, another comment from Chandra? Go ahead if you do. Hello, um, this is public harassment here, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I would just good. like to say, as a woman of honor, I would like to publicly announce that I will take an L when <laughs> I receive one, um, and it is Illinois, and I apologize. <laughs> it's all right. I think you were just trying to start a new, like you were just trying to do your own thing, but like yeah. I just don't think it's yeah, going to catch on. <laughs> it's not going to catch on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chandra, thank you. Um, let us know if you hear anything else uh, significant um, uh, about the fires down there, okay? And Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> so uh, that's Chandra um, and Brad. We've been hearing from everybody tonight. Um, and what you're looking at on my screen now is um, the, the big line of storms that's getting ready to move through Chicago. There is no tornado warning for Chicago right now. I know a lot of people are concerned about that because we had so many tornado tornadoes just to the west of chicago the uh, tornadic um part of this storm has really fizzled out on its approach to chicago but within the next couple of minutes you're going to see a very strong storm in chicago capable of producing 1.25 inch in diameter hail and 70 mile per hour winds um and we do still have a, a tornado warning by the way for north chicago um so you guys need to be in your safe spot but that rotation is about to be out in the lake. Uh, so within the next five to 10 minutes, we'll probably see that warning uh, expire. Hunker down, stay in your safe spot in North Chicago. We're gonna get through this. It's almost over. Now, we're gonna continue to watch this um, line move through Chicago. Uh, and then, you know, we do have some other storms trying to pop up down here uh, near Portage and Hobart in uh, Indiana. Um, and, but like once that line of storms gets out into the lake, we're really not going to have much going on until we start to see our storms form out here uh, in southern Illinois and Indiana, which it looks like maybe some some are trying to pop up right now near St. Elmo and Effingham. So that is a complex that we will watch as it approaches Indianapolis. And remember, there's a couple different things that are happening here. Um, the There's a 
a risk for severe weather and tornadoes tonight in the Chicago area. There's another big one uh, in this general vicinity. Uh, the area in the middle, it's likely that um, storms won't form tonight, but the uh, atmosphere is definitely capable of producing tornadoes, I believe, uh, in central Indiana. So if we do, for whatever reason, see a random storm pop up on the border of I Illinois and Indiana and it moves into central Indiana, just because it's not in the enhanced risk area does not mean that it's not going to be a problem. In fact, I think it could be a big problem. So we're going to be watching that area very hard, but it's likely that we're only going to see storms form in that southern area. So hopefully um, the coverage of tonight's storms is, is limited to where the forecast was given. Approximately 3,000 without power in Illinois. How many people do we have watching right now from Chicago? The storm is on your doorstep in downtown Chicago. You're feeling it already in um, uh, Homer Glen, Darien, uh, Berwyn, uh, Oak Park, Shokey, Evanston. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, downtown Chicago, you're next in line here. Darien, Illinois is receiving hail. Remember, if you can do so safely, send me pictures, videos, reports on Twitter or X, whatever it's called. Um, at Ryan Hall, y'all. That's my name over there. At symbol Ryan Hall, y'all. That's my handle on every social media platform. You can send stuff on Facebook and all the other ones, too, if you want. Here's some hail. Uh, from uh, Lyle, Lyle, Illinois. Penny sized hail. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think that anybody should be giving Chandra a hard time. Especially if she actually did mispronounce it. I thought, I thought she was just trying to ruffle some feathers, personally. But if she actually mispronounced Illinois, d definitely can't say anything here. I've, I've mispronounced every town I've uh, uttered tonight. <laughs> But I think that she was just trying to get a rise out of chat, and it worked. Uh, Ryan Woodl Woodleridge uh, says, what's the weather for Wisconsin for the next three months? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I will I will try to update you on that, uh, but it does look like uh, at least maybe not over the next three months, but for the next week, week and a half or so after this little cool burst that we have following the storm, uh, things are going to be quite warm uh, in the Great Lakes region, much warmer than average. I did just do a tornado season outlook that kind of encompasses the next three months, so you can go watch that on the channel. Riley, if you've got time, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of hail. 
A lot of rain moving into Chicago right now. I do want to mention that the tornado warning has been allowed to expire, so now there are zero, I repeat, zero tornado warnings currently active um, out here in Illinois. Uh, we had, I believe, so far, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven reports of a tornado being on the ground, uh, you know, uh, over the past several hours. Uh, but those tornadoes have lifted, and uh, now we're just dealing with a very a powerhouse, honestly, uh, of a line of storms uh, moving through uh, Chicago with some strong winds and some uh, some hail. And all of our storm chasers are currently on their way south to try to get uh, to the next event, which is going to be the supercells uh, that form uh, in the Ohio River Valley. Potentially. Mid Ohio, okay, yes. Ohio's fine right now, not a storm in sight down there. Uh what can can you talk about what Michigan should expect tonight? Um in Michigan, I mean some snow. Uh, especially in central Michigan. Uh, right now, there's some storms uh, in and around Milwaukee um, and points west, but those storms are not very, uh, they're below severe limits, okay? Uh, there are going to be some heavy rain, some lightning, some thunder, maybe some hail. Uh, but really, uh, as, as the cold front comes crashing through, things are going to get pretty cold, and, and we're going to see some snow tonight in, in Wisconsin for sure. The severe threat is just not there in Wisconsin. I don't, I, I don't know. There's a lot of people from Wisconsin here right now asking about severe weather. I don't know, I don't know where, where you guys heard that from. <laughs> yeah, snow. Yeah, this is a dynamic system, y'all. Been trying to tell you. I'll show you. Um, show you what this could look like so once again this is what we're dealing with now right now watch as we go later into the night tonight around 11 p.m. we should have some more clusters of supercells popping up uh, down here but also look at the snow we've got snow right behind it in Wisconsin Iowa. And you know what's crazy? Some of the places that saw tornadoes tonight <laughs> will be experiencing snow, maybe heavy snow, as early as 4 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. Some of the places that got hit by tornadoes just moments ago will be having snow. I don't know. Hey, Ron, it's Brad. Six, seven uh, hours from now. Um, that storm that is going uh, uh, near Valparaiso right now, it's going to be tracking close to South Bend. That one has my uh, attention. Uh, it's heading into a very good environment. That is the one we're going to go after. I know a lot of people are going to go south, just going on gut feeling with this one, uh, going to Valparaiso in the South Bend area with that southernmost cell that's prefrontal. Okay, so Brad is going after this storm. And honestly, that's not a bad call if you're a storm chaser out here anytime. You've got a line of storms that has a history of producing, you know, damaging winds and tornadoes. And then all of a sudden you see some supercells trying to pop up out in front of it. This environment is very primed for tornadoes. There's probably a lot of wind shear out here. So if this uh, storm does become mature as it approaches Valparaiso and, you know, some of these other areas, uh, it could produce a tornado. Not, it's definitely not certain. But it could, uh, and uh, Brad's going to go inspect it and let us know if it does.
have any guns. Storms uh, still trying to form out here near Effingham. Nothing, nothing significant yet uh, is coming out of these at all. How bad do you think it's going to get in uh, Indiana? Um, I, it's hard to say. This is not uh, a time where we can really forecast right now. We are officially now casting. So just stay tuned as the storms form. I will keep you updated. Um, obviously, you're under a slight risk of severe weather. So there is a chance that some severe weather happens tonight. Now we're in the part where we try to pinpoint exactly what that means for you. Buzz Lightyear says, uh, oh, wow, this is from Atkinson, Illinois, earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, Buzz, yep. Thank you so much for sending that in. That's, that's probably some of the bigger hell that I've seen today. Timothy, thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Any severe weather in the Indy Metro tonight? Yeah. It's looking like uh, severe weather is definitely possible in Indianapolis. Yeah, so um, once again, Chicago, I know we got a lot of people watching. You're getting ready to get hit by a big storm. Um, we do have a little bit of rotation trying to pop back up on the southern part of this line. Uh, so let's hear what uh, Andy's got to say. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, my eye is actually near Homer Glen, Illinois, right now. With this uh, southern part of the line, we actually have um, rather separated a bit from that, you know, more linear look we had earlier that was stretching to the south and west. And now we have uh, quite a few definitely embedded supercell uh, shapes that are taking form here and actually uh, remaining semi discrete within the line. So I'm watching the one near Homer Glen because from the radar site, you can see that the inflow is kind of kicking back into the storm a little bit. It's being sucked towards the updraft. And I think that um, if this trend continues, the environment out in front of it is still very favorable for tornadoes, as you were mentioning, especially if a, one of these stronger storms, one of these stronger supercells can drill through a little bit of the, sta the stable air, the colder air that's uh, right at the surface. So my eye is on Homer Glen and to the east toward o Oak Forest right now, currently not warned for anything tornadic or not tornadic uh, in the near term, but... I think that that is one of the cells that has a uh, potential to do something in uh, the next 30 minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, this is what he's talking about here. This is the, the super cell that's kind of embedded in this line. And now if we switch over to the velocity, you can see very clearly that some inflow is trying to sneak in. So whenever you see that S shape, that means that um, things are trying to twist again in this part of the storm. If we can get a uh, compact area of twisting, uh, this is going to be a perfect candidate for a new tornado warning. Um, uh, as this approaches places like Tenley Park, Blue Island, and Harvey. So I bet that, um, you know, Brad Arnold is going to be torn once again. If he sees what's happening behind him here, um, he's now going to be, presented with the opportunity to continue to go east after the renegade cell uh, or maybe stay where he is or maybe go a little bit farther north and intercept the uh, the you know the the cell that's behind him this storm looks more convincing to me it's more mature right now it's definitely closer to producing a tornado than this one uh, but as Brad noted earlier this is certainly if it for if it does kind of grow a lot and and start to interact with the environment, it also very well could produce a tornado. So we'll see what Brad does. Either way, he's going to help us tell you where the tornado is tonight, and that's, that's, that's what matters. Yeah, there's not a lot uh, to uh, inspect right now in the Val Valparaiso storm. It's just a rain shower right now, pretty much. 
So we'll, you know, whenever we, anything else happens with that, we will let you know, I promise. Big time uh, winds and rain's about to happen there in Chicago. If it's not already happening in downtown Chicago, it'll last about 15 minutes. Uh, the big focus, I think, the probably the most intense part of the storm is definitely to your south, though, in downtown Chicago. That's where we're watching maybe a new area of rotation trying to form here near uh, Homer Glen and Orland Hills. Ryan, <laughs> somebody made an account called Ryan Hall's New Meteorologist, uh, but they gifted uh, some Ryan Hall Y'all memberships. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Austin Cook says, what's Owensboro looking like tonight? Owensboro, the town of Owensboro will look exactly like it has every other night, but there will be some storms in the sky. And uh, <laughs> we might we might have to deal with the, the, the problem. The possibility of some tornadic weather. Um, it's very unlikely that, you know, some that your area specifically gets hit tonight. Uh, but, you know, conditions are favorable for tornadoes. So that's why we're live. As soon as those storms start popping up, we're going to tell you where they are and where they're going. And if Owensboro is, is included in that, you will know everything about it right here. Uh, Casey says, uh, hey, Ryan, I'm near Kings Island in Cincinnati. I'm heading to bed soon. I'm just, I'm just subwoofering what I can expect since uh, these storms are overnight. Um, so <laughs> what you can expect uh, is, uh, you know, a cluster of storms to form to your west and eventually float towards uh, the Cincinnati area. I, I can't tell you right because the storm literally doesn't exist. It hasn't even formed yet. The the storm right now is a gust of wind somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's not uh, there there is no storm. So what I can tell you is that it's expected that a cluster of storms is expected to form to the west of Cincinnati at some point tonight. Maybe there will be a period of time where that cluster of storms is capable of producing some tornadoes. Then it's going to go linear and produce damaging winds uh, and heavy rain. At, at what point that interacts with Cincinnati? We won't know until it's happening. So that's why you're under an enhanced risk of severe weather tonight. Just have some way of getting warnings, okay? Have some way of getting warnings. Um, uh, have, like, your phone wake you up. Hopefully, you've got a NOAA weather radio. If you don't, I highly recommend you getting one. You can get them at the Target, CVS, you know, like. Um, but, uh, yeah. Don't be scared. Be prepared. The lights are orange, so we've got an... Another update from Chandra. Let's let's hear what you've got, Chandra. Oh, I think she's muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. I said, first of all, I am kind of scared to say this state, but I am prepared to say it is Illinois. But we have a graphic update of the power outage. It has increased over the last few minutes that we spoke so the customers out is 7,466, the majority of them being out of Cook um, County. So that number is right at 3,296. So I don't know what's happening over there, but um, hopefully those customers get their power back on here soon. Awesome. <laughs> is, is everything else going fine back there in the production room? No. No? <laughs> we have no, a... I'm struggling. Like, okay. this is, I'm on a bus of struggles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're doing a great job. Keep us updated, okay? And we have pizza. We have pizza oh. on the way, just to let you know. Nice. All right, let me know okay. when it's here. Now we want to start another controversy. Another person in this room, I'm not going to say any names, but Allie um, decided she wanted pineapple pizza. And I said, we just... 
it's just not our day today. Right. <laughs> We're not together. <laughs> so we only we only have pineapple pizza coming right now. No, oh, okay. I, I pulled right, through sweet. and I got us pepperoni and cheese. I hope that's okay. And a cow's up because I'm hungry. <laughs> so. Sounds great. Br- give us a breaking yeah, so news alert. that should alert. be on the door here soon. Just let me know when they get here. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, <laughs> okay. guys. That is uh, Chandra um, back there in the production room uh, helping out in multiple ways. Trying out something uh, different today with some some news reporting. I think it's going great. If you're just now tuning in, we are covering a um, severe a thunder, a severe weather outbreak. We've had multiple tornadoes today in um, Illinois. Uh, we're expecting more, uh, you know, storms to break out in uh, southern Illinois, uh, Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky later. Uh, but right now, we're in kind of a lull uh, period where, yeah, we've got a big storm going through Chicago right now. Um, but uh, once that gets past Chicago, we're really not going to have much of anything to talk about until the next batch of storms starts popping up a little bit farther to the south which it should be pretty instantaneous when we really have nothing to talk about up there uh, these storms should be growing quite a bit uh so you know we'll we'll go from one area to the other but most of these storms are about to be over the lake now uh, in the chicago area we're still watching the one just to the south and west of oak lawn and orland park uh, for you know the potential for it to start rotating here Uh, But right now, it's still being pretty tame. Uh, Chicago, this includes downtown Chicago, but Harvey, Blue Island, all the way down to Chicago Heights. You guys, over the next 30 minutes, can expect 60 mile per hour winds. And of course, uh, that hail uh, around an inch in diameter. Oh, and look at that shelf cloud illuminated, illuminated by the city lights. As the um, the strong storm approaches Chicago, this is from Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. The wind and rain have hit downtown Chicago, and of course, my goodness, look at the view. Look at the view from Hunter Stream. What an incredible storm in the distance there. We've seen some of the the coolest lightning ever from his stream tonight. Louisville, yeah, Louisville is in the enhanced risk. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you the graphics. Let me show you the graphics. Okay, so this is uh, the SPC outlook for tonight. Um, we've got the dual enhanced risk, right? We've got enhanced risk of severe weather up here. That's what that's the area of storms that we've been watching tonight. Uh, and then we've got another enhanced risk down here from Paducah up through Cincinnati. These storms still haven't started yet. And then everywhere in between, we'll kind of get the remnants or leftovers of um, everything else. Uh, so... You, you've got a slight risk of severe weather, but you can still definitely see some damaging uh, winds tonight and hail. So make sure you're weather aware, even in places like Toledo and Detroit. Um, but uh, the the driving force uh, behind the, the enhanced risk of severe weather tonight is the tornado threat, especially in the southern mode. Now, the 10% hatched risk for tornadoes wasn't there earlier. I, I think it wasn't even there right before we started the stream. Uh, they've added that uh, since seeing how uh, 
you know, likely it's been for these storms to produce tornadoes. Uh, but this was actually uh, the only 10% hatch that we had earlier before I started the stream. Uh, and we still believe that uh, from Paducah up through Louisville, up towards Cincinnati and everywhere in between, uh, there's a 10% hatch risk of tornadoes tonight, which means that anywhere in the yellow there has a 10%, 10 to 14% probability of seeing a tornado tonight within 25 miles of a point. And the fact that it's hatched means that some of those tornadoes are likely to be strong, uh, meaning that they could produce uh, EF2 damage or greater. Uh, so that's why we're live tonight. That's usually the qualifying, um, that, that's usually what prompts a live stream for us is whenever we get that 10% hatched uh, outlook. So think back of, you know, all the live streams you've watched here with us. They've all been a 10% hatch risk or higher. I'll get some in a minute. I appreciate it. I've never tried pineapple pizza. <laughs> I might. Myself and 403 or 1022. So the peak, the height of the storm is is now happening in downtown Chicago. It'll be over in 10 minutes or so. Um, uh, now we're really just watching the southern extent uh, of these storms. Um, move through places like Blue Island and Harvey as there is still a chance that this could rotate a little bit and produce a tornado but right now it's just looking like a hail and wind maker thankfully Yeah, lots of hail in the Chicago area. Thank you guys for sending pictures. Remember, don't do that unless you can do so safely. Uh, Sivy says, uh, thanks for all you do, you and the All Squad. Uh, my family and I are in the Palatine, Inverness, Illinois area, and it definitely got gnarly here. When I saw Brad nearby on Radar Omega, I knew I, it was going to be a wild night. Yes. If you guys ever open up your Radar Omega apps and you see Brad's face near your house, you, you just got to know that, you know, something's up. You got to be paying extra close attention to the weather that day. Brad Arnold travels thousands of miles not to go on vacations, not to go sightsee. I don't know if Brad Arnold's ever been to the Grand Canyon. He only goes where there might be tornadoes. So if he's in your neighborhood, he's not there for any other reason. I can promise you that. I, I'm not a hater of pineapple pizza. I just never, I've never tried it. Muncie, Indiana. We're going to talk about Indiana here in a minute. Uh, right now, we're just kind of waiting on storms to form down there. We're watching the the finale of the storm here in Chicago. Yeah, the rain should let up here shortly. Yeah, 
Uh, Minnie Miller uh, says, this might sound like a dumb question, but what locations that are just outside of the hatched area prepare? It kind of seems like an arbitrary line. I'm not understanding how it works. That is a great question. Um, weather forecasting and the commu communication of weather hazards is a developing science. It's not perfect by any means. And you're absolutely right about it seeming like an arbitrary line. And you're, you're not, it's not a stupid question to not understand how it works. Um, obviously, tornadoes don't understand maps and they don't follow the boundaries of man made lines on forecasts. So if you live close to a 10% hatched area, even if you are just outside of the line, technically, in my opinion, you have just as much of a chance of, you know, seeing a tornado as somebody just inside the line. But like, what do you do about that? You know, I don't know. I think having the line is, is okay. I don't know what the other option is. Just having a big blurred gradient probably would be more confusing. Um, but yeah, if you're close to the line, uh, then you know, if you're close to the line, you, you're also in a in a 5% probability. You're, you're not in a 10%, you're in a 5%. So, like, you you know, the, even that should get you weather aware, you know? Tim Long, thank you so much. Jesse says, uh, Ryan, do you see any similarities um, in tonight's setup and the November 6th, 2005 Evansville tornado? The temperature seems similar to them. I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't, I'm not very familiar with that specific tornado. Um, I, so I don't know if I see any similarities. Uh, I just know that there definitely is a, the possibility uh, to see some tornadoes in the Evansville area tonight. And when those storms start to pop up, we're going to let you know what's going to happen with them. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't, I just, I, I'm not familiar with that one off the top of my head. Uh, Pixie. Thank you, Matt. What do you think about the weather for West Virginia tomorrow morning? It's probably going to rain some. It's not going to be very eventful. Uh, Tony, thanks for becoming a slight risk member. Cynthia, thank you so much. I'm trying to read chat here because I know we're going to get sucked back into the radar uh, not too long from now. So if you've got questions or anything, now is the time to relay those. What does the 10% really mean? I'm, it means that there's a 10% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of a given point in that zone. And it sounds like, wow, 10%? That don't, that's not a lot. But, you know, on most days you have a 0% chance, right? Like if you go outside and it's sunny and it's like winter, like there's you know, there's not gonna be a tornado. It's very uncommon that the all the ingredients are in place for a uh, a tornado in 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 your area. So having a ten percent chance is a is a huge anomaly compared to normal. That's why we we ring the bells and we go live and we do all that kind of stuff. But yes, it is true that there's also a ninety percent probability that you won't see a tornado today or tonight. So nobody should be scared, you know, running. Like nobody's telling you to evacuate the state of Indiana or anything. I found that like weather and like storms, a lot of people who have storm anxiety and like are really afraid of storms. It's, it's the same thing as like anytime you're very unfamiliar with something or if something is mysterious to you, you're more likely to be scared of it. Um, the more you understand about it, the less scared you'll be. And the more you prepare for like what could happen in the event of a tornado, the less scared you'll be. So that's why we try to do uh, like a bunch of educational stuff. We try to like go a little bit of a, you know, a step farther than what you would normally get from a traditional broadcast with the way that we cover this. 
and uh, really hammer down the uh, the tornado preparedness methods and what you should do if you're under a tornado warning and all that stuff because we found that you know people are much more likely even if like there's a huge tornado outbreak and it's that there's tornadoes everywhere you would think that somebody with tornado anxiety watching that would like go into a panic and and like wouldn't be able to function we found that a lot of people even when it's a scary day even when it's a scary situation leave the stream more comfortable with uh, or more accepting of the situation than when they came in even if there is definitely cause for concern so that's that's what we're trying to do Uh, Linda, thanks for being a member for over a year. I have a friend in Bowling Green, Kentucky. When should she be on the lookout for storms? I appreciate everything you do. Um, I still think that the, first of all, Bowling Green, Kentucky is a little bit displaced from where I think the, the strongest storms will be. Um, but there still will be storms, no doubt, uh, in Bowling Green. And I think that those uh, will probably be much later, um, maybe closer to 4 to 5 a.m. And they will be on the, the, the weaker side compared to what we're expecting a little bit farther to the north. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> yes, cap. Tornadoes vacation near Brad Arnold, not the other way around. That's perfect. Thank you, Casey. Davey. Uh, this setup gives me a Memorial Day 2019 vibe, especially in Dayton, Ohio. What are your thoughts? Uh, no, no, this setup is actually nothing like that. I do remember that one. That's not like the two totally different setups can, can cause similar tornadoes. Do you know what I mean? Like... The, but the overall uh, setup, I guess, uh, the, the the synoptic makeup of the um, the atmosphere, what's causing the storms tonight, is absolutely nothing like that. But you know, the risk is still there for tornadoes. Two totally different kinds of storms can can cause tornadoes. The National Weather Service in Chicago just had the most February tornado warnings on record in one day uh, with 10 warnings across the warning area. So there was just now 10 warnings uh, in and around Chicago, uh, tornado warnings, and that's the most that they've ever issued in February. No, we're good in Pikeville. East Tennessee, you're fine. Lucas, thanks for becoming a member. Uh, George, thank you. Uh, Nicole, thank you. Sherry, thank you. Uh, can you explain how to read a photograph? Yeah, I can do. A, I can. I can show you the 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 basics. Okay, so this is actually um, a photograph or a sounding, 
uh, from Evansville earlier. Uh, basically, what happens is the uh, National Weather Service uh, will send a weather balloon up into the air every so often. And that weather balloon sends back data to a computer. The computer plots that data on a graph. And the graph, one of the graphs, it looks like this, uh, a hodograph. All right. So basically what we're looking at here is a noodle. And it's curved. And whenever the noodles are curved, they're dangerous. So more specifically, uh, what we're looking at here is that as the balloon went higher in the atmosphere, um, it changed direction, right? Uh, so the higher up the balloon got, uh, the, the the more uh, west to east it was moving. And then even higher than that, uh, northwest to southeast, even, even higher than that, almost directly north to south. But whenever the balloon first went up, it was almost directly south to north. So you can see here very clearly that there are winds turning with height. You've got inflow winds near the surface coming in one way. As those surface winds go higher up in the atmosphere, they get flung this way, and eventually they get flung this way, blah, blah, blah. You see, what I'm, you see what's happening. We have counterclockwise rotation here. So whenever you get a curved hotograph like this, um, and, and there is a uh, potential for storms to form in, in that environment, they're almost always going to rotate. In fact, some of the first storms that we see pop up tonight will probably look just like this. They'll look like little beans, okay? Um, now, you know, does that mean that there's definitely going to be tornadoes? No, but that means, you know, that there's a 10% probability. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's part of the reason why we have that forecast in place. Anytime the storms are supposed to look like this and we've got the curved photograph, we've got to be on the lookout for tornadoes. So... There's a lot of things that could cause tornadoes not to happen. This is just one of the things that could cause a tornado or two to happen. And once again, this is from the Evansville site. So this is what the atmosphere looks like above Evansville tonight, which is definitely, with no other context, certainly a, a tornadic photograph. Like I would look at that and be like, oh, yep, tornadoes. But there's a lot of other context that, you know, we're not looking at when we're just looking at this image. My bad. <laughs> F. Um, I want to say hold on a new tornado watch has been so issued click on this stuff dude uh, Jack thank you so much for the very generous super chat I hope this goes uh, to those uh, in need after the storms thanks for all you do y'all squad Jack thank you so much for the very generous super chat just a reminder to you guys um, right now I, as far as I'm as, as far as I can tell, we're not being asked to go like do relief or anything yet. There hasn't been, there's definitely been some tornado damage out there, but there's not been like significant residential tornado damage that I, at least that I've heard of yet. Um, but if that does happen tonight, we do have a 501 C three nonprofit organization uh, called the y'all squad. And, um, we've got, we've got, um, funds or set aside and ready to go to, to go help those people. One of the things we do is we try to go, buy a bunch of supplies and give them to people for free. Uh, we get, we hand out no weather radios to help with future storm anxiety. We, we've cooked food. We, there's a really, a whatever is needed. Uh, we try to do that. Um, and that's what, if you see people referring to the y'all squad, uh, that's, that's what they're talking about, uh, in the, in the chat. The best way to donate to that is to go to the y'all squad.org. Um, it's an official 501 C three nonprofit organization registered with the United States. You get a, tax deductible you know receipt if you donate through that website once again that's the y'all squad.org
but of course, um, I will forward that into the pile. Is Brad Arnold headed to Cincinnati? L let's ask him. Let's ask him. Uh, Brad Arnold styles the ginger 47 on YouTube is wanting to know if you're on your way to Cincinnati or not. <laughs> That's actually his name. Unfortunately, we are not going that far southeast. We are uh, dropping south right now towards the Indianapolis area, uh, waiting on this cab to erode. Uh, once it does, we should get some robust supercells with line segments and stuff, but no, I am not going all the way to Cincinnati. Um, storms may continue to go all the way to Cincinnati. I mean, if, if there are tornadoes on the ground, you know, you know as well as I do, Ryan, we're, we chase until there aren't any more tornadoes, but... Um, as of right now, Cincinnati is, is, is not in, in the plans, uh, but uh, I guess you never know, so you can't guarantee anything. All right, so there you go. There you go. There you go, Styles the Ginger 47. Um, he's not going to make it that far, but I, I would bet that if he could, and, and like if he needs to, he will. And by the way, if you want to keep up with where uh, Brad Arnold is, the tornado sniffer, in live, like live, like uh, to the second, like where is he? You, ca you guys can see it on your phone right now. Open your iOS or Android app, your Radar Omega app. Turn, make sure you've got the um, uh, cy cyclone port network turned on. See if I turn that off, he goes away. Turn it on, and then you'll be able to see where Brad Arnold is all, at all times. And you'll be able to click on him and see a live view from his camera and see all this other cool stuff. And it's not just Brad Arnold. There's several other storm chasers in there as well and stationary cameras. So that's why we love Radar Omega. This is like a, a eight or nine dollar app. And it and like it does the same thing. Like I'm sitting here in front of a a similar audience as to like a lot of TV news stations. Ryan, let's take that some bets. They paid $200,000. Um, uh, however, no gambling. We don't believe in gambling here at uh, Ryan Hall, y'all. But um, <laughs> what do you think? When do, we hit, when do we get main initiation in Illinois and Indiana? Or do we not get initiation and it just completely busts? I'm, I'm thinking an hour and a half to two hours. We've got supercells raging across southern Illinois and southern Indiana. I'm going to have to agree with you, Brad, because if you would have asked me five hours ago, um, I would have said right now. Um, but it looks like things are delayed a little bit. So uh, I don't, we don't have differing bets on that. I think we're right on the money with each other. That's, that's pretty scary, Ryan. Um, but they do say that, uh, what's the saying? Great minds think alike. That's right. It's pretty yeah. scary, though. Yeah. But anyways... If you want to keep up with him, uh, Radar Omega, there's a link in the description, iOS, Android. You, you don't have to pay $200,000 to get a weather graphics system anymore if you want to be a weatherman. You, I mean, that's uh, literally, I paid eight bucks, and, they, and, they, and like, here I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, like, you know, you, more than likely, you just want to, like, look at the radar, right? And it, even just doing that, it's the best. So, and they, they help, they help so much with, with the channel. Brad Arnold, you know, he charges an arm and a leg. <laughs> so, you know, we got to make this happen somehow. I'm kidding. He's, he's great. So I do agree with Brad. Uh, there's going to be storms forming soon, but the main initiation, the main uh, convection, the, the main like thick, juicy part of the storm outbreak tonight in the southern mode probably won't be occurring for another hour or two. I, 
It's not a subscription. I don't know why everybody keeps saying that. Like, you can subscribe to Radar Omega and get cooler stuff, but you don't need to. You can look at Brad Arnold. I believe. Actually, I, you know what? I don't know. Maybe the. I don't know if the Cyclone Port. I, I should. I should probably know that. <laughs> but listen, looking at the uh, like the radar, like just looking at the radar and looking at the velocity, looking at the uh, correlation coefficient and all that stuff comes with the base level app. You do not have to subscribe. Even without a subscribe subscription, this is a better app than any other radar app. Okay. Now you can subscribe and get cooler stuff, but you ain't, you ain't got to. I need to have them send me a graphic of like something that I can put on the screen that shows like what you get with the base app and like what comes with the subscriptions because I don't know. I've only ever had like the top level subscription because the moment I downloaded the app, like I was like, oh yeah, this, yeah, I'm going to be using this for the rest of my life. And I immediately subscribed to the top tier one and got all the features. That was long before they ever sponsored me, by the way. Long before. Okay, so there you go. Lolly says, I don't have a subscription and I can see the chaser. So there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. Look at all these people in chat. I don't pay for a sub and I can see Brad right now. Perfect. Perfect. So you, you do have to pay for a subscription to get access to it on your PC. Okay, so maybe to be, instead of paying $200,000 to be a, a weatherman, <laughs> maybe you pay $8 plus like however many dollars a month, but it's still way less than $200,000, I promise. Hey, Ryan, got a copy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I think that was Riley. I uh, found the first few flakes of snow here in central Wisconsin. We're just south of Merrill, and it looks like it's starting to pick up quite rapidly here. Okay, so R Riley is snow chasing for us now. Riley has hopped in the Dibble Mobile, and he is uh, driving around in Wisconsin showing us the snow. And that, yeah, you're hearing me right. Like Riley is in Wisconsin, just behind these severe storms, and it's snowing. That's how quickly the cold air is rushing in. That's one of the reasons why we have the storms in the first place. So we'll be we'll be checking in with him a bunch. Sorry, right, I'm just looking at uh, a couple different things here. Preparing for the next wave of activity. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to continue to track these storms here in, um, what's that state? Michigan and uh, Indiana. Um, and I'm going to keep reading chat. I'm probably going to end up getting me a piece of pizza here soon. Oh, look. 
My yeah, wife. Going off your, um, going off your oh. comment about the temperature change this morning when I woke up, it was 77 and sunny with light breeze. Now it is 34 winds from the east or winds from the west at about 35 miles an hour. Seven. So 70s this morning. Now it's in the 30s. That is a that's a big crash. That's for sure. Uh, but anyways, a uh, huge shout out to my wife for being a member of the channel for 36 months. I'm pretty sure that means that this channel has existed for 36 months. A new tornado warning so thank you has so been much, issued. Stephanie. Uh, we do have a new warning. So let's zoom in on that one. And this is uh, for that uh, rotating part of the storm that Andy talked about forever ago. It's finally mustered up enough rotation to uh, get a warning out of the National Weather Service. Now, this does include East Chicago, Hammond, Lansing, and Gary. And it's this part of the storm, let me show you. It's this part of the storm uh, that we're most concerned about uh, there being a, a tornado. Okay, you're up here. This is hail, this is wind, this is a nasty storm, but uh, we're really watching the southern and the southwestern side of the storm uh, for a potential tornado. But uh, to be honest with you, the rotation doesn't look uh, incredible uh, to me. Maybe if we look at the terminal radar, it'll be a different story. Uh, even with the terminal radar, it doesn't look quite as um, impressive. Uh, with the Actually, with the TORD, Maybe this is, uh, you know, a more accurate view of what's going on there, but this is definitely uh, enough rotation to, to be concerned about. Whether or not <laughs> we think you should be concerned about it or not, you definitely need to be taking shelter in Hammond and Gary because you are under a tornado warning. Uh, but, yeah, if this is what we're dealing with here, we might have a tornado trying to actually form near Bernie or Bernice, sorry. Moving over towards uh, Forsyth uh, Highlands, Woodmar, Grand Park, and Klein Gardens, and everywhere in between. Oh yeah, that's a that's a pretty decent couplet right there. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll try it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. Yeah, we'll wait for a couple more scans to see whether or not that's going to continue to be the case. Uh, Supreme says there are a crap ton of trees down in Inverness, Illinois. That is pretty much on par with uh, what we would expect to see uh, with, from based off of what we saw on radar. Uh, will I see the new um, Twister? Yes, yeah, I'm going to go see Twisters. Certainly. I'll be there the day it comes out. Pineapple. I get it. I'm a supporter. Pineapple on pizza. It's good. It's my first time ever trying it. Definitely not offensive at all. I actually don't see why it's so controversial. Like it's not. Like it just. It's just there, you know. Lord, yeah. <laughs> That's my food review for the night. The uh, so some of the more recent scans here on this tornado warning show a more broad look in the rotation. So uh, maybe the storm is not uh, winding up, but is rather winding down. Yeah, I think 
I think a lot of people who maybe don't like pineapple on pizza maybe have just never tried it and it, and it just sounds bad. That's fine, dude. Now, I don't think I'll be, I don't think I'll ever be offended if I show up somewhere and there's, uh, like, there's not pineapple on the pizza. Like, I definitely can still, <laughs> like, it's not that big of a deal to me, but like, yeah, it's, it's good. Have you been following the Texas wildfires? Yes. Um, we're compiling more information on it now. I just don't like pineapple in general. You, to be honest, like it does, it doesn't really taste like it, you're like you. If you've ever ate pineapple, you've probably ate it like fresh and like cold. That, that's not the way it's presented on at least this slice of pizza. <laughs> So uh, maybe you would like this. Maybe this is just, you need it cooked. But I don't know. I like pineapple by itself, so maybe that's why I like this. Still not seeing much in the way of storm initiation at all in uh, Indiana. There is, uh, in the upper levels of the atmosphere, there is some evidence of a very subtle short wave. There, I mean, something is trying to happen out here, but there's a lot of cap. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, stuff for these storms to overcome before they're going to be able to explode in the way that they would need to to um, warrant the enhanced risk. I do think that that's still capable of happening, but we'll, we're just we're literally just waiting for it now. Aiden, no problem. Howdy from the Shawnee National Forest in Southern Illinois. Thank you, hiking. Joe, thank you for the five gifted. Robert, can you explain the models for Central Indiana and what the National Weather Service is looking at? Why, yeah. Let's look at the uh, models. And by models, I mean the one model that I always look at for whatever reason, uh, the HRRR. So this is what the radar could and should look like tonight. I mean, look at this. Like, honestly, this is why I always talk about how we should be now casting and not forecasting. Just an hour ago, this, this is what the forecast was for an hour from an hour ago. So now, HRRR was showing several cells already popping up out here, but you, you just looked at the radar. They're not there. So let's look at the latest one now. Okay. So it's still looking like the convection's going to happen, you know, sometimes within the next couple of hours. Uh, the latest run of the HRRR is kind of focusing all of the energy back here on this cluster and then kind of pushing that through Indiana rather than new storms forming uh, on the border of Illinois and Indiana and then pushing through. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens there. But to be honest with you, uh, just based off of what the models were looking like earlier, this is definitely a much less impressive uh, look 
uh, than I believe what, what we were looking at earlier. There still is, oh my God, <laughs> a lot less impressive. There still is definitely uh, the, the possibility there for these storms to latch on. And also there's a possibility that the HRRR is completely wrong here. It's kind of pointless to look at these models this close. But yeah, that's what we're looking at. And then a blast of snow in northern Illinois tonight. And then these storms will continue into tomorrow, but the severe uh, probability is looking a lot lower. So yeah, it looks like we're still waiting. It might be, it might be midnight before these storms get to Indianapolis. Lightning's picking up in Gary. Uh, latest update from NWS Amarillo, um, radar imagery continues to show uh, copious amounts of smoke continuing to stream southward uh, towards the Amarillo area. Very poor air quality will continue through tonight. Try to stay indoors if you're able, especially if you have a respiratory condition. There are so many big fires happening right now just north of Amarillo. They're burning uncontrolled. They're still moving, and they're also just producing an, an incredible amount of smoke, and that's all coming down towards the Amarillo area tonight. H triple R in a nutshell, excellent storm conditions, and it's gone. You know, there's a pattern there. I've, you know, a lot of the most recent storm systems have have done that on the H triple R. I think it's time we stop looking at the H triple R. Carrie, that is a great question. I don't know. I think I think in your arms, that's what I would go for. But I would definitely do some research on that. I, I haven't, so I don't know. That's a good question. I will look into that. Thoughts on Louisville getting into a significant nadir? 10%. 10% probability of a significant tornado within 25 miles of a given point in and around Louisville tonight. We won't know any more, uh, like a, any, we won't know anything more than that until the storms actually form, and they still haven't. So there's that. Zan says, uh, thanks, Ryan, for everything that you're doing. My family was hit during the 2019 Memorial Day tornadoes in Ohio. This stream is doing a lot to keep, cal to calm our nerves. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Zan. I, yes, I will go through those very quickly. If you want the color tables, I believe that somebody has those available for download in our Discord, I, I believe. There is a tornado warning uh, right now um, near East Chicago, uh, but it's about to expire because that storm is going out over the lake. Uh, but you should stay sheltered in East Chicago for at least the next five to ten minutes.
Kevin, thank you. Yep, we are still awaiting for storm initiation. And that's why things seem fairly quiet right now. But I'm having fun. Just talking to y'all. Uh, what's your reason for only streaming to YouTube and not hey, Facebook Ryan, as well? Um, it's just like I, my home is YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whenever I, I have a barbecue, I just do it at my house and not my neighbors at well, as well. But, you know, I invite my neighbors, you know, we post links on Facebook. <laughs> I'm just a, you know, I'm a, I love YouTube and this is where I want to do things. Let's hear from Riley. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, I think you can finally start to see the snow here if you take a look at my feed. Uh, funny enough, there's nothing on radar for this area, but it is definitely snowing pretty hard, and the bridges already have light accumulation on them. Okay, so this is a live look from Storm Chaser Riley Dibble in Wisconsin where you can very clearly see the snow starting to fall more heavily now uh, near Was Was Wausau. The Detroit area will probably experience some severe weather tonight, uh, but it'll be much less uh, intense than uh, what we experienced in North Illinois earlier. And it'll be much later tonight into the early morning hours tomorrow. Yes, I did used to work for a TV weather news station for a very, very brief period of time. And now I realized I wasn't at home. I left that barbecue. And now we're here. Attention, Sigmar Station 2, still ambulance request 2341 Dean Street, 2341 Dean Street, across our north gate in Graham. We have a 65 year old male patient in an altered mental state, unable to stand, <clears throat> with heart issues. All right, so where's Brad Arnold now? Uh, Brad Arnold is, wow, he's already halfway to Lafayette. He's almost to Lafayette, Indiana. So he is definitely going to make it to Indianapolis before the storms get there. If the storms get there, I mean, where's the storms, right? We've got a little bit of something, something trying to pop up here near St. Louis. That might be the, the something that we follow for the remainder of the night. However, there is still a chance that more stuff will pop up along I-70 here between St. Louis and Indianapolis. We're just waiting for that to happen. It hasn't happened yet. There's a cap in the atmosphere. It's eroding. And once it, you know, erodes enough to where the energy can burst up and, and explode into the, uh, the air, um, then we'll see storms. Yeah, Ryan, we got ourselves a, a proper snow squall here now. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Be careful, Riley.
Uh, National Weather Service in Wilmington, Ohio, will be w launching a special weather balloon at midnight to sample the environment to see how much of the elevated warm layer sampled on our earlier evening launch is still present. The warm layer aloft will be crucial for both storm coverage and intensity of storms. So basically, the weather service is about to send up another balloon to see if that cap is still there <laughs> or if it's as strong. There's a, uh, a warm uh, layer of air uh, in the atmosphere. And what did we learn in kindergarten, right? Like warm air rises into cooler air, and that's how we get storms. That's how, you know, uh, condensation, you, you, you know the water cycle, right? But when you've got warm air trying to rise into warm air, it don't really work out. So whenever there's a pocket of warm air elevated in the atmosphere, we call that a cap. That cap is eroding right now. Some, you know, some of the mid-level winds are, are taking some of that air farther north. Also, just things are generally cooling down. Um, so, uh, you know, the moment uh, the cap erodes enough to where uh, warm, moist air can efficiently rise in the way that it wants to, because we've got all this moisture in place and we've got a dry line coming through, we've got a cold front coming through, uh, that's when we'll see storms. And, you know, it's hard to tell when that's going to happen. It's crazy that we have supercomputers that can even guess <laughs> because it's a very complex thing that's going on up there. You know what I mean? Brianna, thank you so much, says, uh, good night from the outskirts of Cincinnati. Thank you and your team for showing me how to not be scared, but prepared for inclement weather. No problem. That tornado warning was allowed to expire, by the way, up there near uh, North Chicago, or what is it, East Chicago. Yeah, we're just chilling now, waiting. We've got uh, some severe thunderstorm warnings in Michigan now. The storms are starting to make their way into Michigan uh, off the lakes. Um, we've got an inch in diameter hail and maybe up to 60 mile per hour winds moving into the Kalamazoo area. And look at there. We have a Radar Omega camera in Kalamazoo. And there's nine of you guys watching. Oh, 12 of you guys, 13, <laughs> watching with me right now in the app. Highs in the mid-70s to snow accumulation just 12 hours apart is peak Midwest weather. 22 years on this planet, and Wisconsin never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, that, that is some crazy stuff. And by the way, the cold front, uh, or at least up the tail end of it, um, the part of the system that is causing our tornadoes today is also um, influencing the fires that are going on uh, in Texas. Look at this. 
Uh, here's a image or a depiction of the fast moving cold front encountering the wildfire scorching Texas and Oklahoma. The fires are oriented from east to south following the new wind direction. You can clearly see there the cold front coming through and uh, literally changing the direction of the, the fires. Unbelievable. That's some of the craziest uh, wildfire activity that we've seen out of Texas and Oklahoma in a while. Do you know anything about Akron, Ohio or near that? I got to make sure. Um, I don't know anything right now other than you, there's a slight risk of severe weather tonight and that's why we're here. Um, don't be scared. Be prepared. Just have a way of getting warnings because uh, it could be late tonight before anything happens. This is um, a view from an airplane of those fires. Crazy. Almost apocalyptic. Um, okay, we got a new, a new watch. Tornado watch. New tornado watch. Here we go. A few... Tornadoes likely. Hail, scattered hail up to two inch in diameter possible. Scattered wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour possible. 10 million people. 10 million people now under a tornado watch until <laughs> 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. Um, that's how long this tornado watch is valid until. Um, this includes Carbondale, Evansville, Louisville, Cincinnati, Bloomington, and Dayton. A new tornado watch has been issued. All I'm going to say, Ryan, is uh, I go back east on 64 on the way back home. So if we want to go till 6, we can go till 6. I'm going to eat, guys, because <laughs> I feel like we're going to be here for a little bit. Uh, newbie? It says, I didn't know who you were until two hours ago. I live east of Chicago. Oh, okay. <laughs> I live east of Chicago. My work involves Hey, Ryan, it's Brad. Um, I'm sure you have seen already uh, Tornado Watch out uh, for Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio, the Ohio River Valley. Um, we are dropping down to Bloomington, Indiana, uh, and then we will adjust from there. Uh, the SBC is still locked in on thinking the storms are going to fire within the next hour or so. Um, I don't. The, the wording in the watch is a little bit concerning as well. With uh, with. Uh uh oh, I think we lost him. We'll 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 get the rest of that from him in in just a moment. Um, but to finish, newbie traders uh, comment here. Uh, your coverage was better than the news channels. Thanks. Sorry about no that. Uh, the wording in it says uh, numerous tornado, or a few a few tornadoes likely, uh, with a couple of intent or strong, uh, significant tornadoes as well. So they're still expecting this to go well into the overnight hours. Yeah. Absolutely. One of these days, I'll figure out how this how this walkie-talkie thing goes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, no, this is going to continue for quite some time. I don't know if, uh, you know, at 6 a.m. we're going to have as as much of a a tornado threat as we do maybe at, at 11 p.m. So I don't know if we'll be here streaming until 6 a.m. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you honestly what I think is going to happen. We're going to be here till midnight. And we're going to watch. We're going to see what's going on. Um, if we have tornadic looking supercells at midnight, we're going to keep going until those don't look uh, concerning anymore, uh, which would probably be around 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. Um, because, but like, you know, even after that, there's a chance that some of those storms could cause tornadoes, but it's so, it's so um, unlikely at a certain point. So we'll, we'll just see. We're going to have to play it by ear. I don't care to stay here forever. Now, the people in the production room might care a little bit more, but like, as long as they leave me some pizza, I'll be good <laughs> till the cows come home. We are going to be here until we feel like we are no longer needed. Sorry. I'm going to leave this up for a moment while I take a few more bites. Hey, Ryan, if you're looking for another uh, Ryan Hall team member to talk to, Luke Hatton is chasing tornadoes in the Southern Rift today. Ooh. All right. So I'm locked in. I'm ready to go uh, for a little while longer. And um, yeah, once again, we're just playing it by ear. Uh, Chandra, production room. I don't know if you guys have got any updates for us or not, but if you don't, let's work on one. <laughs> uh, anything, anything that we haven't talked about here, any new information would be great. Um, and I'm just going to kind of uh, dive into you know, looking at the radar and the forecast and all that stuff until we get pulled back in to uh, tracking a tornado. Uh, Jessica... Jessica says, um, I'm awake and aware northwest of Dayton. 
Thank you for being here and doing what you do. I'm a lot less worried when you're keeping us informed. I appreciate that. Jeff, thank you. AJ, thank you. The wind is picking up in Whiteland, Indiana. Yeah, you're out in front of the, Even with no storms, you guys are going to feel the winds really start to pick up in the uh, Illinois, Indiana area. Uh, Bree Myers, tell Brad that Papa John's <laughs> Papa John's South in Bloomington will have pizza for him if he comes in. You know what? Oh, in Bloomington? Okay, I will remind him if he gets close. I don't want to make him sad because I don't know if he'll even get there. I think that he's probably going to probably wait around Indianapolis. But we'll see. If he gets close to there, I'll let him know. That's very nice of you. Hey, Ryan, I got an update for you. Uh, Adam says, are we expecting storms in Marion, Ohio? Yes, uh, later. And we will, we'll, we will show you those as they pop up. Um, go ahead, Riley. I don't know if you can really see on my feed right now, but the road is very shiny. So what I think we have going on is because it was so warm earlier today, uh, all the roads heated up. And now that snow started falling on the roads, and obviously it melted. Well, now that it's no longer above freezing, in fact, since we started this stream, it's dropped another 14 degrees. We're down to 19 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, these roads are now flash freezing, so all that snow that originally hit the roads and melted is now turning into ice. So I'm actually on my way back home because uh, these roads aren't going to be safe to travel on here in a few hours. Smart decision from uh, Storm Chaser Riley Dibble there in Wisconsin, giving us an update on this snow. That's right, the snow just a few miles behind the severe weather tonight. And by the way, a lot of the places in Illinois that got hit by severe weather earlier tonight, you will see snow in the morning. A very dynamic system. We've currently got some storms moving into... Southwest Michigan, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning uh, near Battle Creek. That's going to go up towards Charlotte and Potterville. That's going to bring about uh, one inch in diameter hail. Kalamazoo, you still got that storm coming towards you with 60 mile per hour winds. These are not very strong. They're, they're definitely severe, but they're not like very, very intense storms. That's why we're not like up close with them. Uh, there's, and there's certainly no tornado threat with them at, at the moment. That could change. Still watching our uh, convection trying to pop up back here towards St. Louis. And we're just watching and waiting still. Jamie says uh, the winds aren't just picking up in Illinois. Um, <laughs> St. Louis, Missouri just experienced a brief, a brief power outage when the wind really picked up. Lights are orange, uh, so I think we've got something from Chandra. Go ahead, Chandra. Hey, we got it. Hey, y'all, I wanted to give you an update um, from Texas about the wildfires. Actually, there are 200 people that are currently taking shelter in a church in um, Fritch, Texas. Um, a lot of those people are people who have lost homes. Now, remember, over 200,000 acres have been burnt during this whole um, wildfire situation. So we want to keep an eye on that and make sure that these people are safe and hopefully no more homes get affected. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you very You're much, Chandra. Welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Chandra is uh, updating us on the wildfires. A new tornado warning has been issued. And, um, It sounds to me like the situation is just as dire as it was earlier today. Um, and it was very dire earlier. And I think we've got a tornado warning. Yep, we do. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. A little bit of little pocket of rotation here in this storm. Once again, all of these storms here are not very strong, not very intense. Uh, but this one specifically has uh, interacted uh, with some spin here, and it's actually got a little bit of a couplet. Um, this could be trying to produce a tornado here near Pearl Grange and Spinks Corners. Moving up towards Bainbridge Center. So take shelter now if you live there. A tornado warning for B B Berrien County, M Michigan. Yep, urgent evacuations are underway as massive and dangerous wildfires rapidly spread uh, throughout parts of Texas and uh, specifically around the panhandle north of Amarillo. Yeah, the rotation, at, at least from what I can tell, is not, I mean, it's, it's nothing, it's certainly not... Uh, uh, nothing, <laughs> but it's also, it's not as impressive as maybe some of the storms that we saw earlier today. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not a tornado there. We should still be taking shelter in Napier and Bainbridge Center. Uh, I'm just waiting on the next scan now. Yeah, it looks like, the, honestly, even just on the most recent scan, it's even less impressive than it was. So, we'll see. We'll see. Little things like that are going to happen throughout the evening. There's going to be so many little um, rotations that get warned. Some of them will be dangerous. Some of them won't. This one, we don't know yet, so you should be in your safe spot. Uh, Kim Baxley says, December 10th, 2022, tornadoes in Kentucky tonight? No, I don't think so. Um, definitely watching closely for cer certain parts of Kentucky, but I don't think we're going to see anything uh, quite like that, hopefully. And uh, that was 2021, by the way. We got one tornado warning for Berrien County, um, Michigan. Uh, the rotation on it is uh, lackluster, to say the least. Um, so there's not really a whole lot to say about it other than a tornado could possibly try to form here. Uh, and you need to take shelter in uh, Water Waterville. I hope I said that one right. Man, how many places in this area are called Paul Paul? This is like the third Paul Paul I've seen. Oh, well, there's an, another question. Ryan, how similar is this system to the one that created the devastation in Dawson Springs, Kentucky in December of 2021, or is it too early to tell? So I don't know, whenever people ask that, I don't know what you mean by like how similar are they? I, th I think what you mean is like how similar will the aftermath be? <laughs> and that is impossible to tell. Uh, and I certainly don't think that it's going to be like that. 
uh, especially not in those same areas or may, possibly not even anywhere. Um, but uh, you also could be talking about like the, the, just the general storm system and the way the atmosphere, the, the way the atmosphere is primed, like, is that similar to the day that produced the, those tornadoes? And the answer to that question is not really. Um, it's, it's not entirely different, but there's not a whole lot of similarities. No. Yeah, it looks like the storm uh, that went through St. Louis uh, is starting to gain intensity now, and this might be this might be our storm that we watch for a period of time as it rides Interstate 70 up towards Effingham. This uh, this could be this could be the one. Guys, it looks like Riley's going faster than what he is. The National Weather Service in Grand Rapids uh, just issued their first yeah, Ryan, ever tornado warning in history in February. 60 miles an hour. There's just 40 mile an hour wind, so the snow is flying at me. Yeah, right. It, I, it, re it looks like Riley's flying, but he's, his camera is a little bit more wide angle than the one next to him. So like that adds, and then, yeah, he's, he's, he's fine guys. Riley is not, he's fine. But yeah, that, that tornado warning up there was the first ever tornado warning in February, uh, for Grand Rapids. That's crazy. This is, I mean, this has been a record breaking February, man. Just yesterday we had, uh, the all time record high temperature for, uh, February broken for to a ton of different areas. Now today we've got tornadoes in uh, obscure places. Sailing the sky says, since you cover so much weather, you probably know a lot of town names. Know them and know how to pronounce them are two different things, so I would agree. Um, have you ever tried any of those quizzes where you cover the U.S. with circles by naming cities? I haven't, but that sounds like fun. Yeah, the the lack of snow in the Twin Cities this winter is definitely something uh, that a lot of people have noticed. Um, as far as an explanation goes, you should have watched my winter forecast, man. We we was, we was calling it six months ago. It's a it's very traditional um, for El Nino winters to uh, promote a, a warmer than average and a less snowy uh, winter in the northern plains and, and into the upper Midwest. And uh, we, had, we, we, we had a very strong El Nino this winter, and, and it, it's pretty much played out almost exactly as you, would, as you would think an El Nino winter would. Nope, you don't need a subscription to chat in the uh, YouTube chat there. It's free. I think you just have to be a subscriber for like the last 10 minutes or something. 
as long as you know the Kentucky pronunciation for Versailles, I'm kidding, uh, for Ver- Versailles, actually, I don't know, in, in Kentucky, do we say, we say Versailles, right? Um, and the proper way to drink an ale eight, uh, of course. The problem with Versailles is that's another town where there's a million of them in every different geographic reason, region um, pronounces it differently. I guess Versailles is how we say it in, in Versailles. Yeah, it's Versailles. Chat is saying Versailles. One Allie is, I can hear her screaming from the production room saying it's Versailles. It's Versailles. Okay, so even 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 we don't know. You you guys don't even know. You can't tell me. You don't even know. Half of how you think. How about Versailles? <laughs> half of you half half of you think it's Versailles. Half of you half of you think it's Versailles. Fix yourselves. Then talk to me. I know it's Versailles, just like it's Louis Ville. I like going to Lessington and then going to Louis Ville and then go to Versailles. <laughs> Those are my favorite Ken, uh, Kentucky towns. Hey, Ryan, do you copy it? Yes, sir. So what are your plans for the total solar eclipse coming up in April? I'm going to be there. I think we're going to live stream it, kind of like a severe weather event, but I will be, I'll do what I do from the weather house, usually from a, a van or like a truck or something, and then we'll we'll go outside during totality. What's your plan? And yeah, by the way, I think that we are going to live stream the, the total solar eclipse. And if you guys so didn't know about that, probably my plan is going April to 8th. check to see which areas aren't clouding and head to total the where the 100 percent totality is. But hopefully, you guys can get a good view of it too. Oh, this is a perfect opportunity. A lot of you guys in the tornado watch right now that are watching are going to be in the path of totality uh, for the April 8th um, uh, solar eclipse. This is this is happening in. What, like a little over a month? And here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing. This is something that you should definitely A new tornado warning care about. has been like, issued. This is something that you should do. You should go see. Here's the path of totality. Yeah, Evansville, Indiana, I think is where I'm going to go. Or somewhere in that general vicinity. But yeah, portions of Northwest Ohio, all the way up into New York, uh, lots of Indiana, uh, Southern Illinois, the boot heel of Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, a total solar eclipse.
We haven't had one since 2017, and we won't have another one, I think, until like 2030 or 2050 or something. Um, so definitely something to go experience. I went to Tennessee, I think Spring City, Tennessee, to exp- to experience the one in 2017. And, um, you know, I thought it was cool. I like looking at the sky. I like weather. And, you know, I'm a sky nerd. And I was like, yeah, let's go look at the eclipse. And it was the most incredible thing that has ever happened <laughs> in the history of the world. <laughs> It was uh, un, it was indescribable, um, and it is something that if you have the chance, if you, if you have the opportunity, uh, everybody that lives a life on this earth should experience it. It's un, unexplainable unless you go experience it for yourself. Very cool stuff. One of the things that crossed my mind, though, was like, imagine, like, you know, I drove there. I knew that the solar eclipse was coming. We knew exactly what time it was going to happen. We knew years in advance, right? But imagine how many people throughout history have just been wandering around on Earth, and that happens out of nowhere, and they don't know what it is or why it's happening. <laughs> like that, that, that would be crazy. Like it's crazy enough knowing what's going on, but like imagine just walking around and then all of a sudden. The sun disappears and you look up and there's a giant eye in the sky, a glowing ring. You get real cold. The animals start, the birds start chirping. The crickets start cricketing. There's a 360 degree panoramic sunset around you. Temperature starts to drop. It's just crazy. And you know, so there's been communities of people where that's just randomly happened one day. And like the people had to try to come up with an explanation as to why that happened and what happened. Crazy stuff. Okay, so it looks like the, our storm here uh, in Michigan is trying to ramp back up a little bit. It's trying. And it's not succeeding completely. Uh, but we still have a, a very obvious area where inflow is trying to, you know, undercut the storm and, like, really get it rotating again. Um, but as far as I can tell from the velocities, uh, it's not really ro- it's not rotating uh, very much right now. Uh, but I do think that, that it's going to try to pick up ag- again as it goes towards uh, Keeler and Fritzburg. That's why we've got that new tornado warning. There is a tornado warning for Keeler, Decatur, Lawrence, and Paul Paul and Almena in Michigan. That's going to be for Van Buren and Berrien. Counties in uh, Michigan take shelter now. This this is the area of concern. Uh, but the whole storm is going to be pretty nasty. Probably some hail, some wind uh, moving uh, across I-95 or I-94 here uh, shortly. Hey, Ryan, update for you. Go ahead. All right, so this is not an update on the snow, but an update on that tornado warn storm. I have uh, had a few people send me messages that are on that storm, that there is a rapidly rotating wall cloud starting to form and strengthen very, very quickly. So if this is not already producing a tornado, I would not be surprised if it does so, does so soon. Okay, so there you go. Uh, like we said, this is it's trying. It's trying its best to ramp up. We'll see what happens. Uh, This is the original area of uh, rotation that made us pay attention to it in the first place. Notice how it ramped up. Tornado warning was issued, and then it goes away. 
secondary area of rotation pops up here just to the south and west of uh, Sister Lakes. Boom, ramps up. Tornado warning is issued, and then it starts dying down again. We'll see, though, if the next frame uh, is any more intense, and it kind of is. You know, this could be one that tries to last a little while longer, and of course we have the, the storm chasers down there that are visually seeing the intensification process, so this one might actually try to produce a tornado as it approaches Decatur. Uh, so let's take shelter out there. It's, I didn't know that Paw Paw was a fruit. I thought that was just what you called your grandfather, if like as a nickname. <laughs> uh, and I'm not, yeah, I'm not kidding. I learn something every every time we go live together, guys. Yeah, this storm definitely looks concerning. Like it's um, tail end, Charlie. There's, it's in an environment that could produce a tornado for sure uh, but it's it, it's a little disconnected right now it's not a, incredibly impressive just yet oh we'll do it oh, yeah Another storm to watch probably uh, is going to be this one to the south and west of Lansing. Lansing, Michigan. There is a little bit of rotation here um, that I've noticed is actually picking up uh, within the last couple of scans. So if that continues, we might see this one try to organize a little bit more and, and try to produce a little bit of a, a tornadic circulation. It's in a weird spot, so maybe not, but certainly some hail. Um, and some winds are going to be moving into the Lansing area uh, probably about an hour, 45 minutes from now. Not an hour and 45 minutes, but like 45 minutes to an hour from now. Okay, yeah, so the uh, rotation is really picking up here. Uh, it looks like near Keeler, we've got some inflow coming in. Uh, this might try to produce a tornado here, y'all, if... if if it does, it's going to be coming dangerously close to Decatur, Michigan. If we know anybody out there that way, uh, please let them let them know what's going on. Apparently, a pawpaw is an Appalachian delicacy shaped shaped like a banana. But here I am, an Appalachian, and I didn't know. Yeah, now I'm just kind of uh, waiting for the next scan here. Because if we see any more signs of uh, kind of like an increase, oof. Okay, so that last scan, uh, it doesn't look too much like an increase to me. So hopefully we continue to see that trend. 
Uh, but we've still got a tornado warning for Decatur, so you guys should be in your safe spot. I do want to make sure we're going back and forth uh, between these two storms because there is a little bit of rotation trying to happen here near Olivet and Lee Center in Michigan as well, but also pretty decoupled right now. So, uh, you know, we've got a tornado warning up here, but I don't see... I don't see the immediate concern for a tornado just yet. We'll keep our eye on Paw Paw and Decatur, though. I'm just looking through y'all's submissions on uh, Twitter. Lots of hail pictures. Lots of hail pictures. I'm still not seeing any. Uh, there's definitely a lot of damage uh, videos and pictures coming out of uh, Illinois. But thankfully, nothing nothing bad. Like Some of it looks like there, it was significant damage, but it was not to... Uh, it was like to things where people aren't... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like It wasn't to houses and stuff. So that, that that's good so far. Obviously, there's... Still time, and uh, we could learn more unfortunate news about that, but so far so good uh, with the damage. It could have been worse is what I'm saying uh, with those storms in Illinois earlier. The lights are orange, so we've got some, uh, we've got something, something new uh, to hear from uh, Chandra. Go ahead, Chandra. Hi, um, I actually got a message from a close friend of mine in Illinois and she actually was on the shopping strip in North Aurora, um, Illinois. And both of those words are just waiting to do me <laughs> a lot of harm. But anyway, she says that not a lot of damage was reported and um, everybody is safe. So I wanted to give you an update on that. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's good. To, that's good to hear. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, guys, that's Chandra in the production room. The camera did freeze there. I don't know what happened. But, um, <laughs> but we will uh, we'll hear from Chandra multiple times throughout the night. Hopefully there's not a lot of news to relay. Hopefully. Ryan, uh, I think I have a shelf cloud or something of the sort. Um, I'm just north of Wausau, and I'm wondering if what we have going on here is this snow is sort of convecting as almost a thunderstorm because it's popping up so quickly just because there's so much energy on this front. And there might have been some flashes in the clouds. I'm not confident enough to say that it is thunder snow, but there is a chance that we might be dealing with some thunder snow here. Fun. We love thunder snow. And yeah, it looks like the snow is really. It's about to get heavy there in Wausau. I don't know. I don't know if that's um, thunder snow inducing, but certainly is is about to be uh, an interesting uh, bout of snow moving through there. So we'll see if there is thunder snow. You've got to record it, and you've got to let us know. You got to. Update on our storm down here near Decatur. It's still rotating. It still looks dangerous. I'm still concerned about it, but it's not an immediate, it's not like in the next couple of minutes kind of thing. 
You know what I mean? So we've got time. Hopefully it weakens in that time. Um, same thing for this storm over here near Olivet and Brookfield. Not looking uh, very uh, bad. Uh, we've just got some widespread coverage of some severe weather out there. Zen, thank you so much for becoming an official sponsor. Uh, a lot of people in the chat, as always, the, <laughs> are concerned about their local hometowns and are asking me me to update them on that. Um, uh, if I'm not talking about your town right now, there's probably not a lot going on, so that's a good thing. If there's a reason to talk about your town, I will talk about it. I promise I'm not going to skip over a town because I don't like it or something. Um, if I'm not talking about your area right now, it's just because there's nothing to talk about for you. Um, Chandra, on your top left screen, um, can you can you zoom back out to where we can see all of the risk area? I don't know, Allie. I don't know if she's wearing her headphones. I don't know if she can hear me. Um, but we just want to see the we we want to see the risk area there. Yeah, maybe in a little bit from there. Yeah, that, there we go. That's good. Yep, right now we are watching a cluster of severe storms up here in southwestern Michigan. It's pretty uneventful. We've got a tornado warning, um, but not a lot of tornado <laughs> could change, though. That's why there's a warning, and that's why you should be in your safe spot. Um, but I, I believe the, the the I mean, the reason we're still live, honestly, if if the only thing that we were covering tonight was the initial, uh, you know, storms that happened west of Chicago, we would have already ended the stream. Um, you know, this leftover stuff is just what you would expect to happen after a storm rolls by. Um, but what we're waiting on now is the initiation of the second mode, the second round of storms that will take place in the Ohio River Valley, um, in southern Illinois, uh, southern Indiana, southwestern Ohio, northwestern Kentucky. Right now, there's nothing going on down there, really. Uh, but there is a tornado watch. It was issued not long ago for southern Illinois through central southern Indiana and northern Kentucky into western Ohio until 6 a.m. A few intense tornadoes are possible. And these are going to be fast-moving um, tornadoes if they do happen. Um, and this includes Carbondale to Indianapolis to Dayton. Page King says, uh, Spring City here. We are weather obsessed in our house. Keep up the great work. We are weather prepared up in here. Page, thank you so much. Your city's awesome. We, we really enjoyed staying there and being there for the solar eclipse. Uh, how's Ashland, Kentucky looking overnight? Thank you for being here. Just some rain, nothing crazy in Ashland. How late are you staying up, Ryan? Um, I'm going to stay up until... There's, there, there's no need for me to be here anymore or until you guys get bored and just stop watching. I imagine if there's no storms, <laughs> if there's no new storms that pop up, you know, over the next couple of hours, you guys are going to just going to fall asleep. So wh whichever one of those happens first, we'll end the stream. Eddie Stump. I know an Eddie Stump. Thank, thank, thank you for the 1999. It's very generous of you. Is it a bad idea to go to bed in Fayette County? Yes. And for no other reason than, like, I just enjoy your company here, man. Stay, stick around with us. Now, if, if you're saying, like, should I stay up and, like, hyper-obsess over the weather and develop a 
uh, a sleeping disorder because I'm scared of thunderstorms? No. No. If you've got work tomorrow, if you've got things to worry about, live your life, y'all. Okay? But just make sure you have a way of, you know, like, you know, your house catching on fire is a, is, a, is a concern, right? Like, everybody, if you think about it too much, like, you think about your house catching on fire, like, you're, you're going to be scared, but we all go to sleep every night. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, it's a possibility. Your house could catch on fire. But one of the things that helps us sleep is a, um, a, a smoke detector, right? Have something like a smoke detector for, for weather warnings. The best option is a NOAA weather radio. We've got them. Like, you, know, you can get them at Target. You can get them from me. I've got them on my website. But like you can go down to the corner store and get them like what, whatever it is. Uh, but there's apps on your phone uh, there. You know, there's the thing that, you know, whenever there's an Amber alert, it goes crazy. You can go into your phone and make sure that that happens when there's a tornado warning too. Um, just do whatever you can to make sure that you're woken up in, in the case of a tornado warning or a flash flood warning or something like that. And live your life. Go to sleep, especially on days like this. Now, there's sometimes where I would not advise that you go to sleep. And one of the things that I think where this question comes from is when I did my live stream of the uh, Mayfield, Kentucky tornado on December, uh, what was it? 10th, 11th of 2021. There was a huge giant tornado ripping through Kentucky and it, there was no end in sight. And you know, there were towns an hour or two hours ahead of where the storm was. And I was telling those people like, don't go to sleep. You know, it was like 10 PM, you know, I was like, don't go to sleep just yet. <laughs> Stay up and watch what happens with this thing. Um, only in situations where there's a giant killer tornado on your doorstep, and it's definitely coming right towards you, would I suggest that you interrupt your, your sleep schedule. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> but if you just want to hang out and talk weather and watch these storms unfold and just be hyper aware and it's not going to bother you to stay up, I recommend you stay up. Yeah, the, I mean, honestly, yeah, the rotation uh, near Decatur is continuing to look more and more interesting. Um, I would, I, you know, hopefully everybody in Decatur is in their safe spot. We've been talking about you for a while. Um, and yeah, that, I mean, I'm actually to the point now to where I believe that that could be producing a tornado. Um, it, in fact, if it's not, it might as well be very soon. So We've got a tornado that's trying to form or has just formed near Decatur, Michigan, and it's moving up towards Lawton and Matawan in uh, Michigan. Take shelter immediately. I'll tell you what, guys, if we haven't had a, a tornado warning in the southern mode, um, of, of storms tonight bef by 1230 AM, I'm going to, I'm going to go to sleep myself. But I think we probably will see some stuff by then. I don't know.
And that's 12.30, um, yeah. Uh, Harvey says, we are right in the middle of that rotation. The wind just picked up big time and we've got some hail. Yeah, I don't think that uh, there's, there's a storm chaser. There's a couple storm chasers actually right in the middle of that uh, rotation. And I haven't heard or seen any reports of an actual tornado down yet. So that's a good sign. But there's definitely enough rotation there that it could happen any moment. John Ritchie, thank you so much. Thank you to all the new members tonight and all the people supporting the channel. It means a lot. It helps us helps us more than you could possibly know. Uh King Tut says you're more <laughs> you're more likely to get injured doing a TikTok challenge than by a tornado, folks. <laughs> you know what? I don't. I, I haven't done the. I haven't read the. Uh, I haven't read that study. But I would say that you're probably right. What time zone are you, Ryan? I'm in the Eastern time zone. I'm way down yonder. You can probably hear it in my voice a little bit. I'm from this general vicinity. Um, Apple at you. How did a uh, how did somebody born in the mountains of Appalachia develop an obsession and love for tornado and severe weather forecasting and now casting? Don't ask me. We, we don't get them down here. Like, and when we do, it's, it's like once in a lifetime kind of thing. So, but yeah, that's where I'm from and that's where I am. RJ says, Ryan, I'm going to take your advice and try to get some sleep here in Dayton. I've got my NOAA weather radio. If anything gets crazy, that's my, that's, that's, dude, yes. Get some sleep, get some rest. Don't be scared, be prepared. Get yourself a NOAA weather radio if you don't have one. It's like, uh, it's literally like having a, um, a smoke detector, but for tornadoes. <laughs> You don't got to get them from me, but we do have on uh, shopryanhall.com. The fire near uh, Pan Pantex uh, is Pantex. Oh, is this a, the a power plant? The fire near the Pantex plant is not contained. Response efforts have shifted to evacuations. There's a small number of non-essential personnel sheltered on site. I believe that was uh, about two hours ago. I don't know what the update is there. Oh, that's a nuclear power plant. <sighs> well, keep us updated, Chandra, on that one. For sure. Somebody in the chat just now said Versailles. I don't know how people get out of whack like that.
Pentex has completed its employee accountability process. All employees have been accounted for. Yeah, so that was 27 minutes ago. What do you suggest truckers do during a tornado? Um, hopefully, like you're you're also like paying attention and keeping an eye on the radar and and understanding where you are and where the tornadoes are. And I would just try to get, I would try to uh, circumvent the the storms in my route. I would try to go around them. If it was too late, if I if I had to go through the storm, um, I would pull off at an exit before the storm got to me. Uh, if it was if there's a tornado warning, um, I would get out of the truck and go into a sturdy building, a truck stop, uh, you know, maybe j just one of the the big brick sheltered bathroom centers, uh, you know, something like that. But yeah, uh, as if I was a trucker, the the number one thing that would help me be uh, prepared but not scared would be to just be hyper aware of everything that was happening. So I would definitely have to have a radar app. I would probably be watching this. I would like I would I would watch hey, this. Hey Ron, it's Chris. You got a copy? Um and I would uh Yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> I would plan my route accordingly and make adjustments as new information come in. What's up, Chris? Well, I'm just north of Evansville. I'm starting to wonder if we're still capped. Because their storm's blowing up just to the west, but they are not getting going whatsoever. So I'm going to mosey on to the east, maybe towards the Louisville, closer to the river, in case something tries to pop up in front of that line. But as of right now, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I do not have high hopes for tonight. Yeah, it's looking like, uh, I mean, it's it's looking like the, the cap is, is going to win this war. Um, which is great news, uh, but honestly, really surprising. On very, very surprising. Every single shred of uh, data that we had leading up to this event uh, suggested otherwise. So that's a learning opportunity that we're going to have to look back on and try to understand uh, what went wrong there in the forecasting process. But I also don't want to speak too soon. Because, I mean, these storms are eventually going to do something. And I, I don't want to, like, use too much language of, like, oh, it's a bust or, oh, nothing's going to happen. Because if I do that and, you know, somebody hears that and disregards warnings tonight or whatever uh, and somebody gets hurt, uh, you know, I, I, I just really don't want to. I never want to downplay any severe weather situation. It just maybe looks like it's not going to be as bad as what it could have been given the data that we had earlier. So that's always good news. This is like the third stream in a row, though, where something like this has happened. Normally, every stream, it's it's pretty intense. It's pretty active. There's, you know, there's tornadoes because, like, you know, we're pretty good at forecasting. And so is the National Weather Service. And so is, like, everybody that's involved in this. Um, but so, the, the last uh, two or three live streams have been a little off. Uh, marketing and uh, Shopify store manager for shopryanhall.com is pinging me right now saying, Ryan, please, please, please remind these people that the Yalometers are leaving for the season and it's their last chance to get one and they're 20% off. Yalometers, big, giant, fancy snow measuring sticks, beautiful, lovely products. You get a chance to win $1,000 if you send me a picture of you measuring snow with the yellow meter. Um, and that's available on shopryanhall.com right now, 20% off. Go, 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 go. Supports the channel and everything that we do. It'll help us get better at forecasting, uh, theoretically. So maybe, you know, maybe we could, you know, do better in the future. I, I certainly wouldn't call the whole event a bust, though. We definitely had a bunch of tornadoes in northern Illinois earlier, and that was also in the forecast. But, oh. Bro, why didn't nobody tell me about this? Wait, is that like side lobe? Yeah. 
yeah, that's side lobe. Okay. They did the same thing to me. You're not alone. <laughs> okay. I was like, wait. Okay. Yeah, we still we definitely still have some rotation here in this storm, but I, I was kind of jump scared a little bit there <sighs> by the velocity signature. Uh, I, I would be surprised, I think, if they issued another tornado warning, but I, at the same time, I wouldn't. There's a chance that they're going to issue uh, reissue a tornado warning for Portage just in case that decides to wrap up and produce a tornado there. But right now, I don't think there's a tornado in that at all. But you should still be sheltered, at least for the next couple of minutes, in uh, Van Buren County, Michigan, until that warning is allowed to expire. Jack says that uh, yesterday it was 70 here in South Dakota, and today it was 15. <laughs> That's crazy. Anthony, thank you. Katarina, thank you. Ryan, uh, thank you for that. It says Terry uh, Hot Indiana update. Uh, nothing. There's really nothing to update you on right now. Um, I will uh, be updating you if there's something to update you on, but like, there's just not anything going on right now. There's a chance of some severe weather tonight. There's also a chance that there won't be severe weather tonight. We, we literally know nothing until the storms start popping up. Just know that the uh, conditions are somewhat favorable. Hey, Ryan, I have a final update for you. Go ahead. So, uh, I'm not sure if you saw my last tweet, but I am well in the area where the um, radar says that it's snowing, but I can see the snow um, sublimating about 300 feet above the ground, so I'm getting actively scammed by dry air, so I'm going to call the night because uh, there's no point in watching dry air cancel all my chances of snow. That makes perfect sense, Riley. You killed it, though. You saw more snowflakes than any of the other uh, chasers that we're working with tonight, so that deserves an award. I know I said the, I know, I know I said it wrong. Uh, Ryan, what are your, wait, I, I lost the daggone message. Ryan, what are your personal top five live events you've done? Your coverage of the rolling of fork would definitely be in my top five. Um, top five as, as I don't know, I guess it depends on what you're talking about. Like, is it my top five favorite because they were fun or top five um, most useful or top top five most impactful. I think that you mean impactful. And if uh, by that metric, I would definitely put the rolling fork uh, one in there uh, probably at five. Um, uh, right after that would be the March 31st uh, tornado outbreak of last year, which was crazy. The Little Rock tornado and the Iowa tornado. Um then I would probably do the uh, derecho in uh, December of 2021. Then I would probably do Hurricane um, Ian as number two. Uh, and then the number one would be the Mayfield tornado. Yeah.
it'll be a lot later before this gets to Louisville, guys. It could be as late as 2 or 3 a.m. before any storms get in the Louisville area. And that's still if storms, if storms happen. Oh my God, it's so crazy how, uh, how different the forecast is now uh, versus what we were seeing earlier. Let's see here. Microwave says, uh, I, he I heard a joke about volcanology that definitely applies. The only certain way to know if a volcano is about to erupt is when you decide it's not going to. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, with, with tornadoes, you can, like, you can know like, that, that they're about to happen, especially right before they do. Um, but you can't really know before the storm even happens. Like, a lot of people want to know, like, when will the tornado hit my house? You know, the one that hasn't even formed yet, and like the storm that will produce it hasn't even formed yet. Like that, that's that, that's not possible. But yeah, I, I definitely relates. Corey, thank you. Karim, thank you. Uh, so the Rolling Fork tornado compares to whole outbreaks. Just wondering. Uh, so the Rolling Fork tornado was a part of an outbreak. There was there were multiple tornadoes that day. Um, but yeah, that was definitely the most impactful one. And yeah, even if that was the only tornado that happened that day, it would be in the top five just because that was crazy. That was that was nuts. Uh, Yalameter, <laughs> Ryan's got his Yalameter, uh, in a thunderstorm out there in Michigan. Let's about to see how well it works for hail. Well, if you keep it out there all night, you, you'll measure some snow tomorrow too. Believe it or not. Yeah, guys, I think it's about time to say <laughs> that, um, you know, this doesn't look like it's going to happen down here. I can't, I, I can't believe it almost more than you. If this was going to verify as a, an enhanced risk of tornadoes, a 10% hatch risk of tornadoes, we should already be seeing, there should already be tornadic supercells ongoing. I think the problem is their, their, the thermodynamics didn't play out. We didn't have enough moisture. There wasn't enough relative lift. Um, the, I don't know how the, 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 the forecast models and, and everybody involved with this missed it. But the beautiful thing is, is you know it's a learning experience. And this uh, type of system will never be missed again. There's still going to be storms tonight. There's, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that there's still going to be storms tonight. But at a 10% hatched risk of tornadoes, I don't see that verifying at this point. They ain't supposed to hit until 2 a.m.-ish. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's going to be storms, but 
the type of storms that would warrant uh, such a um, uh, an enhanced risk for tornadoes are not the kinds of storms that will be hitting at 2 a.m. That's not to say that there won't be tornadoes. Uh, there, there definitely could be. Um, I just think that the, the event overall is just not in line with the forecast so far. But yeah, I definitely see that these will continue to grow upscale and uh, probably produce some some sort of severe weather tonight, including tornadoes. I'm just hoping that it's not going to be a, a, a widespread uh, kind of thing. But hey, I could be wrong, and we're going to be sticking around here for a little while longer just to make sure nothing starts popping off. Side lobe. Uh, I think that system just south of St. Louis has the best chance. Yeah, that's I've been watching it. Yeah, St. Louis looks fine for the rest of the night. Um, there's going to be more rain that comes through, but there's no nothing to be worried about. Yeah, a lot of people are, you know, uh, probably going to bed around this time. Just know that, you know, you're under a tornado watch till 6 a.m. tonight. Um, if you live in the tornado watch in southern Indiana, uh, northern Kentucky, uh, western Ohio, southern ports of Illinois, uh, have some way of getting warnings tonight. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping for the best. I hope that the trend that we're in right now continues and we don't have a big tornado outbreak. I mean, that would be best for everybody. Debash has been the uh, official sponsor for 26 months. Ryan going to bed soon might be the thing that breaks the cap. You know it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and yap about how I'm about to end the stream for the next 30 minutes. And then 31 minutes from now, a new tornado warning has been issued. Happens every time. Ryan, what was your most memorable live stream so far doing live streams? Definitely, definitely Mayfield. Yep. Nothing's even come close to that. Um, second most memorable would be the, uh, I don't remember, the one in Texas, College Station, Texas, when we had Vince and uh, Brandon, and it was just a really intense storm chasing side of the stream. Uh, we had a, a lot of storm chasers on a tornado, and it was just very intense. Uh, I remember that very well. But it, it, that one ended up not being as bad, I guess, as some of the other ones. Um, the best settings for alerts on Radar Omega or whatever suits your personal needs. Radar Omega is the most personalizable and customizable radar app that you can possibly have. It's a little overwhelming um, because there are a lot of options, but man, like you can literally do whatever you want in that app. You just got to spend some time tinkering around with it. And last call, Radar Omega, huge supporter of the channel. We couldn't pay people <laughs> to do the stuff that they do like the drive around in the storms and 
um, all the stuff that's normally extremely useful to us if it wasn't for companies like Radar Omega. And, and also, they just have the best Radar app, so you should download it if you haven't already. Uh, click the link in the description for Radar Omega iOS or Android, either one. You won't regret it. There's people that have downloaded this app on my recommendation two years ago that still use it every day today, and they, 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 it's, they love it. I love it. Yeah, I can look at Detroit real quick. There are some storms heading towards Detroit, but they're, I mean, they're garden variety stuff, man. Like the, just a brief rain shower, maybe a lightning flash, a clap of thunder here and there, but that's, uh, those are really not much to worry about at all. The lights are orange, so I guess we've got something else to talk about. Let's let's hear it, Chandra. Ryan, we're kind of winding down back here, so I went and got us a brand new smoking bag of nadir beans oh. for us to stay up and watch some naders with. If you're unaware of what nadir beans is, it's the world's best coffee. So highly recommend you going over there to Shop Ryan Hall, y'all, and picking up a bag of nadir beans. Also. If you had hail in your city today and you did not have a round measuring tape to measure how big your hail was, we have one for you. So what this is, is a hailometer. Can you see it? Yes. Does that look real good? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And this measures core size hail. Uh, Papa John. Oh my oh, that. that was not a wise decision. <laughs> Do not measure open Papa John's garlic, <laughs> but you can just not sideways. Right. Um, other than that, you, you have oh oh yes, we have little coasters you can measure. Mm. Just for idea, if you ever get held this big, it's probably not a good idea to like go outside and gather it up and put it on a you know helimeter, but right. maybe for like a couple hours later or something if it's still frozen right but i just want to let you guys know that we have these and they're on shop ryan hall y'all dot com <laughs> awesome all right love it uh chandra uh, not only is um in charge of the you know organizing the chaser streams back there handling news relay uh chandra also does a lot to help with our online store um so yeah, uh, so, you know that's just another way you can help support us. And having the radial measurement device is super useful. It's very accurate. Um, you put anything round on it, and it will tell you how big it is in diameter, in inches, centimeters, and and it'll even tell you like like she was talking about like what relative thing it is similar to. You know, like baseball size, tennis ball size, DVD size, basketball size, whatever it is. Radial measurement device halometers. Oh yeah, and the you are, the the site is shopryanhall dot com. Shopryanhall dot com. We forgot to put the y'all on there. We've had DVD size hell. Absolutely. Uh, Northern Ohio says, I really enjoy everything you're doing. I've been watching your channel for almost a year now. Thanks, Ryan and crew, for all your hard work. Thank you. Ash, thank you. My son's in Northern uh, Illinois. Everyone made it to the basement while listening to you. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you guys for being so supportive. We gather here today on the eve of another uneventful 
severe weather day. Now, to be fair, this is this, today has been a, like a million times more eventful than the last live stream we did. We had a 10% hatch risk of uh, tornadoes. Uh, what was it on January 8th or January 20th or I don't know. And there was barely a raindrop any, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we had some, you know, we had some good discussions during that live stream, but uh today there were tornadoes and and I believe we did actually help a lot of people. So that is um that's what it's all about. Yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting for them to issue another tornado warning for this. I don't know if they're going to. There's been so many uh, storm chasers on that without seeing anything that like we obviously the 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 signature there is a little bit misleading. Uh but they they might have to in a minute just to be just as a precaution. Ryan Johnson with the very generous 10 dollar super chat it says hey ryan weather geek from colorado i just want to say thank you for all the coverage when i was a kid watching the weather channel i always wished for coverage like this really a dream come true ryan we're the same that we we are the exact same i i, I had the same dream I, i'm sure a lot of people have like you you watch something like the weather channel and you're like this is cool but uh, it needs to be more or less what, whatever it is. Um, I, I understand what you're saying. And that was part of the inspiration for making the channel. I didn't know so many people also felt the same way. I thought it was just going to be, you know, myself and a couple other weather nerds just geeking out about the weather. But it turns out that this format, the style of uh, severe weather coverage is not just wanted but it's needed it's a it's it's incredibly needed uh, uh so i'm happy happy to provide the service it's a dream come true for me to just be sitting here doing this and when there's actually storms it's even better <laughs> no no actually this is preferable this is this is nice i like just sitting here talking to you um, there's obviously going to be more storms tonight farther south, but I hope that things stay a little bit more tame. Um, obviously, the, the streams are more impactful um, and, and like they're more, I guess, action packed <laughs> whenever there's a, a, you know, a significant outbreak or something. But like when those streams end, um, it's never a good feeling. Uh, whereas today we're just going to, you know, eat some hopefully, hopefully if nothing crazy happens, we're going to eat some pizza and. Sleep soundly. Well, uh, we do have an update from meteorologist Andy Hill. What you got, Andy? Hey, Ryan. I saw a nice donation that asked what side lobing is, and I figured I'd have one more thing to say before we, uh, you know, sign off with hopes tonight that nothing else happens. Um, side lobing, whenever Ryan and I talk about it on the radar, is uh, simply we're looking at velocity and we see some velocity signatures that don't really line up with, you know, where we would expect to see rotation in a storm or they're in an area of clear air, uh, perhaps. So what's happening there is these uh, rogue or faux velocities that look really intense and look like they're making up quite a considerable area of rotation are actually in that clear air. The radar is scanning basically nothing there, but above where it's scanning, uh, part of the storm is actually right on top of where those uh, enhanced velocity signatures are. So because the storm is, or because part of the storm is above it, 
the radar scanning above, it sends uh, some signals down, and re and those are false returns that we end up scanning lower uh, in the atmosphere. As a result, um, it does make some velocity signatures that look different from your conventional rotation you see in a tornado. So once it's it's like pattern recognition. Once you see them and they look blocky and chunky and they're not really aligned with the part of the storm that would make sense, we can call that side lobing. All you have to do is go to a higher tilt uh, of the radar to see that that part of the storm is over um, those uh, that weird velocity signature. And if it, if it is, if there's higher reflectivity there, then... That's how you a can new tell tornado warning so it's has advanced. been issued. Well, maybe I should just talk more, shouldn't I, Ryan? That <laughs> tends to keep the stream going with the new warning. <laughs> right. Anyways, it, it's it's a little bit uh, more advanced of a you know thing to pick out on radar, but um, once you've looked at enough storms and you're like, that isn't quite right, that doesn't look quite right, you can confirm side lobing by going up and tilt, and you can do that on Radar Omega or on any radar program you're using, basically. So you'll get the feel of it, you'll get the hang of it, just take some, hey, is this side lobing? And then someone can confirm it for you, and then you'll learn over time. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, uh, meteorologist Andy Hill, uh, dropping uh, some knowledge on us there. And I thank you to whoever asked that question. I know it gets asked um, uh, very often, so hopefully, hopefully uh, that explains uh, it to you. And anybody else that was wondering, uh, we do have a new tornado warning, of course, for Kalamazoo County, Michigan. It's for that same uh, storm that we've been watching. A little bit of side lobe contamination going on with this uh, velocity uh, return here, but there is there um, underneath that there. I mean, there is actual rotation here. Uh, it's not. Incredible, um, but it is there. So we must uh, pay attention to it. And we must shelter if we are in Climax or Galesburg in Michigan. Okay. And, you know, if you zoom out, if you really just take a look at the, the storm overall, I mean, it does look it does look like a storm that could produce a tornado. All right, we've got the hook trying to form down here. Plenty of room for the warm air to come into the storm. Big forward flank i mean like this is a supercell uh so let's see let, let, let's see we're, we're gonna watch it we're gonna wait for the next couple of scans to come in and uh we're gonna let you know uh you know what the next move is if it looks like it's getting more intense or less intense if it you know that's what we're gonna do until we don't need to anymore there's also a couple other places along this line uh, that are rotating now, too, so I wouldn't be surprised to see another tornado warning, uh, you know, maybe farther south towards Vicksburg if that continues to uh, increase in the, uh, you know, the reflectivities there. So that's what's going on up here in Michigan. One tornado warning now. Down in our enhanced risk, we still have uh, nothing. So... Yeah, I'm going to keep you updated on that as well, but I, I did have to come down here just to check on it. Brad Arnold is heading west. He's going to, he's going to go after this storm here, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, when will Ryan move to Alabama and start training to replace the great span man when he retires? Never. A new no. tornado warning has no. been issued. Um, first of all, I don't think James Spann will ever retire. <laughs> and second of all, no. James Spann is a legend. But like, hey, anytime there's a tornado outbreak in Alabama, I will be live here on YouTube. So there's that. They did issue a new tornado warning for Battle Creek, Marshall, and Marengo in Michigan uh, ahead of this storm. So they're expecting that this thing is going to skedaddle. It's going to keep moving and it's going to keep uh, spinning all the way uh, through the next uh, 58 to 60 minutes. 
It's going to go past Battle Creek, Marshall, Marengo, all these places. Take shelter now if you're in Kalamazoo County, Michigan. Uh, De Devin, uh, I think that, yeah, you're, you're okay to go to sleep. Just make sure you have some way of getting warnings. A new tornado watch has been issued. James says it's still quite warm here in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Uh, you do a fantastic job, Ryan and crew. Stuff is supposed to form along the cold front. Yes. Now that's inevitable. Like there is going to be, there are going to be storms that form along the cold front tonight. That cold front will hit, like it'll cross into Kentucky. There will be a bunch of storms tonight. Um, but like right now, according to the forecast or that we had, were talking about earlier, there were supposed to be tornadic supercells down there. They're not there yet. Maybe they'll come in a little bit. Maybe not. Uh, but I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you how it is. You know, <laughs> certainly don't lay your guard down. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. Yep, Battle Creek is under a tornado warning in Michigan. Uh, there's a, a rotating storm to your west, uh, and it is trying its best to, um, you know, rotate enough to try to produce a tornado. Uh, so that's why there's a tornado warning right now. Uh, I, there is no confirmed report of a tornado or anything just yet, but the storm does look impressive, and it could produce a tornado at any time, so that's why uh, we've got... Um, the warning in place. And that also includes Marshall, Michigan as well. Uh, why aren't there any rain meters? We're working on it. The scientists are working on it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to read chat here, but my it's. It's going fast and my mind is going slow. I'm, I'm getting a little tired. Oh my gosh, more aerial views of the, uh, the fires in Texas, man. That's crazy. Horm uh, says, do you stream every day? I don't. I've been thinking about it. I've been considering it. 
um, and uh, almost every day I do an, uh, a video, uh, like an on our extra channel, at, at least three days a week. Uh, so almost every weekday, I should say. <laughs> um, so what I've, I've thought about doing is maybe like stream for like two or three hours during the creation process of that video. Still make the video, um, but kind of like do kind of like what we're doing here during the creation process of it. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I like streaming. Um, but as far as like what you're seeing here, like with the storm chasers, with all uh, everybody involved and, and like going for however long that we're going, that is only something that I'm doing right now. Whenever, uh, Whenever there's a huge, de like if there's a hurricane or a, a tornado outbreak uh, or a blizzard or something like that, we're trying our best not to overstimulate the masses here on YouTube and, and make sure that we're only live during the most intense events so that like people tune in and we can save lives and we don't, people don't get tired of seeing us and then nothing's going on. <laughs> we're trying our best. Um, but, um, that is, you know, that, that's the, the, the gist. If you've been following for a long time, you know how it works. If we're live, usually, you know that something's going on. Tyler Collins says, I've been watching for a few years now. My girlfriend bought me a Yalometer for Christmas last year. A few storms south of Columbus, Ohio. Thanks for all your team does. No problem, Tyler. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I like one, two, three. Yep, still rotating. Storm approaching Battle Creek. We need everybody in Battle Creek, uh, Michigan to be sheltered now. Jamie, thank you so much for the gifted. This storm continues to look more and more impressive every frame on reflectivity. Velocity's hard to hard to it's hard to say exactly what's going on there. Um, but there's definitely some rotation. Definitely. Yep, if if I'm in uh, Battle Creek, uh, Battle Creek, uh, Michigan, I'm taking shelter now. Definitely a strong storm approaching, and it could produce a tornado at any time. It's not, I don't think it is just yet, um, but we're we could be getting close.
where have been the touchdowns? There's been uh, several tornadoes earlier in uh, Illinois. The software that I'm using is called Radar Omega. You can get it on your phone. Yeah, the, um, the storm that's approaching Battle Creek, Michigan right now is f fairly concerning uh, looking um, uh, on reflectivity. Uh, the velocity is still a little blown out. It's hard to tell what's really going on there. But um, even I, I think what's what's really happening is also concerning. Um, that's probably a better depiction of like the actual velocity here. But still, there's a couplet there. There's um, I mean, the reflectivity just looks crazy. Uh, this could be trying to tornado uh, near Battle Creek, Michigan. Please take shelter out there if you live in that area. This is Kalamazoo County, Michigan. Uh, Marshall, uh, Walnut Point, uh, Rice Creek, y'all need to be taking shelter too. The the storm, I, I will say, probably looks a lot more uh, mean than what it is in, in, in real life, but just a couple more frames of this, and, and we could be talking about uh, a pretty serious situation unfolding. Reed Timmer was streaming, uh, but he's taking a break now. Where is he? Where Was he on the northern storms or was he down south? I think that Reed and I uh, might work together again this spring. We've been talking. If you, guys, if you guys see Reed out and about or on social media, you should plant the idea in his head like, hey, remember the good old days when you and Ryan Hall used to just tackle tornadoes together and you know <laughs> I, I really wish those days would come back Reed and just just like plant the idea there for him because Reed and I are good friends um you know we just he does his own thing um but I I just love him being a part of the stream he's a he's a, a character to say the least and he's really good. He's really good at what he does. Oh, I mean, this <laughs> the Battle Creek storm continues to look menacing. Uh, but we're still just monitoring it right now. And you're hopefully still just taking shelter in Waddles Park, Marshall, Walnut Point, Marengo, Rice Creek, and Duck Lake in Michigan. A lot of people asking about the uh, cap. Uh, we I, I we talked about it earlier. Uh, maybe uh, Andy could could even chime in to give a little bit of a better explanation. But um, es essentially, there's a, a a layer of warm air above the surface that's keeping the warm air that needs to be lifted up fr from from lifting up as efficiently as it should. Um, so th there's other aspects to it as well and sometimes even in situations like this it's not always just the cap uh, that that's keeping uh, things at bay 
Uh, but if if Andy gets a moment and, and he wants to explain it a little bit more in depth, he's more than welcome to. <clears throat> oh, well, look there. Ask and you shall receive. Go ahead, Andy. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, in this case, um, our cap is kind of not really a cap. Uh, that's preventing these storms from going up. Or, hey, Ryan, uh, it's so Brad. Uh, we are heading you know, uh, we actually have, west, uh, what's called uh, well, a near southwest. surface inversion. So in this case, uh, it's really difficult for storms to root to the surface, which would prove uh, to have a tornado threat because right above the surface, the temperatures warm up a little bit. Um, and in order for air to rise, it always has to be warmer than its environment. So if right at the surface, the air is colder than what's just above it, it can't really really rise into that um, and thus we have an inversion that happens every night when the temperature cools off um, and uh, it, right next to the surface whereas just above the surface the air takes a little bit longer to cool off because it acts like a liquid acts like a fluid that's how our atmosphere works um, usually when we talk about a cap that's that sort of uh, lid or inversion and the warmer temperatures are maybe you know a couple miles above your head um, but in this case, it's definitely right next to the surface and, um, how we, how we get nocturnal tornadoes then you're like, well, does, if that happens every night, how do we get a nocturnal tornado threat? That happens when we have strong southerly winds, usually southerly that are infecting all of that, um, very moist air. The air is moist enough to keep the air right next to the surface warm as it's uh, being blown in it keeps it uh, warm enough to where it's always warmer than what's just above your heads. And that means it can still rise and still prove to be a tornadic threat uh, indicator. So um, in this case, the air that's blowing in is not as warm or not warm enough than what's just above the surface. And that's why we see a, a failure mode for this um, southern tornado threat and also what's preventing maybe these uh, tornado worn storms from actually producing a tornado that reaches the surface. All right. Thank you very much, Andy, for that. Um, uh, so, yeah, there's uh, two. If you go back far enough, you can find three total, um, you know, kind of different ways of explaining uh, that. There, it's a it's not like as simple as like, oh, a cap is like the, you know, it's it's like uh, once insert one sentence here <laughs> like sometimes you know it depends on the context and, and there's a like a there's a couple different ways you can explain it so like hopefully that helped a lot um battle creek storm continues to rotate continues to look like a good little storm but it is weakening i think um so as this approaches marshall and moringo we want you to stay in your safe spot but hopefully hopefully they're gonna. Uh, they're, this will not continue. This will not be a new warning that's issued um, a little bit later. Because if that's the case, we're probably gonna wrap it up. Um, we we do have storms forming out here on I seventy in Illinois, but they are not. They are not the kind of storms that you stay up for yet. Things will continue to progress overnight. These will turn into stronger storms. I still think we have a, a hail threat, a, a tornado threat. It's 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 there. It's just not anywhere uh, near what would pr you know keep us going. Uh, you know, as far as live stream goes. So um, don't be scared. Be prepared. Make sure you have some way of getting warnings tonight and sleep soundly, knowing that this you know uh, hopefully that tomorrow we can say that this didn't go. Uh, as bad as it could have went, uh, so and and that's always a good thing. We did see many tornadoes today um, in northern Illinois. We'll probably start hearing tomorrow and and the next day about what kind of damage those did, EF one, EF two, that kind of thing. I'll be sharing that information on my Twitter as it comes out, and we'll, we might do a little bit of a uh, recap on the next extra video. And if, you know, every time I'd say extra video, you're so confused, you don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> I do have an extra channel. You should look up Ryan Hall, y'all extra. And um, subscribe to that channel. It's you, the main channel here. It's kind of reserved now for live streams and like out outlook videos like here's how tornado season's going to be here's how hurricane season's going to be 
here's how this next big cold blast is going to be, you know, big, major, long-term uh, uh, pattern changes and stuff like that. Uh, but the extra video is literally like, okay, here's what's going to happen today. Or like, here's what's going to happen tomorrow. As long as there's things that are going to happen. You know, whenever there's a chance of severe weather today or tomorrow or whatever, I, I post on those days. And if there's nothing, if there's not a lot of things to talk about, I don't post. So I think that's a good way to, to do it. You know, sometimes if if we go on a streak where the weather's really nice and it's sunny and 75 everywhere and there's not a lot going on, you, you don't want to see the weather, man. You know, I, I just show up when you need me. <laughs> Honestly, like just on a normal day-to-day -day basis of w you're just trying to figure out, oh, when's the, when's the rain shower going to arrive? And like, what, what's, is it going to be 60 or 70 degrees tomorrow? Like your, your phone app does a really good job of that. It's the stuff that requires nuance and urgency and, uh, you know, the stuff like, you know, what we covered earlier today that I think that people like me are needed for. So I try to only show up then. No cameras in Battle Creek from what I can tell. Um, Lane Desiree? Making my first donation to celebrate your coverage tonight and Chicago's weatherman Tom Skilling's last storm system before he retires in just a matter of hours. That's, I did not know that. That's crazy. Tom Skilling's a, another legend. And he's retiring tonight, apparently. This was uh, his last live coverage. Amazing. Wish him all the best in retirement. I do think that um, uh, in the future, like there, right now there's a bunch of little kids that are like, they just love weather. They're watching this. Those will be the, um, the James Spans and the T Tom Skillings of the future, and they will not work for TV stations. I think that, I think that's the, the, the big thing that'll change. If you're James Spann or a Tom Skillings, you're, you're, you'll be that for a much larger, uh, you know, area. Maybe it'll niche back down in the future. I don't know. But, like, I just don't see the, a, a James Spann or a, or a Tom Skilling happening ever again through the medium of a television network. Which is unfortunate, to be honest. Hopefully we get, we've got a lot of good youngins out there learning and going to school. I, I'm, I'm rambling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, we're just waiting to see what's happening with this storm, and then we're, we're probably going to wrap it up in, in literally five, ten minutes. I just want to make sure that we – I mean, we do have a, we have a, a little turnt little storm here. It's twisting a little bit, so we got to watch it, right? Hey Ryan, it's Chris. I don't know how much longer you're going to be staying live, but um, can't help but to notice back to my northwest near Effingham, those storms are now starting to push nearly 40,000 feet uh, echo tops. I'm going to watch those here in the next little bit. We may shoot north to get back up. Um, what is that 70 uh 70 here in just a little bit um but yeah we're watching that close like i said the echo tops are pushing 40k right now so uh okay yeah so the storms up there near effingham uh, are growing and and that's to be expected they're going to continue to do that i don't want anybody to think that like there's not going to be any storms like there there are um uh, Andy's got something for us. Go ahead. 
era and maybe give one last look at this uh, storm east of Battle Creek, Michigan, now that we have a a sort of a, a good look at it now with some reflectivity filling in. We can see some good rotation aloft there. So we'll watch it a little bit longer, I think, just in case it does something funny as it passes over I-69. All right. Thank you so much, meteorologist Andy Hill. This is, we, we do have a good uh, look at the storm now near Marshall. And it's, I mean, it's definitely worth watching. So that's why we're still here. Um, and we're just going to analyze each frame as it comes out. And we're also going to keep an eye on what's going on down there in uh, Illinois, even though, you know, it's not, it's not on the same level of what we're experiencing up there in Michigan. Yeah, this is impressive on uh, reflectivity and velocity. Um, a, a sharpshooter says that you can reach more people and it's much more accessible than span or scaling. Uh, the next great meteorologist will be streaming in some way. I agree. I agree. And I think that like the next big meteorologist knows that. They're just probably like 12. You know what I mean? Like, or, or maybe they're 18, 19, maybe they're 25. I don't know, like, but like, whoever it is, <laughs> the next James Span is not. They're they're not even thinking about a career in in TV. I don't think. Somebody said, I don't know how many people need to talk about Columbus to get a response. Um, well, that that was the first one I've seen about Columbus. And um, the, the thing is, is there's just nothing happening in Columbus. It would it would be more weird if I had talked about Columbus because like there's nothing happening down there. Um, uh, Columbus, you are under a slight risk of severe weather. Uh, I think tonight, may, maybe even, I don't even know if that's been uh, downgraded or not. Uh, let me see. Let me look at the latest SPC. Yeah, <laughs> you've got a chance of some storms tonight. Okay. Um, they're not there yet. They won't be there for a while. Um, and, uh, I don't think that you have anything to be too terribly concerned about. And I'm, I'm sorry I have been, you know, neglecting Columbus, but, uh, honestly, it's, it's best if I don't talk about your city. Like it, it is right today. So far, I have only been talking about the places that look to me like might be very soon <laughs> impacted by a tornado and Columbus hasn't been one of those places. So I am sorry. I do apologize. I, I try to. Try to touch all the bases. Sorry, once again, just trying to read the chat a little bit. If Ryan isn't talking about your city, that's a good thing. That's right. Uh, I mean, man, velocity is still cranking. 
Storm's still spinning. Is it going to keep spinning? That's the question. Um, I, I would be, if I lived in Rice Creek or Springport, Michigan, I'd be getting in my safe spot just in case. Ko he says thanks for all you do. I would I would be oh well, I would be dead if it wasn't for your channel. Uh, tornadoes ripped through Madison, Tennessee a while back. I took shelter only because I came across your reporting. Um. Well, first of all, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, for the support. You did not have to do that, and thank you for your comment. It's reassuring to hear stories like that, even though it's also unfortunate. I hate that you had to go through that. Um, but we hear, you know, from you and, and, and people like you very often, and it reminds us that it's, uh, you know, what we're doing here is, is helping people. So, it's a motivation to keep doing it better and as much as possible. Is Battle Creek in the clear? Yes. Uh, Battle Creek, um, actual downtown Battle Creek, the storm has passed you now. Uh, as far as, you know, a new uh, tornadic circulation popping up, the, the areas that we are worried about now, I think, would be Rice Creek, Albion Landing, Duck Lake, and Springport, uh, Michigan. Yeah, that maybe that's what I should do if I do daily live streams like just for like a short period of time. I should just only look at the chat and just answer every question about like what about my town in West Virginia? What about my town in Florida? What about blah blah blah? I feel like that would be uh, cuz then like if if like tornadoes aren't happening <laughs> that 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 would probably be like a fun But also, I feel like people wouldn't care. Like, people only want to know what's going to happen in West Virginia when there's tornadoes happening in Indiana. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. We have a tornado debris signature just north and east of Marshall, Michigan. Just as it passed I-69, it did squeak out a tornado right there. Um, I think the couplet's still going strong there, um, so we have to get a heads up to Springport, Michigan, and areas north of I-94 that may not already be in a tornado warning in Jackson County, northwest Jackson County, out ahead of this in Michigan. All right, thank you so much. Uh, meteorologist Andy Hill drawing our attention back into the storm here where uh, it is um, pretty apparent now that we've got a tornado down. Um, as per the uh, correlation coefficient drop here, we see the blues and the greens there indicate that uh, the size of the objects in the atmosphere here are is much different uh, than the size of the objects uh, in the atmosphere everywhere around it. So everywhere around it, we've got some, you know, rain, maybe a couple hailstones here and there, but then boom, sticks, leaves, you know, whatever else uh, is up there. Uh, that's different. Uh, so it drops the, it doesn't correlate, so it drops the correlation coefficient, paints a, a, a darker color, a brighter color, however you want to look at it on the map. And that tells us um, that there's something in the air there that shouldn't be there. And it just so happens to line up with a rotating velocity couplet and a hook echo on radar. That's probably a tornado. That's how we come to that conclusion. Um, so there is, at least was a tornado down briefly north of Marshall. It could very well still be, be down. And if it is, 
It's heading in the direction of Springport, uh, so take shelter now. On its way to Springport, it'll pass by Rice Creek and Albion Landing and everywhere in between, so make sure you take shelter if you're in those areas. Oh my gosh. The some of the photos of the uh I don't know, there's some photos going around of the the tornado in Gary, Indiana that don't look real to me. But like hey, there's multiple ones of them, so maybe they are. I'll share them if I get confirmation. But that that's a very Oddly photo photogenic tornado. Do you think this will die down as it comes into the Detroit area? I do. I think the farther east these storms go, um, the better chance that we will have of them uh, dying off. I, there might be little pulses of energy here and there like we're experiencing now uh, with this storm. Uh, but the overall you know, energy level of the entire cluster of storms will be decreasing, I think, the farther east it goes. Yeah, so uh, next frame, still there. Uh, still tornado on the ground, if you ask me. Um, so we've got a, uh, a tornado doing damage here just to the west of Rice Creek, Rice Creek, Michigan. If you If you know anybody out there in that area, you should let them know uh, that there's a tornado on the way. A tornado warning right now. Uh, still radar indicated per the National Weather Service, but we'll probably get an update here soon. Um, but to anyone between Rice Creek and Albion Landing in Michigan needs to be taken shelter. <laughs> I'm just waiting on the next scan now. Oops. Yeah, definitely some debris there. Uh, this is a tornado worn storm in Michigan, and it appears uh, that we have a radar confirmed tornado right now. Uh, it looks like there's a debris signature. Uh, Rice Creek is in the path. We st still don't have that official update from the National Weather Service, but it's coming. Um, I believe there is a tornado on the ground uh, north of Marshall. There we go. New information. Now, uh, this tornado this warning from has the been National upgraded. Weather Service, Calhoun County, Michigan. Uh, confirmed tornado on the ground. <coughs> uh, we got a tornado on the ground north of Marshall, Michigan. We have a correlation coefficient drop. We have a uh, what I believe is a bounded weak echo region. We have, I mean, just it all lines up here. And Rice Creek is next in line. Honestly, like um, if this stays down, it would be going directly into uh, Rice Creek. So hopefully it looks like a pretty small town, but uh, hopefully everybody there is in their safe spot. It's coming. That last scan of velocity does look like the uh, rotation has let up a little bit, but we want to stay sheltered in Springport and Rice Creek 
for the next little bit, just in case. Uh, yes, Cincinnati will be okay tonight. There's going to be some storms. Just make sure you're weather aware and have a way of getting warnings. Uh, Matt Dudley says, hey, Ryan, I love your content. Can you briefly go over the different radars you were just looking at and what you're looking for? Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're new here... Uh, whenever I, I, you'll see me switch between these three different views quite a bit when we're looking for tornadoes. This is the reflectivity. This is what you're used to seeing uh, when you look at radar. This shows us the intensity of, uh, of precipitation in a storm. A lot of times the darker reds and the purples will indicate areas where we have extremely heavy uh, rain and hail. Um, and it's just kind of where the storm is the most dense. OK, and that is uh, that, that's what you normally see when you look at a radar. Um, now, this storm right here, it's not the perfect example, but this is a supercell. Uh, we've got the base of it trying to curl up a little bit down here. Right. You see the, uh, the the curling motion. It's not really a hook echo, but you can see that there is definitely some twisting trying to go on here. So if, if all we had was this to work with, we really wouldn't know anything about it because like this only tells us how dense the, the storm is and you know maybe how intense the rainfall is. It doesn't tell us like which way the winds are blowing or if things are actually twisting. So that's why we actually have the velocity, right? The velocity uh, product shows us the wind speed and direction uh, pretty much of the, uh, the, the clouds in the, in the storm. So um, uh, what this does is this shows us um, the speed and the direction. And uh, what happens is the green is going to be uh, stuff that's going towards the radar. The red is stuff going uh, away from the radar. Um, and the brighter those colors, the faster, the more velocity there is uh, with those. Uh, when I say stuff, I'm talking about, you know, clouds, wind, hydrometeors, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that shows us that we have counterclockwise rotation there. Uh, this is very broad. This is very open uh, rotation. It's not tight enough to support the idea of, that there's a tornado there. But this is an example of tight rotation. You see how a new the tornado really bright colors has been issued. We've got the really um, interesting uh, looking couplet there. Um, so that's when we had the tornado down earlier. And then on top of that, if 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 we can see the hook on radar. We see the they're twisting on on that. We see the velocity couplet, the the changing um, direction of winds in a really tight area on that. Where there's one more thing we can do, we can look at the correlation coefficient. If it looks like there's debris in the air on top of those other things, then there's probably a very good chance there's a tornado down there. Uh, this indicates that there's something in the air that's a different size than the things around it. That's why it's blue instead of purple or red. It doesn't correlate, so it drops the correlation coefficient. There's something in the air there that was picked up more than likely by a tornado. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully that explains it. Guess what? <laughs> we got a tornado warning in uh, Illinois. Yep. I think, I, unless I um, hallucinated that. Nope, that, that's, this is real. <laughs> Okay, so we do have a, uh, a tornado warning now for the storm that just went by Woodbury. Uh, this is in eastern, um, eastern Illinois. A new tornado warning has been uh, issued. Sorry, hold on one second. I'm trying to find the uh, county name. Okay, yeah, so this is for Clark County, Cumberland County, Crawford County, and Jasper County, Illinois. You're under a tornado warning uh, as, um, you know, actually this storm is really kind of, it grew a lot in the last little bit. Uh, this is the one that uh, Chris Hall was talking about forever ago uh, when they were first start, started popping up. So he's on his way up there right now. Um, Brad Arnold is really close to the storm as well. So if uh, the production room hears me right now, we should put Brad Arnold in the number one spot for the time being, because we will watch this. This is worth watching. Um, as, uh, we continue to go 
into the night. I don't know how long we'll watch it. I don't know if it'll continue to be worth watching. But hey, that's why we're here. That's why the tornado watch was issued. And um, yeah. All right, let's go back up to Michigan where another tornado warning was just issued all the way out to Waterloo Village, Rives Junction, Pleasant Lake, Berryville, and Tompkins. All you guys are under a tornado warning. This is still it's a radar confirmed tornado warning, uh, so you need to be taking shelter. We do believe that a confirmed tornado is going to continue to move east into those areas north of Jackson, Michigan. Oh, don't feel bad for me. I only wanted to go to sleep if there were no tornadoes. Like if there's going to be, if this, this is going to happen, I will, I'll stay up. I, I don't care. This is, uh, this is what we do. Looks like we might have lost Brad's feed for a moment, but we're getting it back. Just bear with, bear with us. The rotation on the storm in uh, Illinois doesn't look very um, impressive. But the I would say the reason why um, the warning was issued is just simply because of the environment that the storm is in. The fact that it is a mature enough storm to, you know, be producing uh, frequent lightning and hail and, and the fact that it's surface based, at least to an extent, um, is, uh, you know, why not? Why not put a tornado warning on it? Never doubt Brad Arnold, the tornado sniffer. That's exactly right. Bro was in Chicago not too long ago. He came all the way down here to this little rain shower because he knew. He knew that it was going to start spinning. Yeah, I'm going to go I'm I'm going to be going back and forth between the two tornado warnings. One of them's in Michigan. Uh the other one is in uh Illinois, so don't let me confuse you. I'm going to try to say the state name after every town name. Uh but Springport, uh Michigan right now, you've got that rotating storm coming over you. Uh the intense rotation that spawned the the tornado and the the confirmed tornado warning is gone. Um, so I, I'm, I'm assuming now that we're expecting that maybe this will recycle. Um, and that's why we need to be getting into our safe spots in Rives Junction, Leslie, and Stockbridge in Michigan. Still believe that this is most mostly going to die out or at least just become a severe thunderstorm before it gets to Detroit. Brad's done it again. He, I mean, he, he's Brad. You know what I mean? We, we forgot about his tornado sniffing abilities because he wasn't with us for the past two months uh, for good reason. He had a little baby uh, tornado sniffer. He had to, you know, you know, raise, uh, get going, get started in the world, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, but now he's back and he's, he's once again showing us why he is, you know, the tornado sniffer. He's him. He's that guy. All right.
dude, the tor the tornado in uh, Indiana earlier. I think this is real. I think this is a real photo. This is what that looked like. This was the one near Gary, Indiana. I think what happened is a tornado touched down and then it kind of like went over the lake, it became a water spout. And um, I don't know, it's just super, super ominous looking. I'm, But I saw like multiple, I, I thought somebody was trying to just Google a picture of a scary, dark tornado <laughs> and send it that because that's, I mean, it just looked like a generic, it didn't look like something that would have come out of today. So it looks like it actually did though. Brad's trying to give me up. Oh, Brad's trying to give me updates. Oh, let's listen to him. <laughs> the last time uh, some two people were coming in at once, I had to mute Brad. I forgot to unmute him. Brian, this is Brad. Uh, tornado potential in Effingham storm is increasing. Um, it is not on that cold front, so um, we'll see if it can tap into that uh, good atmosphere. Also, I will add one of the big things that I've noticed down here compared to up in the northern risk area are the surface winds. Um, we're still at 70 degrees right now um, east of Terre Haute. Um, oh my God. And it's, it's Brad's been feeding us all kinds of great hey Ryan, stuff. Brad, uh, we are dropping south from Terre Haute down to Sullivan right now. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm becoming increasingly concerned for this storm as it heads over into Indiana and closer to Indianapolis as well. Um, it's it's out in front of everything. It is not on the cold front. Uh, I mean, tornado potential looks really really good with this storm. Uh, folks in Indiana definitely need to be able to pay attention to this storm. Um, starting to see a little bit of rotation on the back end of that on the southwest side, uh, but it's still maturing. And, and as as it does, that tornado potential will continue to increase as it gets in Indiana. So uh, we're going to get a good view of it. Lightning potential. Ryan, they just went tornado warning on that storm. We're dropping down route right now into it. That was uh, Brad's messages over the last 40 minutes that we missed from him. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we knew. We knew what he was doing. We saw his little icon coming down there. We knew that he's smart, and he picked the right storm, and he's going right for it, and he called it the warning long before it ever happened. Like, we know, Brad. Uh, but now we've got him unmuted, and we are going to get an update from him soon. Um in fact, let's go ahead and do that now, actually. Uh, Brad, we've got you uh, pulled up. Uh, we're watching. We're waiting. Um, we're seeing that storm. Um, just uh, what are you seeing as far as lightning activity goes? Is it, is it in increasing? Is it impressive? Uh, what, what, what do you got to say about the storm now? And production, is that Brad's, is that Brad's camera... Yeah, Ryan, we're looking due west right now. We're just south of Terre Haute. Terre Haute. Um, so, and we're looking due west, like I said. It's, 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 as structure-wise, it looks very good. Uh, we do have a little, little bit of a lowering, you can tell, behind the trees. Um, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit there, but it's tough when it's dark. Uh, as far as lightning goes, it, it, I mean, constant, uh, constant lightning. Uh, we're waiting on, it, waiting on it to cross the river right now. We were going to go to the west and then drop down south, but we just weren't sure we'd have enough time. These storms are moving a lot faster than the ones up north. This is moving, you're looking at 55 miles an hour, and the ones up north are moving about 30 to 40. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try to zoom in here in just one second, and you'll be able to see the wall cloud. I can see it better now. Um, so uh, let me zoom in, and I'll show it to you. But, yeah, lightning output's great. Um, the uh, the uh, radar looks really good as well. Uh, we could have a tornado here pretty soon. I'm going to zoom in and show you the lowering, though. All right, so that's Brad, tornado sniffer, um, right on the border of uh, Illinois and uh, Indiana, uh, on our tornado worn storm in Illinois, and he's going to try to give us a view of that uh, wall cloud. I see the lightning a little bit. I think the camera exposure is maybe a little off. I, it's hard to see, but you can see the. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, you can see the flashes there um, in, in front of him. 
He's positioned himself perfectly to intercept the. Hey Ryan, somebody just said on my stream that you had me on mute. Did you? Were you able to hear what I said? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We we can hear you now, and, and uh, we definitely didn't have you on mute for like thirty minutes. Um, actually, yeah, we did, <laughs> but don't worry. We we've listened to all those messages. We're completely caught up now and we're never muting you again. It was a technical issue. There you go. <laughs> Back to you, Brad. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, my feeling for kind of hurt there a little bit. I'll get over it. I'll get over it. It's all right. Um, we'll see. We're about to get a shot here in just a second. I'm about to, we're about to pull north. Uh, but there's a there's a visible lowering with this. Um, I think that it's probably going to produce. Uh, it's if if it, it, it may produce a tornado here pretty soon. Okay, so Brad, the tornado sniffer, once again, of course, we we couldn't have expected anything different. Um, has sniffed out the storm uh, down here in this mode so far tonight. We're going to keep checking in with him and seeing what's going on with that, um, and, and we're going to keep you know monitoring that. Uh, and we're also going to continue to monitor the uh, storm up here to the north. We still have a tornado warning for Tompkins, uh, Pleasant Lake, uh, and Fitchburg, all these places in uh, Michigan. So uh, if you are uh, in any of those places, please take shelter now. But that storm looks like it's weakening significantly, okay? I, I actually think they'll allow that uh, warning to expire early maybe. So we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to kind of hone in a little bit more on our southern storm now because that looks the most uh, interesting. Production room, we might go for a little while longer here. So if we can, if, if there are any other chasers in or around the Illinois storm, um, we probably need to uh, move away from the northern Illinois guys and, and, and come down to some more southern ones. I don't know if we've got anybody out there or not. Uh, it looks like Brad, Brad's the only one on LSM. I don't know where. I don't know if Nick and uh, Steven are. Hey Ryan, this this storm's a monster. Um, or not? Got a bad feeling about this one. Better. Okay, so uh, Brad Arnold is um, he's saying that uh, this storm is not looking good, uh, and and whenever Brad Arnold says that, normally what follows is uh, you know something. So uh, we're paying extra close attention uh, to the storm that's uh, crossing the border now between Illinois and Indiana. Uh, as honestly, this is right now in a pretty favorable uh, environment for uh, uh, tornadoes. It was my uh, expectation that maybe storms like this wouldn't form maybe until that environment had completely depleted itself and completely gone. But the fact that this is here now there's at least an hour window where um, things are definitely pretty primed right in here uh, for a, a, a tornado. So we're, we're going to watch this. We're going to hope that nothing happens with it. But this is a monster storm. It's growing fast, and it is starting to really rotate. They did just issue a uh, considerable severe thunderstorm war warning for, um, how do you say that? Is it Ter Terre Haute? Terre Haute? Um, uh, in uh, Indiana, uh, and that's going to be for one inch in diameter hail and up to 70 mile per hour winds. So, I mean, you, this has happened very quickly. This literally went from a little rain shower out here in central um, uh, Illinois to now a um, considerable severe thunderstorm uh, and a tornado producing storm at the same time. Uh, Andy, go ahead. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, I just wanted to say you got that pronunciation right on Terre Haute. And um, I'm also, that severe thunderstorm warning does include the tornado possible tag, which is something we look at uh, often to, you know, tell whether the National Weather Service thinks it's uh, conducive for a tornado to form uh, in the storm. So they're giving it a possibility of wrapping up. And I do agree 
uh, with Brad, because if you play back the last few skins, you can kind of watch this lead supercell kind of, you know, it, it used to just look like the front of the line. And now all of a sudden the cold pool is formed behind it. It's being pushed forward this bottom half of the storm and maybe even uh, has its own rear flank downdraft at this point with uh, quite a bit of hail in it as well. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely I've definitely got my eye on this storm and I'm going to do some mesoscale analysis on it now. OK, thank you very much. Uh, meteorologist Andy Hill, keeping an eye on everything in the background uh, for us. And um, yeah, I mean, we've got we've got you covered on this storm. Like We've got Brad out there. We've got Andy. Uh, I'm watching it now. Honestly, at pretty soon, I think when the, the Michigan storm uh, is the warning is allowed to expire, this will be our full focus. Uh, so. Anybody in the path of this storm uh, should rest assured knowing that we're going to let you literally hey, Ryan, know large, every little uh, wall cloud movement. Uh, right now, you can see it over the loves. Okay, uh, Brad Arnold says he's got a large wall cloud visible now. Um, let's pull him up full. So he's at a gas station or something. Look beyond the lights uh, for a lightning flash, and we should be able to see. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, wow, yeah. It's pretty well defined too. Um, even f like probably a lot better looking than what I would think to s that I would see based off of the radar. But yeah, that is definitely something there. Refle the re reflectivity. Gosh, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I don't know why it's, I'm having such a hard time talking right now. The reflectivity and the uh, velocity, uh, neither of them look like incredibly impressive right now. Um, but that's definitely uh, a wall cloud. We are seeing some rotation pickup here. Um, and I think that um, this he's, he's specifically looking at this part of the storm right here, north and west of Prairie Creek uh, and uh, north of Hutton, moving east towards Prairieton, Allendale, and Youngstown. Uh, Andy, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, unwarned tornado ongoing right now to the north and west of Linden, Michigan, southwest of Flint. Uh, it's on this northern edge of sort of this line of storms that's got the uh, north-south orientation to it. So we have a spin-up tornado there that is not tornado warned. There is a small debris signature uh, that I can verify right next to the velocity couplet. So heads up, uh, Highway 23 south of Flint, right around there. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, we've got a little uh, spin-up uh, tornado that could definitely cause some uh, damage and, and some big problems here along the Highway 23 corridor between Rankin uh, and uh, Baton Park. Um, and it looks to me like this little line here is going to have the ability to do a couple of those maybe over the next little bit. So everybody from Flint down to Grand Blanc, uh, Ortonville, Holly, Springfield Township, everybody needs to be watching this line extra careful as, um, you know, little spin-up tornadoes are going to be possible uh, throughout the evening. And a lot of times they're not going to be preceded by a, a, a tornado warning. Um, so let's just everybody be aware that that's possible and just, you know, get to your uh, safe spot if you uh, are ahead of that storm. Um and once again, that's from Flint down to Waterford Township in Michigan. And and there is actually a tornado warning in Michigan right now as well, if you're just now tuning in. Uh, but that storm specifically um, is looking a little bit less impressive now than what it was earlier. It's still rotating a little bit. Um, so like we've, we're still going to watch it, and we're still going to be in our safe spots in Pleasant Lake and uh, Munith and Stockbridge. Uh, but that storm is kind of letting up a little bit. Uh, our new... Main uh, focus area uh, is becoming Illinois and Indiana because we have a very intense uh, storm that's just popped up there not too long ago. It's rotating. We've got a wall cloud. Um, we had a tornado warning that's probably about to expire for Melrose, Orange, and Moonshine in uh, Illinois. Uh, we need to be in our safe spots if we're in those towns. Um, but I think we're probably going to see an extension to the east uh, for that tornado warning 
uh, maybe uh, within the next little bit if the rotation continues to pick up just to the south and west of Terre Haute, uh, which is right now under a severe thunderstorm warning with uh, potentially 70 mile per hour winds coming in. Uh, Brad Arnold, storm chaser Brad Arnold, is on the road south of Youngstown. He's between Youngstown and Pimento on Highway 41 looking to the west, and that's the view that you see above my head of the lightning in the distance uh, and the, the the pretty ominous looking picture, to be honest, uh, as the storm continues to gain strength and move into Indiana. Chris Hall is out there somewhere as well. Um, try to find... Ron, I've got it zoomed in. It's it's If it's not on the ground, it is very close. Uh, Chris Hall is, uh, I think... I've got his location down here near Louisville, but I think he's a little bit farther to the north than that. I'm sure we'll hear from him soon. Uh, Brad Arnold is saying that um, it's very cl- like he's he's saying that the storm is probably pretty close to producing a tornado. So that's why the severe thunderstorm warning does have the tornado possible uh, tag on it. So I would just go ahead and if you're watching this at 1 a.m. or midnight. And, and and you want to be extra weather aware, extra weather alert, have the edge up on most other people when it comes to being prepared and not scared, why not go ahead and uh, take shelter? Uh, maybe if you're in the general Prairie Creek, Pimento, Black Hawk, Hickory Island, Riley, Cory, or Saline City area. Um, and if that warning is issued, uh, just stay there until it's allowed to expire. Right now, there is a severe thunderstorm warning, and 70 mile per hour winds can cause damage. You definitely don't want to be in the living room during a storm like that. Get into the most interior room of your home, hopefully without any windows. Let's pull up Brad's uh, feed full so we can see what it is he's talking about there. He's got some dangly bits. Um, illuminated by the lightning every once in a while. Um, a lot of times, it's really hard to tell what's going on in a situation like this at night especially through a camera lens, but I definitely see at least part of what he's talking about um, with that lowering. Oh, yeah. And once again, he's looking uh, directly west on Highway 41 from Youngstown towards Prairieton. Uh, Toxic says uh, winds are really picking up in Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, winds are going to continue to pick up out in front of these storms. And uh, Brad mentioned that uh, the surface winds um, are really strong uh, down there. And it's one of the things that led him to this particular storm today. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if there's any text updates here. Chris is down. Just um, try to get... I don't know. We need to fill the other uh, three spots, though, if we can. Uh, Sooner born, uh, no problem. Thank you for the support. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, we do have a tornado warning uh, in Illinois. Uh, and we have a really strong storm uh, moving just to it's, it's really moving into the Terry, Terre Haute area right now. Uh, strong winds, lightning, um, uh, hail, all that good stuff. But just to the south of Terre Haute. Uh, we've got some increased rotation that uh, Brad Arnold is uh, showing us right now. He's showing us the part of the storm that's rotating as it's moving towards him at the moment. I'm sure he's going to try to get keep, stay in front of it, so we'll, he'll move soon. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, Andy's got an update for us. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, another update on the line or the spin-up tornado south of Flint, Michigan. Another one is getting ready here to... 
uh, drop right over Grand Blanc, Grand Blanc here uh, to the south and east of Flint, the suburbs there in the metro area. So it does look a little more concerning than our first one, which was just a little blip. It was uh, pretty much done by the time we talked about it, unfortunately, which is why it was not warned. But I definitely think that this uh, circulation could see a tornado warning. So if that does come out for southeastern Genesee County here in Michigan, that is the reason why y'all watch out ahead of time until that warning's issued. I would recommend taking shelter as we've been talking about. Thank you very much, uh, Andy, for once again being uh, several steps ahead and, and giving us an early heads up on uh, what looks to me Ryan also. Ryan intense rotation aloft just uh, just to the west of us right now. Right. You can see it on the stream. I've got it zoomed in. Uh, but it, it, it is rotating like a top um, aloft. Uh, nothing on the ground just yet that I can see. Uh, we're going to have to position a little bit further east in just a second. So that's Brad. We're going to check back in on that storm in the moment. But just to you know, re reiterate what uh, Andy said, this is unwarned right now uh, near Grand Blanc in, in uh, Michigan. I would be getting to shelter very fast uh, in the in the Grand Blanc area. That definitely looks like there's there could be a tornado here. Here comes the warning now. Um, there a you new go. tornado uh, warning. Uh, Genesee County, issued. Michigan. Take shelter now. Grand Blanc, Atlas, all these places. Uh, take shelter immediately. This is a very densely populated residential area. Hopefully people uh, are getting the word, getting the warning. Um, and, and once again, super huge shout out to meteorologist Andy Hill for bringing our attention to that one. Um, let's go back really quick and take a look at the storm that um, uh, you know Brad Arnold is showing us. Uh, there's a few of you guys. There's Actually, there's 300 of you guys right now in the Radar Omega app watching Brad's camera. Um, uh, you can see the storm approaching. He's now turning around to position himself a little bit farther to the east so we can continue to watch the storm. Um, so I'm, I'm going to move away from this storm until he gets in, a, in that position. And we're going to go back to the Grand Blanc uh, storm just to see just to see what the next frame is going to look like. Ryan, this, this uh, we are adjusting east. Very um, there's, a, there's a rural county road that goes east. So we're going to go east and then... Uh, keep up with it did not see anything on the ground just yet but um like i said earlier uh rapidly rotating aloft okay rapidly rotating storm just passed over um brad arnold um and of course of course the b l a n c is grand blank my bad guys i'm sorry it's it's different everywhere go ahead andy yeah, Ryan, we've got that uh, debris signature easily verifiable with uh, lowered ZDR as well, lower differential reflectivity just to the northwest of Grand Blanc. Uh, so this is uh, likely to be upgraded to a confirmed tornado warning as a tornado has just started uh, doing damage here. Um, so we can dive into the mesoscale for that one if you'd like. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, very much, Andy. We've got a tornado ongoing now uh, near Grand Blank, um, and we're going to try to give you a little bit of a better idea of exactly where it is. Uh, just give me a second here. Uh, first of all, everybody in the county of Genesee County, uh, Michigan, uh, if you're near Grand Blank, you need to be uh, taking shelter right now. Uh, but more specifically, if this uh, tornado is uh, doing... Uh, what well, we think it's doing, based off of radar here, uh, the, the 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 tornado is probably right in the middle uh, of Grand Blanc right now. It probably entered into the town uh, near the on the on the western side near uh, the Site One landscape supply area, uh, Physicians Park. Uh, probably crossed the road somewhere between Muffler Man and Starbucks. Um, once again, that's, that's a pretty big stretch of road, I know, but somewhere in there is, is, uh, around where the, uh, the, the, the tornado went, I believe it's going to continue to go, uh, in the same general direction, uh, that it came in, um, to the North and, and East towards casual furniture solutions. Um, Yep, and uh, also uh, eventually up there towards the Apex Restoration and Mitigation uh, Incorporated area. And then beyond that, I hope that this thing lifts. Yeah, a lot of times storm, you know, tornadoes and, and you, the ones that are set up like this don't last a very long time. But if this one does continue uh, beyond that, it, we're just talking about residential zone after residential zone here. Uh, cul-de-sacs, so I mean, I, 
there's so many, um, uh, you know, little, uh, neighborhoods here. I can't even begin to announce them all. Uh, but some of the things that are located around these neighborhoods are the Flint Bowman park, uh, the skipper rep respiration, res restoration, uh, uh, shop, Zinco plumbing. Uh, and then, uh, of course the Myers elementary school. Uh, and if you know the, the neighborhoods that surround the Myers elementary school, uh, that's the general area that this, uh, the, the tornado is going. Okay. And the, uh, wow, the latest, uh, correlation coefficient there is probably the most significant that we've seen today. Pretty deep. Wow. Yeah. Very deep, um, uh, blues there as, uh, it looks like grand blank probably took a, uh, a direct hit here from a, a tornado. And now we're seeing the, uh, debris very evident, uh, on radar. Uh, through the correlation coefficient. Once again, if you don't know what we're looking at here, the blue indicates that um, the, the stuff in the air here doesn't correlate in size with everything around it. So everything around it is hailstones, you know, maybe a couple of hailstones and, and mostly raindrops, which are all uniform in size. Then all of a sudden, the radar indicates that there's sticks, uh, leaves, maybe even shingles, you know, uh, much larger pieces of debris are in the air. Um, and it drops the correlation coefficient and paints it in that nice blue color there for us so that we can see that uh, there's a tornado there. So definitely had a tornado uh, come through a grand blank there. Uh, unfortunately, now we've got a huge debris signature on our hands. Um, and if the tornado is down... Brian, just got this. Uh, still very large wall cloud, uh, nothing on the ground just yet. Brad. We're headed towards uh, Riley, I believe, a little town. Okay, so that was Brad. Um, he is talking about uh, new information. About the storm in this Illinois. tornado warning has right, right been now. upgraded. We're going to go back to it in a moment. Um, uh, once again, we got a confirmed tornado in Genesee County, uh, Michigan, and uh, it's moving to the east. Now, the last couple of velocity frames look good. Uh, they look like the the rotation's trying to weaken. So hopefully that continues to be the case. But if there's still a tornado down. Um, it, it would be probably around the, uh, the landings of fountain point right now, uh, or the, um, uh, the right aid at the uh, intersection of, uh, Baisley road and East Hill road. I do think that that's probably where the rotating portion of the storm is right now, but I don't, I am not convinced necessarily that the tornado hey, is still A large down. bowl funnel on this. It's, it's a tornado is imminent. So hopefully the tornado's lifted and it's not going to come back, but my goodness, look at that, y'all. Every frame, we get a bigger debris signature, uh, which means to me that th this thing probably picked up a lot of debris in grand blank, and we're just still seeing that uh, show up here with the later scans. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think that we're going to see some damage reports coming out of grand blank. All right. Let's check in on the storm that Brad is talking about. Wow, look at all the inflow coming into it. Winds are really picking up on the forward side of the storm. Um, the thing is trying to be oriented in a way that would allow it to uh, produce a tornado. Uh, once again, we need that um, inflow to really kind of kick back this part of the storm. The rain cool air has to kind of circle around this way. And then we get the, the rotation right in the middle. Um, you know, we are already seeing that rotation, but it's pretty broad. Um, that's what's uh, causing the bowl funnel that we're hearing about from uh, Brad in this general area. Uh, if that tightens up anymore, it could produce a more succinct, more tight uh, funnel and, and eventually a tornado. And this is way down yonder in um, Indiana. All right, no tornado warning with this one right now, but a considerable severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible is in effect for places like Prairie City Art, Center Point, Lap Corner, and Hurt Corner, and Asherville, all along I-70 in West Indiana. So things uh, definitely <laughs> have picked up a little bit since from 30 minutes ago. Um, I, I'm very thankful that the, uh, rotation here, uh, with the grand blank storm does look like it continues to fall off and weaken. 
Uh, I am still, though, very concerned about what just happened uh, in Grand Blank. Um, so hopefully the radar here is maybe exaggerating, uh, you know, uh, some, some of this, the, the, the debris that it seems like we might have. But my goodness, that is a deep and wide uh, debris signature if I've ever seen one. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, uh, hopefully my early message uh, on the stream, you know, went before the storm was warned, got to some people. That's why we always emphasize to, you know, pass along the information, the power with us uh, of this stream and you guys watching is the numbers that we have and we can exponentially reach more and more people until we get the, to the ones we need. Um, this the, this is not an overestimation. Unfortunately, on the radar, we can see the debris signature from the Grand Rapids radar, which is 10,000 uh, feet above the surface. So it's definitely indicative of a significant tornado that just went right through um, uh, the right through the downtown area of, of Grand Blank. So hopefully um, everyone was able to get to shelter in time for that. I'm watching the storm, but I don't know if it has the potential to produce another tornado. Uh, certainly not one of that caliber. So that's why, you know, even if we call something out five minutes, it's you, you heat it the same way every time because it could end up like this or it could end up like the uh, silly times we were having a couple hours ago in the stream where it doesn't look like anything was happening. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much, meteorologist Andy Hill. And, and once again, a huge shout out for well before uh, the warning was issued, um, you know, calling our attention to that and trying to get as many eyeballs on it as possible uh, right before it went through uh, Grand Blank. Where, and uh, unfortunately, it does look like um, some significant damage probably happened here just based off of radar. Hopefully everybody in the production room is doing whatever they can to, to try to figure out what's going on over there, listening to scanner feeds. Uh, you know, browsing, you know, incoming information. Let's try to get a some report, some idea of what happened here within the next uh, little bit. And and this tornado, the the tornado that caused the damage in Grand Blank, is um, uh, it's no longer down. Uh, we're now just kind of assessing what happened there and how much. Uh, how much uh, damage has been done uh, we are we we might as well assume that it might be down though um because the warning is still in effect and like if you're in uh, goodrich uh or if you're over there towards elba in michigan you might as well take shelter uh until the the warning is allowed to expire Uh, and once again, uh, if you're on Twitter, if you're on X, um, at Ryan Hall, y'all, if you see anything newsworthy, if you hear any news uh, out of the uh, Grand Blank, uh, Michigan area, uh, feel free to tag me in that over there. And that'll help us tell the story uh, in a more efficient way. <coughs> Wow. That's a lot of debris. It's crazy how quick that can happen. Um, and that's why it's so incredibly so incredibly important to um be uh weather aware uh, on nights like tonight anytime there's an increased uh probability of tornadoes anywhere uh if even if you're close to the the highest uh, you know risk area you need you need to have a way of getting warnings um as soon as they come through because sometimes there's not a lot of lead time all right um let's go back and once again Check in on Brad Storm. 
it continues to look impressive. It's got a, it's sucking in a lot of air. It's by itself. It's technically discreet. Um. So we would expect that something's going to happen with it here soon. But there is a window where the um, some of the ingredients that are in place that would allow for a tornado to happen will start to kind of go down a little bit. So hopefully this storm doesn't do anything until then, and then it continues to not do anything. But, of course, we can't bank on that, and we've got to be uh, prepared uh, downstream here. They just issued a new, tor uh, not tornado, but a severe thunderstorm warning. In fact, it's a considerable severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, a little bit farther east here for places like Bowling Green, uh, Indiana, Cloverdale, and Greencastle. That's going to be for one inch in diameter hail and 70 mile per hour winds. So even if this thing down here in Indiana doesn't cause a tornado, um, it is definitely going to cause um, some, some severe weather. It's going to do damage with or without a tornado. In fact, this is a live look at what it looks like inside of that storm right now. Uh, this is Brad Arnold's feed. He He's near Cory, Cory, Indiana. And you can see there's, oh my gosh, there's some big hail there uh, bouncing on the road. Uh, and it's a torrential downpour. You can see that the winds are definitely whipping. This is the storm that's on its way to you right now in Center Point, Bowling Green, Jordan, Manhattan, and Putnamville. Uh, Indiana. Also, this is what Interstate 70 uh, is looking like right now, south of Sealyville. Um, and, you know, it's going to continue to ride Interstate 70, probably all the way up towards Mooresville and Plainfield. So um, there's a about a 100 mile stretch, uh, or maybe, maybe like a 50 to 75 mile stretch of Interstate 70. I would hate to be on tonight uh, between Sealyville, Cloverdale, and Mooresville. Uh, lights are orange. We've got some news, uh, right? What, what do we got? A little has came out about Graham Blank so far. However, the um, the power outage has seen a significant uptick. So right now, according to our graph, um, or our graphic, I'm sorry, there's approximately 16,535 residents without power. And the majority of them is out of the, how, how do you say it? The Genesee, Genesee County. <laughs> and um, that is 1,899. Okay. And, and we still haven't heard anything about damage or anything yet? We haven't heard anything at all? No report yet of any damage. We've been searching. Both of us, Allie and I, have been searching for it. So if any of you all have any reports or anything you would like to share, you have any pictures or anything like that, please feel free to at um, myself, y'all at Shan, or Ryan Hall, y'all. That way we can get that out to the public as soon as possible. All right. Thank you very much, Chandra. Um, that is uh, an update from uh, Chandra. Um, no uh, reports coming in or just yet. I don't think. Um, we'll, I'm sure stuff will will come in soon. But as always, <laughs> it's important to remember that you know when a town, when a place gets hit by a tornado, a lot of times the first reaction by the locals isn't to, oh, let's snap a photo and. And send it to Ryan Hall, y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's it's quite possible that um, a, an unfortunate situation uh, just unfolded up there, and people are uh, actually really dealing with the immediate aftermath uh, of that. So let's give them time, and, and let's wait and see if we hear anything from the law enforcement and uh, emergency services up there. So um, that's going on up in uh, Michigan. We're going to check back in on that storm momentarily. I do want to just continue to kind of uh, update you on the storm here in uh, Indiana as well, because this is a very powerful storm. Uh, it's not producing a tornado just yet, but uh, it's causing all kinds of problems uh, up and down I-70 uh, between Cloverdale and Terre Haute. Terre Haute. Tornado warning still in effect up there uh, in Michigan near Flint. Um, that should be allowed to expire here soon, though, um, as the rotation has exited the warning polygon. Um, in fact, that, yeah, that's, yeah, okay, it's been allowed to expire now. 
We have no tornado warnings currently, guys. None at all. Um, might We might see one try to pop back up here on this storm. Man, the, the storms over here in uh, eastern Michigan are really doing a lot tonight. Um, so we're going to watch these very closely. I think that the the worst of that storm, the, especially the, the part of the storm that caused the Grand Blank tornado, I think that's done. I think that's over. I think that's going to continue to cause some problems maybe as a severe thunderstorm as it goes towards uh, Attica and uh, Dryden and Almont. Um uh, but we do have to watch the northern and southern sides of that same storm as that goes towards uh, Oxford Charter um, and, uh, you know, North Branch. And we have to watch this little dangly, uh, you know, southern tail end Charlie here near um, uh, Unadilla Un 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 Township, Marion Township, and Hamburg ta Township down here in Michigan. Okay, we're watching these two areas. And hopefully... You know, they don't cause any more problems as they exit uh, Michigan and they remain just at severe le levels uh, over there towards Detroit or less. I think that we're only going to see this storm grow I th uh, over the next little bit, though. So I'm kind of really interested in seeing what's going to happen with that. So I'm going to bring all of our resources down here to it. It's currently 1.34 a.m. on the East Coast, 12.30 Central. We've been live now for almost seven hours. We had a, a probably, what, like a two-hour intermission where nothing really was going on, and now things are picking up a little bit um, as the southern mode of the, um, the storm outbreak is uh, trying to get its act together. Um, let's see here. Hope in Grand Blank says, uh, we didn't see anything at my house here in Grand Blank. Uh, we watched as we have several dogs and a small child. We're keeping watch. Um, so that's good news. I don't know exactly which part of Grand Blank you live in. I don't know maybe if you dodged a bullet and got missed by it. Uh, but somewhere around Grand Blank, there was a tornado that shot a ton of debris up into the air. So best case scenario, um, the, the maybe... The tornado was just really strong right before it got into town, ripped up a bunch of trees and caused all kinds of debris uh, that way before lifting right before the town. Um, that's a possibility. Or maybe just a different part of the town was hit than where you live. Uh, so I don't know, though. We're, this is very preliminary. We're not hearing or seeing a lot of anything uh, so far. Uh, it does look like uh, a lot of the so a lot of the scanner channels actually got knocked offline. So that's one of the reasons why um, that's one of the reasons why we're not hearing anything. Um. I'm seeing now a log of uh, some of the uh, police calls that have been coming into 911 in Grand Blank. Um, they're getting about one call per minute right now. Um, some examples of those police uh, calls are reported weather. Uh, somebody called uh, saying that there was arcing uh, power lines. Uh, there was a call to report a, a, a vehicle accident. Two calls reporting natural gas odors. Um, another call two minutes later of an arcing power line. Uh, another call at the exact same time uh, reporting wires down. Another call reporting power lines. So definitely something happened there. Uh, the 911 is getting more than one call per minute now um, about weather-related stuff. Hmm. 
<sighs> yeah, I'm trying to see what else. Uh, but I don't think we're hearing much of anything else. Okay, we got a tweet now from Jared Adams, who works for Gen Genesee County 911. Uh, he says, we are getting a lot of reports of downed power lines, and we're keeping an eye out for damage reports from Grand Blank and Atlas TWPs. Okay, so it sounds to me maybe like the actual, the, the town, maybe the town, is spared, but we we're not for sure yet. Even the nine one one center, if a, if a part of a town was wiped out, maybe the phones aren't working. Maybe you know, maybe you can't call nine one one. You know what I mean? So like, it takes a while to hear the extent of what happens during a, a situations like this. But we're hoping for the best. Sarah, thanks for becoming a member. Um, Hope, thank you for that report. Thank you all for so much. Yeah, the vast majority of the, so Genesee Fire, Genesee EMS, Genesee uh, Mutual Aid, Flint City Fire, Fenton uh, City Police and Fire, all of these uh, repeaters um, are down. So we, we're, not, we're not hearing the radio chatter like we normally would after a tornado, which is, not, I mean, honestly, I mean, it's uncommon, like even after like the some of the bigger tornadoes, we, we were still able to hear the radio communications. You know what I mean? Uh, we, there's another 911 call um, at 1.28 a.m. East, yeah, uh, about 20 minutes ago. All the metal benches, all the metal benches um, are laying across the roadway from the hot dog stand. I So I don't know. That That's all the information I have on that one. If you're just now tuning in, we are currently watching the um, we're watching a storm uh, kind of get its act together in Indiana. It's actually approaching Indianapolis right now. 
Um, it's not Tornadic as of right now. It's trying to rotate. Storm Chaser Brad Arnold has been on it for a while trying to, you know, capture the moment that it produces a tornado. It came close a couple of times. It hasn't yet. Um, what it is doing, though, is it's producing large hail and damaging winds. And it's going to continue to do that up the I-70 corridor towards Mooresville, Greenwood, Franklin, and Martinsville, Indiana. Get ready for that. And it's also going to continue to pose the risk of producing a tornado. So we're going to stick with this one for a little while. And we're also kind of just uh, doing news relay now on the situation in Michigan. We, we just watched a tornado go through or near Grand Blank, Michigan. And uh, the radar uh, indicated that there was a significant amount of debris that was picked up and lofted into the air. Where that debris came from, it looked like on radar, like it came from Grand Blank. But we're not 100% sure yet. We're trying to, to figure that out. We're hoping that it was mostly from a wooded area just before it got into Grand Blank. Uh, but we are starting to hear now some more reports of uh, damage. Everything that I've heard so far is uh, probably a lot better than what I was expecting based off of what we saw on the um uh, on the radar. But I you know, I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> you know, get too excited just yet. But there definitely was a big tornado that caused a lot of damage somewhere. Um it just uh, hopefully wasn't in the most populated area. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about on Google Maps. So it looks like there isn't actually um, a very <laughs> wooded area to the west of Grand Blank. So um, he here's what I'm seeing. Here here's what I'm seeing. According to the radar, it looked like the uh, rotation was most intense in this area. Right? So there is a chance that the tornado actually took a path that, that was like maybe something like this. You know? And maybe it did only impact a few houses, uh, you know, and, and maybe we're just not hearing about it yet, but we don't know. It also could have very well took off, took out a whole chunk of this area and we just haven't heard from it yet because, you know, it takes time to hear about those things. Um, Andy, go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. I'm watching uh, one more little squirt tornado that might be possible from this near Metamora and Leonard. And that's uh, well to the east of Grand Blank at this point in between County County Road 24 and 63 in Lapeer County. Um, that's come together over the last few scans and has been a consistent area of rotation that is not tornado warned. However, I do not think it will be uh, as strong or continuing for much longer. It looks like uh, more like a spin-up tornado, just like we've been seeing the last few, but maybe not quite as potent. Either way, in Dryden, Almont, do want to be taking shelter. Y'all watch out ahead of this thing, uh, just in case, given what we have uh, observed in the last um, 30 minutes. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, meteorologist Andy Hill, for drawing our attention back to this storm. It's rotating a little bit. We might have to watch this one um, as it comes up towards Dryden and, and Almont. 
Um, uh, but yeah, this, this, that thing is <laughs> really, uh, you know, caused a, a lot of problems tonight. We're also watching the storm down here uh, near a parish field, Brighton and Brighton township. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we just want to make sure everybody knows that we're watching these. Um, and, and if we specifically call out your town name or a storm that's near your area, it's because we believe that there's something to it. There, you know, it doesn't always mean there's going to be a tornado, but like you should be watching out. Um, especially if there isn't a tornado warning yet. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it looks like there's up to 20,000 people without power now in this general area. Uh, the Grand Blank actual township only has about 7,000 people in it, but there's a lot of little communi communities in and around Grand Blank. So um, definitely, uh, I mean, there's a lot of damage. Uh, something happened down there. Uh, I'm just hoping that it wasn't really bad. Um, so we're going to keep you updated on on that. And we're going to go back down to the Indianapolis storm uh, where it's it looks the same as it did when we left it. It's a big, nasty storm. It's It's got some hail in there. It's got some uh, some strong winds. In fact, one inch in diameter hail and 70 mile per hour winds are possible here. Um, but the the tornadic part, the the rotating part of the storm just isn't uh, it's not doing it right now. So um, there is no tornado warning, uh, but I would just about bet that uh, Mooresville and Martinsville, maybe even downtown Indianapolis will end up under a uh, severe thunderstorm warning here before too long as this moves right towards you. And it's moving fast too. Uh, 3,252 uh, people specifically in Genesee County without power right now. Uh, some more detailed reports uh, that are coming in through 911. A structure fire commercial uh, in Genesee County. A miscellaneous fire, miscellaneous fire. So, I, you know, when you start hearing about uh, multiple fire, uh, you know, um, calls... After a storm like this, it's definitely almost certainly related to uh, tornado damage. So uh, unfortunately, we, we probably do have some significant damage somewhere down here um, in the uh, Grand Blank area. Yeah, multiple reports of fire. Uh, Jared says, um, over the last year I've watched y'all. It's amazing how many tornadoes happen before they get warned. Yeah, yeah, there, there's, there's a few that happen that way. Um, it's, it's just a part of it. You know, it takes a while to issue the warning. Um, and that's why it's very important to be hyper weather aware on a severe weather day. And, and also, I mean, just to be honest with you, like it, it's a, why watching something like this is so important too. <clears throat> a lot of times a tornado warning, I mean, it's not going to pop up on your phone until after it's been issued. It's, you know, you know, it's not going to pop up on your TV. They're not going to come in and break coverage on your TV until after it's already been issued. You know, in something like this, we're, we're talking about a, a, 
a storm that may produce a, tor a tornado maybe hey, Ron, hours before it actually east. does. We are almost to Shelbyville. I was going to call tonight and head east on 64. Um, got some bubblers now right over the Louisville radar. I'm going to keep my little salt grain of faith here and pull off and see how these act over the next 10, 15 minutes. And uh, if they try to get their act together, we'll shoot north up 65 and see what they do. All right, that's Chris. He is down there near Louisville. But anyways, yeah, let's say two hours from now or whatever, uh, this storm right here decides to produce a tornado somewhere over here. Um, there's nowhere else uh, that you can watch the full evolution of that happen other than something like this and uh, you know, see it coming from so far uh, in advance, unless you're just tracking it on your own. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that, uh, it's just important to point that out. I think, uh, hey, Ohio, everybody's been wanting me to talk about Ohio all day. Guess what? Here we go. You're finally, you're finally on the board here because there is a severe thunderstorm warning, uh, for Ashland, uh, West Salem and, uh, Smithville, Ohio. Uh, this is just to the North of Mansfield. Uh, this is bringing around some one inch in diameter hail. So, be careful out there. It's not anything. Uh, it's not anything crazy. So uh, we're we're going to keep an eye on you uh, as those continue to grow. Um, this complex of storms will probably eventually make it to Ohio, and they'll be pretty strong too. Oh, and by the way, the there is officially a severe thunderstorm warning now for Indianapolis, just like we talked about earlier. That also includes Martinsville, Mooresville, Plainsville, uh, or Plainfield, and Greenwood. One inch in diameter hail and 60 mile per hour winds are on the way. Kim Perry, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm just looking and reading as some more information comes out. It's it's a lot of the same stuff, down power lines, down trees, um, you know, stuff like that up there. So hopefully that's all we continue to hear. Um, but unfortunately, um, it does look like there, there probably is at least a small area that was heavily uh, damaged by that tornado. And we'll, it might be until first light tomorrow before we really understand uh, the total impact. Yeah, it's 2 a.m., 2 a.m. here on the East Coast, um, 1 a.m. Central. We are now, um, we're back, I think, in a situation where we were earlier, where we, we might start winding down soon if we don't have any sort of uh, upticks uh, again in, in, in the near future. Um, and I, I Listen, I'm glad we did it last time, right? It's a good thing that we didn't be like, okay, tornado warning's over. All right, see you guys tomorrow. And then we end the stream and, and we didn't have the, uh, the lead time for the grand blank uh, warning. Um, I, I, I just want to avoid those situations as much as possible. So we're going to sit here for a little bit and we're going to watch the storm near Indianapolis and see if it tries to spin at all. 
If it doesn't, uh, we will wrap it up uh, here soon. Um, and um, it, we're also going to try to find some more news about the Grand Blank situation as well while we wait on that. Indianapolis is under a severe thunderstorm warning, yes. Uh, Jack Jack says, uh, Ryan, you and Andy saved me, my mom, and my best friend last year from a tornado in Whiteland, Indiana. Indiana. Um, it happened across the street from me. I hope I don't repeat it this year. Um, it, almost a year to this date. Jack, I hope so too. Uh, I think you'll be fine, and I appreciate you for watching and sharing that with us. Uh, the power's flickering in Ashland, Ohio. Yes, you've got a severe thunderstorm over there, uh, capable of producing some small hail and uh, some gusty winds. Apparently the sirens are going off in Flint again. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, you're good in Grand Blanc, Flint up there. Like the storms are are gone. They're they're past you. Um, the the storms that caused your problems are now moving into the Goodland, uh, Capac, and Brockway area. Uh, they're severe. Uh, they are rotating a little bit, but the tornado threat's much lower now with these storms up here. There is a little bit of a whisper of a storm that's going to brush the northern side of Detroit here. Uh, currently, it's uh, severe warned for West Bloomfield Township, uh, but it, it's, it's diminishing quite quickly uh, on its ascent uh, to the east there. Yeah, it looks like uh, this storm that's moving into Indianapolis might be very quickly uh, going outflow dominant, which would make the tornado uh, possibility uh, much lower on that one. Um, another storm popping up back here near Olney. Uh, we'll have to watch it. But uh, hopefully, we, you know, we just continue to see these uh, more linear kind of clusters of storms pop up and we don't have a whole lot of... Uh, a tornadic activity tonight. That's what we can hope for at this point. Yeah, the vast majority of Michigan is completely in the clear now. Large tree in the road covering the entire road. Uh, that's coming from Grand Blank. Yeah, things are really starting to pop off as far as convection goes um, in the Ohio Valley now. But it's just not it's not happening in the way um, that would have uh, verified our enhanced uh, tornado risk, I think. Uh, if you're hearing sirens in Indianapolis right now, um, I guess it's for the severe thunderstorm warning. There is no tornado warning in Indianapolis. 
Um, there is actually just a regular severe thunderstorm warning for one inch in diameter hail and 60 mile per hour winds. Certainly, um, nothing to balk at, uh, but also nothing to be too overly concerned with. Get the car covered, get yourself covered, get away from windows. You'll be just fine. The sirens are just going off everywhere, I guess. There there are currently um uh there are currently no tornado uh, warnings anywhere in the US. Let's get an update, another update from Brad, shall we? Brad, um, we're still watching that storm uh, that you uh, have been on for a while. It continues uh, to look impressive. Um, I don't know what your plan is from here. I don't know if you're going to stick with it or uh, dive south or what. We're still going. We're still live here. Um, I'm glad we stayed alive as long as we have to catch this storm and also the, the tornado that just happened up there in Michigan. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to go. I guess, I, honestly, I guess it kind of depends on how much longer you're going to go because I don't know if you've looked at surface uh, you know, uh, analysis or anything recently or, or, or any, any sort of data like that, but it, it does look quite favorable to yourself. Um, if there are storms that interact with that, there, there, we could see some more tornadoes tonight. So I don't know. What are you thinking? Yeah, so as far as this storm that we're on right now, we're going to keep up with it until uh, we get into Indianapolis. Um, I'm not so much worried about the southern part of it. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of an, uh, of a rotation action, a little bit, a little bit uh, southwest of Indianapolis, um, kind of in the middle of that, uh, kind of in the middle of that cell. Um, the storm that is back in uh, southwest of Robinson, I've had an eye on that as well, but that looks like it's mainly on the cold front because um, because uh, of the winds one thing that is a bit concerning as far as tornado potential our winds are not really that backed uh, across southern indiana we really want to see those winds maybe due south and they're more south southwest right now um, so i'm thinking uh, that your your best backed winds are going to be near this storm that we're on right now there may be some storms that get going um, in, uh, in, in, in in kentucky and uh, extreme southern uh, Indiana. The winds are a little bit better down there, especially near the Louisville area. Uh, but once you start getting up into like Indianapolis, southern, uh, southern, south central uh, Indiana, the winds aren't quite as bad unless you're up on this storm right here um, where the winds are a little bit better. So we're going to track it to Indianapolis. We're going to adjust from there. Um, if we don't see any development off that off of that cold front, we're probably going to call it a night. It's already two o'clock in the morning here. So. Um, but uh, we're going to keep going Indian into Indianapolis. As long as this uh, storm is showing signs of severity, uh, we're going to keep with it as long as we can keep up with it. It's moving 55 miles an hour, so it's pretty tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's still up in the air on what we're going to do. Uh, we're keeping an eye on the southern play, though, uh, and we can always drop south if we need to. Hey, Ryan, it's Chris. We stopped to watch these little bubblers coming through Louisville. Uh, now we're watching the storm south of Heavensville. Um, 
I, I think those may have a chance. Uh, pretty good environment down here where I'm at. Um, and actually, I think there may be uh, maybe even a hook trying to form on the storm there uh, to the southwest of uh, Evansville. I'm going to watch that one pretty close because I can get down there pretty quick. Okay. So that was an update from Brad and Chris. Uh, Brad's going to stick with the storm that is moving into Indianapolis. He's going to follow it into Indianapolis. By the time he makes it into, into Indianapolis, if there's no reason to leave Indianapolis, he's calling it a night. Good plan. Uh, Chris, however, is uh, a little bit farther to the south near Louisville. He's watching these little showers here. He's also watching the much larger uh, area of convection that's popped up south and west of Evansville. Um, so, you know, if he sees a reason to go after that, he, he will. Um, so, yeah, it's, we're still watching. We're still waiting. Uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Um, and I'm still in the same boat as I was earlier. We're going to watch a little while longer. And we'll end if we don't have any sort of major development uh, in the, in the next little bit, there is, um, yeah, there, there's a good environment out there the, the, especially just in terms of wind shear, um, uh, in this general vicinity. Um, so there is a part of me that wants to wait and see if anything pops out, uh, in the next little bit. But once this line, once the cold front kind of sweeps through that environment, um, uh, you know, a lot of that, Energy is going to go away. A lot of the favorability for tornadoes is going to go away. So stuff still needs to pop up in front of it. Uh, and so we'll see. We're, we're going to watch a little while longer here and keep you updated on what's going on with this storm, at least as it goes through Indianapolis. Still looking for one inch in diameter hail and 60 mile per hour winds over the next little bit as the storm moves through the town. Uh, as far as tornadic potential goes the the rotation is not really there much anymore so um, I'm mostly looking at a hail and, and wind and rain uh, situation as it moves through Indianapolis Yeah, it does look like there's a lot of convection, so it could very quickly just turn into a big mess of a line. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Ryan, uh, imminent tornado nor uh, southwest of Mooresville, Indiana, just south of TIDS, the terminal radar there. You can look at that. A very tight couplet right there, unwarned at the moment. Um, getting ready to pass towards uh, County Road 67 there in the... Uh, far northern Morgan County. It may have been a brief spin-up tornado there, but you can verify over the last few scans that it definitely tried to spin up and is evident on the um, the next rad radar as well. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Andy. Uh, this is our storm uh, up here near um, Indianapolis, uh, just to the south and uh, west of uh, Mooresville, I believe uh, we are looking at what um, either is or was a, a, a quick a tornado, a brief spin up. I don't know if it's still down. I don't know how long it would still be down if it continues, but let's just assume that uh, we've got a, a situation developing here and we might as well, if we're in Mooresville, right? If we're in Mooresville, Gasburg or Sundown uh, Manor, uh, we might as well take shelter here. Let me go back to that terminal radar. Yeah, you can see here somewhere between uh, Monrovia and Bunker Hill. We had uh, something going on. And the possibility of uh, that happening again is high. And, and this whole mess, this is a similar... Not quite exactly the same, but this is a similar situation as to what we were dealing with earlier whenever we had that huge complex of storms around Paw Paw 
and uh, what was it, uh, Hackley, and you know all these places in in Michigan where it was one big storm and what it looked like on radar, but there was a lot of small areas of uh, of rotation. Something similar could come out of this, and we just seen one of the uh, the areas of rotation try to uh, produce a tornado here near near Monrovia, uh, in um, in Indiana. So Mooresville, West Newton, Brooklyn. Uh, all you guys need to, uh, uh, you know, consider uh, taking shelter here. Watch out. Oh, there you go. Apparently the uh, the sirens in Genesee County were going off continuously until just uh, three minutes ago. If you're just now tuning in, we don't have any tornado warnings right now, but we've got a big severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible uh, for Mooresville, Brooklyn, West Newton, and even uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. We're watching one specific area of the storm that has uh, enough rotation to uh, kind of cause concern for the potential for a tornado uh, to be there, or, or at least there was at one point, and that's moving up towards Mooresville right now. So uh, take shelter if you're in Mooresville and get ready for a big storm uh, if you're in any area that I talked about, including uh, Indianapolis, Beach Grove, Southport, Greenwood, Bluff Creek, or Bargersville, uh, Indiana. Big storm moving into Indianapolis now. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing some video now out of Michigan. Um, still mostly seeing um, uh, trees and, and power lines down and stuff so far. We, I promise you we'll let you know as soon as we hear something about the more substantial structures in the middle of the, the town there. If you're just now tuning in, we got a severe thunderstorm warning for Indianapolis, and the storm is starting now in Indianapolis. We've had a couple areas of rotation produce what we believe may have been some uh, brief tornadoes in this very storm. Uh, so you need to be taking this one seriously, get, into, uh, get away from windows, get inside, um, and uh, just hunker down at least for 30 minutes. It's, this is a big storm. It's going to take a while for it to pass. Actually, you know what? It might not take too long because it's moving so fast. I forget. These storms are moving a lot faster than the ones that we have been uh, tracking up to the north. Hmm. Sorry about the yawns. It is going on 2.30 a.m. here in my neck of the woods. Ryan, not sure if we're putting too much weight in this uh, storm.net, the AI program that kind of says it can predict tornadoes an hour out, uh, but it's got a bullseye on this storm just to our north uh, west of Greenwood um, says within an hour or so if we put any we'll, we'll see how it performs it's done well tonight it did well with the Michigan uh, tornadoes so uh, we'll see yeah uh, don't know um, I don't know either how much stock we're putting into the uh, AI storm 
algorithm plotter storm net <laughs> thing, but uh, uh, you know, uh, Brad Arnold is watching it. He's looking at it and he's noticing that you know this storm might be something that we need to watch. Uh, and of course, uh, over the next little bit, we uh, with or without that, we would be watching it. That's right. Cincinnati looks fine right now. It looks completely fine right now. Um, the area that we're kind of focused in on is Indianapolis. Pretty nasty storm moving through. There's a couple areas of rotation that we're watching. Um, but, uh, you know, nothing... Nothing crazy at the moment. Um, that that storm doesn't have a lot of rotation with it. Uh, these storms that are popping up to the south and west of Evansville also aren't really rotating that much. Um, I'm trying to see if... Uh, oh, is the Columbus radar down? Well, anyways, um, the, the severe thunderstorm warning up here in northeast Ohio has been allowed to expire, but it's still a pretty good storm that's getting ready to move into Akron, Ohio. Uh, up here in Michigan, uh, Detroit, once again, the northern side of Detroit is getting ready to get grazed by a pretty strong storm. Uh, Rochester Hills and Troy and Macomb Township get ready for some small hail and some gusty winds. Same thing for you guys over here near Sar Sarnia. Um, and then those storms will be moving into Canada uh, and we'll watch them uh, as they go towards London and Hamilton, maybe Toronto later tonight. But they'll continue to weaken the farther east they go. Kim Perry, thank you so much. Michael Rano, thank you. Um, Crystal says, I'm in southern Evansville almost to Henderson, Kentucky, and it's quiet and calm. Yeah, uh, if you're out in front of the cold front here, um, it's very warm, nice, and calm. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? There's probably a couple of places where the winds are pretty intense uh, at the surface here out in front of the cold front. Um, but, you know, it's it feels like a spring night, which is one of the reasons why we are concerned about the storms in the first place, because it's not going to take long at all tonight for the temperatures to plummet. Uh, in fact, a lot of Illinois, Indiana... Well, you guys are going to see snow flurries tonight. I, you might not believe me, uh, or, or early tomorrow morning, I should say. Um, well, not tomorrow morning, but this morning. <laughs> it is tomorrow morning. Uh, you know, very quickly the temperatures are going to plummet uh, early in the morning, uh, and then into the uh, noon time period, uh, flurries will, will will come replace the uh, the warm air and the rain that we're seeing now in a lot of these places. Okay, so this is from uh, Genesee County 911. Uh, Dort Highway at Gibson Road will be closed until further notice. We are getting multiple calls from Grand Blank of downed wires and debris in the area. Please avoid the area until further notice and leave plenty of room for first responders. So definitely hearing about damage from Grand Blank, but so far not devastation, which is good, but still uh, it's early.
Ryan Hydrate. Ryan, where's the gallon jug? I don't have the gallon jug right now. I need it, though. Ryan, uh, the plan right now, we're going to watch this storm that's near Brooklyn. It's about to... Uh, uh, it's about to ingest that storm on the forward flank of it. Uh, I want to see if it's going to produce a tornado. If it doesn't produce one, we're probably going to call it a night and head back up through Indianapolis. But uh, we're going to track this a little bit further east and see if we can start getting getting this act together. Okay. All right. So that's the latest from Storm Chaser Brad Arnold. It does look like a little bit of a new sales trying to pop up over here near Shelbyville. Uh, we're watching that. We're watching this uh, storm here, but it's I think it's on the cold uh, front. Uh, this is um, this is interesting. I don't know. I, it, it won't take long at all for the uh, the cold front to catch up to it and kind of disrupt whatever's going on there. But we'll have to watch this um, as it approaches Owensboro. That's for sure. Hey, Ryan, it's Chris. One more thing, and then I'm going to hush for a little bit. I can't help but to look at uh, models going on through tonight. But the newest HRRR just dropped, and it is now trying to say that central and eastern Kentucky may have a heightened tornado threat through the early morning hours. So I'm assuming that line that is now south of Evansville is going to try to strengthen, maybe even try to get some action going as it moves on up towards the 65 and 75 corridor. Yeah. So what Chris is talking about is, um, that little bubble, that little, uh, area of energy that will wander around central and Eastern Kentucky through seven or 8 AM tomorrow or today. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's uh, another thing to consider here. Uh, even after we end the stream, there's going to be a, an extended period of time uh, where tornadoes are still possible all the way through the very early morning hours here. I'm just trying to inspect all these storms little by little. Yeah, I mean, I, it looks like this, this one's going to blow past Indianapolis here, uh, probably turn into uh, just a, a big line of storms that once the, the cold front catches up with it. I, I mean, like if if there's going to be any more storms that look like they might produce a tornado or produce a tornado, they're going to have to pop up here soon uh, in this area, I think. Uh, yeah, obviously, that's not accounting for what may happen much later to, uh, into the morning uh, in central Kentucky, eastern Kentucky and those kind of places. But in, in the near future, something's going to have to pop off here soon if, if we're going to see a realized threat. Mm 
Daniel. Thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate you. Any worries for Louisville or can you go to bed? The answer to both of those can be yes. Um, we've got storms coming to Louisville. We've got a, you know, a chance of severe weather tonight. But yes, you can also go to bed. You've, you've slept through chances of severe weather before, I promise you. Just make sure you've got a way of getting warnings. Sarah Brown says, I hope you get some rest soon, Ryan. Thank you for streaming through the Indiana storm. I know I'm safe when you are alive. Sarah, no problem at all. Doesn't bother me to stay up. I know, like, you guys can probably tell that I'm tired, but, like, hey, sometimes you get tired. Uh, you know, it'd be... It'd be different if I did this every single day, but we're we're here for specific uh, events, and you know, I'm fine. Man, I'm trying to read the chat. A lot of people are still just asking about specific towns. Um, I don't, you know, I, I can't go through every single town and, and, and tell you what's happening there. Just know that if I'm not talking about your town right now, it's probably a good sign. There's storms popping up more widespread. There's more coverage of storms now. So you might be hearing some thunder in some places I'm not talking about. Um, but as far as like who's got the best chance of seeing really severe weather or maybe a potential uh, tornado. Uh, we're covering all those areas pretty, uh, pretty closely right now. So it's a good thing if I'm not talking about your uh, specific neighborhood. You'll have to watch very closely as the Shelbyville storm uh, continues to grow, I guess. Uh, we'll see if it kind of skirts out in front of the Boeing segment here that's moving out of Indianapolis and uh, if it tries to rotate. Uh, also, we're going to continue to watch the storms just to the south of Evansville. They it, Right now, they don't look like anything uh, spectacular, um, but they're ahead of the cold front. They're in a decent environment. Um, it, we're also going to, you know, watch it and see if anything else pops up around Louisville. If not, then um, once again, <laughs> we're going to wrap it up here soon. I promise I will get out of your hair. Owensboro, Kentucky, are we good to go to bed? Um, yeah, but there's a storm like there's a storm coming. As long as you don't care to sleep through the storm, you're good. If there's a tornado warning, make sure you've got some way of having that wake you up through your phone or hopefully you've got a no weather radio or something like that. Call if you've got a buddy overseas. <laughs> be like, hey, you know, <laughs> call me, wake me up. I don't, I don't know. You know, just figure out a, a way to get a, woken up in the event of a tornado warning. And you're fine. Um, uh, just a quick uh, blurb announcement for anybody that's listening to me in behind the scenes production room. I don't think we're going to have any more storm chasers tonight. There's no need to switch them around. So 
Um, if you guys want to go ahead and head out, uh, you can. If you want to stick around, you can. Um, I don't know how long, much longer I'm going to be here, um, but I don't, I don't feel like leaving like in the next 10 minutes or anything. So it is almost, it's going on 3 a.m. So anybody who wants to, uh, who wants to leave can leave. I've got this. And Andy's got this too, he says. So we've got this. Zach says, remember a couple of hours, hours ago when you said you was going to pull the plug? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But there's a reason why we didn't, and we waited around. Because we knew the plug maybe didn't need to be pulled. Yeah, if you're just now tuning in, we've got storms popping up uh, pretty much all over the place now in uh, Illinois and Indiana. They're starting to increase in coverage in extreme, extremely southern uh, Illinois and western Kentucky as well. Um, so far, they're not causing many problems outside of some severe weather uh, effects, right? We've got uh, 60 mile an hour winds coming into Linton, uh, Indiana. Hey, Ryan, not sure if you're still live or not. Uh, we're coming up on Franklin right now. I just this this storm system to the north that's coming through Indianapolis. It's already worked its way through Indianapolis. Um, appears to be mainly outflow dominant, uh, with a uh, damaging wind threat, uh, hail threat. Um, so I don't think the tornado potential is, is very good with this. So we're probably going to call it a night on that. Um, I'm going to keep the stream rolling as we go through Indianapolis, just so that way we can, uh, you know, document the uh, strong storm that's working its way uh, through there. But we're going to hop on 65 and go north. All right, sounds good, Brad. I don't know. I I don't know how long I'm going to be live. We're just kind of you, we keep waiting 30 minutes to end the stream, and then something happens within that 30 minutes, and we keep extending it another 30 minutes. So if that happens again, then uh, who know? We might be here till 6 a.m. I don't know, <laughs> but we we will keep your stream up as long as you're streaming. All right. Uh, okay. Um. So that's Brad's update. Um, anyways, uh, sounds good, man. Just just let me know uh, if, if you decide to uh, end the stream, uh, but I'm gonna keep it going um, while we're headed up north. It should be. I mean, at, at the very least, it's severe, severe thunderstorm. Uh, so it'll be a strong storm. Um, severe thunderstorm warning for Linton, Indiana. Uh, get ready for 60 mile an hour winds and one inch in diameter hail. Also, Worthington, Ellettsville, and Paragon, Indiana. You guys have got the same thing coming to you. Uh, the bigger uh, severe thunderstorm here is moving out of Indianapolis now and getting ready to move into Greenwood, Greenfield, and Knightstown. It's going to go down I-70 here, uh, and that's going to bring about uh, some small hail and some 60 mile per hour winds. Uh, and that's pretty much all the severe weather we have right now associated with that. Um, there is a severe thunderstorm warning right now in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a severe thunderstorm approaching Erie, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, with one inch in diameter hail. Um, also, uh, one last severe thunderstorm warning in Michigan before this line ex exits the country uh, and goes into uh, Canada, uh, and that's for places like Kimball, Marysville, and Sarnia. Uh, make sure you're ready for potentially uh, some small hail and some 60 mile per hour winds up there. Uh, what else is going on um, outside of the severe storms that we have? We do have some strong storms uh, forming just to the south and west of Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, they're, they've got a lot of lightning. They've got some really heavy rain, probably some hail. Um, uh, so we're watching those pretty closely as they move into Owensboro. I know we've got a lot of people watching in Owensboro. So you guys let us know what happens when these get there. Um, are they strong? Are they, uh, you know... What, what, what are we dealing with here? On radar, they look pretty intense, so we'll see what happens there. 
Um, and then we're also watching, actually, right now, uh, some storms bubbling up near Lexington, Kentucky. Lightning and thunder uh, is uh, in the air uh, between Lexington and Winchester. This is very close to where I'm broadcasting from. Uh, we'll see if that continues, um, and we might get some storm coverage out here in uh, central and eastern Kentucky tonight as well. Looks like there's already some reports uh, coming in, too, from Indianapolis of uh, some damage. We've got some three-inch tree limbs down uh, in uh, downtown Indianapolis being reported, so definitely was a strong storm that just went through there. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. Like just whenever, whenever she feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a new work schedule, 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. Every day. You got a considerable... Uh, considerable severe thunderstorm warning for Newcastle, Knightston, and Greenfield, Indiana. XJ File says, I appreciate the stream and the efforts to keep everyone safe and aware. Thank you for the kind words. Jennifer, thanks for becoming a high risk member. Ashley says, we're getting very strong winds near central Indiana. Um, Sorry, I'm just now seeing some messages I've got to respond to. Uh, we, we probably won't do an extra video tomorrow. because I, I'm pretty sure that this is pretty much count. We'll, we'll go over the forecast for tomorrow before this live stream ends. Today, my bad. The sun will start coming up and I'll still be saying tomorrow. If you are just now tuning in, we've got several severe thunderstorm warnings currently in central Indiana. We are watching them just to see if, uh, if anything happens with them and maybe they turn uh, tornadic. We're also watching the area just ahead of them and seeing if there's any sort of storms that will pop up out in front of them that can maybe take advantage of a slightly better uh, environment for severe storms. So. Uh, if that doesn't start happening soon, we'll probably just end the live stream and, and, you know, just continue with the knowledge that severe weather will happen all night tonight in the uh, risk area.
Thank you, D-Man. Uh, Brad Arnold should be getting into the uh, the storm here. He's he's right on the 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 front of it, so he's going to be going through the uh, the part of the storm uh, that's currently going through Bargersville and New Whiteland. Um, once again, this is a part of our considerable severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, so we're about to witness maybe some. Hey, Ron, uh, it's Chris. I've watched the stuff down south hail. of Evansville. It's just, in my opinion, it's come together way too quickly. Um, it's just coming into one big blob, one big line. I think there may be some hail and some wind associated with it, but I think the tornado risk is generally pretty low right now from the way it looks. So we're going to just mosey east and see what happens through the night. Okay, so that's Ryan, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up. There may be a storm. There's no way we can get to it. It's moving too fast. Uh, but that storm that is on the doorstep of Fairfield, uh, Indiana, is, is showing signs. It's, it's an embedded supercell. Wait, where? Did he say Fairfield? <sighs> yeah, there's a couple um, storms trying to pop out out in front of the the, the little line here that we've got uh, in uh, Indianapolis. We're watching those two. It's kind of turning it into its own little MCV, a little bit of a, like a little tiny warm front on, on the uh, eastern side of it. I don't know what town uh, this uh, Brad's going through right now, but it, it's beautiful. It looks like, uh, looks like a fun place to be like during Christmas or something. This is, yeah, Franklin. <laughs> Franklin, Indiana. Oh. <laughs> are you are you heading out? <laughs> All right. Huh? Oh, okay. Well, y'all be careful. We'll see you bright and early in the morning, nine a.m. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, things are going to start looking a little bit less beautiful here soon. He's going to enter the uh, the severe storm probably within the next five minutes or so. The storm is moving very fast, yes. Uh, all of the storms in Indiana and Illinois are definitely moving really fast. How many tornadoes were there today? I'm not sure yet. We don't have an official count, but I know that of at least seven, I think, uh, reports. And I've seen pictures of at least two or three. And uh, I think that there's probably definitely been more than that. Uh, I don't know how he's done it, but, uh, <laughs> 
Brad Arnold is steel dry. He's about to hit the wall of wind and rain here very soon, though, I believe. And he's, uh, once again, near Franklin. Oh, I know how he's done it. He's actually, he's driving to the east, so he's running away from the storm. As soon as he makes uh, the left-hand turn up here to go onto Interstate 65, he will be in the, uh, he will be in the storm. Night's going well. Uh, SM McKenzie 53, thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate it. Uh, Laura R says, not all, not, wait, not all heroes wear capes, some warsh, warsh capes. What? I, th I think I get it. Okay, Brad is now getting onto Interstate 65. He's going to, he, this is going to be uh, his. Final intercept of the night, I believe. He's going to go head first into our severe thunderstorm, uh, the tail end of our severe thunderstorm that just went through Indianapolis. Uh, and uh, it's now moving into Franklin and Needham in, in Indiana. So we'll see what happens with that. He should run into some hail, especially, uh, definitely some strong winds, I believe. What's next for Indianapolis, Indiana? Um, what's next? It's a little bit more rain. I think the biggest storm of the night is definitely out of the way. There's going to be a little bit more rain. Um, and then maybe, maybe uh, like six hours from now, maybe a flurry of snow or two. Give me just a second. I got to go get me a new water.
back. We're watching uh, Brad Arnold drive through uh, thunderstorm up there south of uh, Indianapolis. And actually, if you look at radar, he's somehow managed to find the weakest part of the storm to drive through there. The, the really severe part of the storm is just to his east. Um, so uh, hopefully his drive is not too interrupted here as he I think he is probably going to call it a night there in Indianapolis. He's on his way. Home for the night, I guess you could say. Uh, yeah, there's a couple little sales that are popping up out in front of that line here. Um, uh, just to the west of Cincinnati, northwest of Cincinnati. But they're not, uh, I mean, even those aren't looking that impressive right now. Owensboro, you've got your storm. It's happening. Uh, you've got a severe thunderstorm warning now, too. One inch in diameter hail, 60 mile per hour winds. That one's actually not moving too fast. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens there. That's going to be moving towards Knott'sville and Paleville next. And then I promised y'all we would do this before the end of the stream. So let's go ahead and look at the HRRR, future radar, whatever you want to call it. For the remainder of the night. Or, I'm sorry, for the remainder of the morning. Uh, I'm actually going to use Radar Omega for this. We are going to look at the HRRR. Okay, so according to the HRRR model, um, by 3 a.m., which is right now, this is what the radar should look like. And it's not too far off, right? We've got, uh, you know, we've got storms back here that are forming. Uh, we do have some convection that's popping up around uh, Lexington. Uh, yeah, this, this looks right to me. So what, what then are things going to look like maybe around 5 a.m.? All right, according to the HRRR, which has been notoriously bad. <laughs> I don't want anybody to, to take too much stock into what this model is showing. But according to the HRRR, uh, we're going to have a lot more convection uh, in uh, Kentucky, uh, down into Tennessee, uh, but it's going to be mostly linear. Okay, uh, so winds and hail are going to be the main threat. The tornado threat will be a little bit lower. Um, we're also going to have some isolated stuff up here in Ohio as well, but I don't see... I don't see it like a huge um, uh, problem up there. Uh, storms are going to continue to move across Kentucky uh, until 8 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, storms actually probably will be pretty strong between Huntington, uh, Richmond, London, uh, Somerset, down towards Nashville uh, around 8 a.m. tomorrow. Um, there will be a very, very slight chance of a spin-up tornado along this line and an even slighter chance that maybe some of these cells that pop up out in front of the line uh, rotate enough to produce uh, a tornado. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's going to continue until the afternoon. Uh, and, you know, really the storms are going to die off pretty quick over the Appalachian Mountains and then try to resurge uh, once they get into uh, the, the Carolinas could see a pretty strong squall line of uh, damaging winds moving through places like Durham uh, and, uh, you know, uh, down towards Fayetteville, North Carolina and Camden, uh, South Carolina around 6 to 8 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, but then eventually that'll even fizzle out as we go into the evening hours. And uh, we're just going to be left with a, a wind event for the northeast and a little bit of snow, a little bit of lake effect, lake enhanced snow back there in the northeast um, as we go into the day on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So if within the next couple of hours, we don't see, oh, I'd say within the next hour, we don't see uh, tornadoes popping out of these cells over here. This is, you know, 
This, is, this, this will be more of what the story actually looks like. Which will still be interesting, still dangerous. So just be ready for that. Hey Ryan, uh, it's Brad. Obviously, I, I, I may be the only one out here still chasing all this garbage, but I uh, just wanted to let you know. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and end the stream. It is three o'clock, and everybody in uh, in the Tahoe is pretty tired. It's been a long, draining day, uh, but it's been a fun day. It's been fun to get back out on the road. Um, we're staying in Lafayette, Indiana tonight. Uh, we're gonna stay there, get a couple hours sleep, then head back home in the morning. Um, and then uh, start looking towards the next severe weather event, uh, whenever that may be. We're getting to that time where every week it seems like we're uh, where, where we're uh, tracking something. So, um, yep, uh, just just gonna go ahead and end the stream and uh, have a good rest of the night. Uh, all right, sounds good. Thank you, Brad. Uh, we will see you next week, probably, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> all right, be good. Be careful. Um, so Brad's ending the stream and, um, I think that he's our last one. I, I, well, actually we've got Steven out there still, but I don't have anybody to switch his, his spot. So it's all right. We're going to end our stream here soon too. I, he, he was speaking about next week and, and like the next storm. We might as well look at the, uh, we might as well look at the Euro, right? We might as well look at what's going to be happening downstream. This is the culprit. This is what's causing our uh, severe weather tonight and what will continue to cause our, you know, inclement weather tomorrow and, and all that kind of stuff. It's just a, a big trough, a big kink in the jet stream here. Um, what happens after that gets out of here, though? Okay, uh, our cold air kind of sinks into the northeast. We've got some strong winds, some storms that are moving out to sea. Then what? Thursday, Friday, what's that looking like? Well, the opposite of a trough moves in. We've got ourselves a ridge. And, and the opposite of what's happening right now is calm, right? We're, we're going to have some probably some pretty quiet, calm weather for the vast majority of the central and eastern U.S. Uh, through this weekend. In fact, things are going to get really warm. You, you know, it was really warm yesterday. It was warm today before the cold front come through. That, you know, similar kind of uh, situation is, is about to unfold as this ridge builds up uh, next week. Or I'm sorry, this weekend. Uh, things are going to get extremely warm over in the Rockies, Central Plains. Um, and that's just going to set the stage for yet again another uh, trough to, to try to come through. Now, um, a couple days ago, this one looked crazy. Big, huge, <laughs> negatively tilted monster trough. Um but now uh, this looks more reasonable, but it's still enough of a divot here uh, to promote some lift out in front of it. So we're going to watch this to potentially uh, produce uh, a storm um, as we uh, go into uh, the, the, er the first part of March. Um, and then uh, another ridge comes in and then another trough. So, yeah, story of our life uh, for probably the entire first part of spring. We're going to see things get really warm, nice, and then something's going to try to come in and ruin that, make it cold for just a couple days, but in that transition period, we're going to have storms. That's spring for you. Um, and yeah, so, but as of right now, there's nothing huge on the horizon that I'm uh, looking for. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. I'll have a, a much more detailed uh, look at that uh, in, the, in the next uh, extra video that we do. It won't be tomorrow, um, but uh, maybe uh, what is today? It won't be today, uh, but it might be tomorrow, Thursday. And then we're going to have a main channel uh, video go up as well. Uh, hey, Ron, it's soon. Chris. We're still sitting here at this truck stop watching those storms down near Owensboro. Um, the storm that just passed by Owensboro is starting to what looks like it's starting to push out from that line and it's not going to take much to get that to wrap around so that may be one if you're still alive to watch over the next hour or so for any tornadic possibilities yeah for sure good catch by uh, chris there i mean this whole thing is not much back here towards owensboro but 
There is a little something trying to happen here just to the east of Owensboro. This is looks to me like the there's a storm here, uh, and it's trying its best to let that inflow in. It's trying to uh, allow for some spin to happen here. We'll see. We'll see if it actually does happen. Um, we'll give it a couple frames. If we don't see any major developments, we'll, we'll end the stream. I promise. <laughs> It's going to happen eventually. <laughs> oh. Louisville, Kentucky update. Um, yeah, uh, right now, uh, everything's perfectly fine and normal in Louisville. No storms. However, sorry. The storm that we're talking about that, that, that Chris just brought to my attention uh, is moving in the direction of Louisville. Uh, <coughs> and eventually Louisville will get a storm tonight, whether it's from that or from the line that's forming behind it. Um, but yeah, we're just we're still watching that and, and kind of playing it by ear. We're, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen in Louisville tonight, but at some point you're going to get a storm. Uh, yeah, it's currently 3.05 a.m. on the East Coast, 2.05 a.m. Central. I've been streaming now for 8 hours and 20 minutes. We've had some really intense moments during the stream, and we've had some really not-so-intense moments as well. Lots of waiting. Sorry, just looking over some messages. Yeah, just uh, lots of waiting. And uh, it looks like there's a new SPC mesoscale thing to, to talk about. from Storm Prediction Center. Isolated tornado threat will likely continue for a few more hours. Large hail and damaging uh, winds will also be possible. So that's for the northern, the northeastern side of the tornado watch that they've already issued. Um, so I mean, so basically, you know, an isolated tornado threat is going to continue for a few more hours. We knew that. Um, and uh, they, I, they're just reminding us. Just like I'm reminding you. Like, hey, like, even if Ryan goes to sleep here in, in a couple moments, the, an isolated tornado threat will continue for a few more hours. Do you think there's a risk for tornadoes in Western Ohio? Um, yes, it's not a huge risk, uh, and it's mostly concern, um, concentrated in Southwestern Ohio. Um, that's why you're under a tornado watch right now. Are you taking song requests? I wish. If we could play uh, copyrighted music, I definitely would. So uh, the storm oh, that's east of Owensboro uh, doesn't look too impressive to me. 
um, it's trying, but it's not doing it. It's not doing it. Is it a tornado watch or a warning? Right now, there are only tornado watches. There are no warnings currently. And uh, some of the places that we were at the beginning of the stream talking about having severe weather uh, are already starting to see snow. In fact, it won't be long before heavy snow uh, is moving into DeKalb, uh, Rockford, Aurora, and Chicago here uh, before too long. Columbus, Ohio, still, still nothing going on over there. There was a storm that did, you know, drop some hail, but uh, nothing crazy. Shelby says, let's play a game called Will Ryan Actually Call It a Night or Get Himself Trapped into Another Two Hours of Streaming. I'm not trapped. I want to be here, guys. It may not, maybe my facial expressions don't, you know, give that vibe. <laughs> but, like, I swear I'm not trapped. I'm having a blast. Uh, Casey says, Owensboro local here. I just watched the storm pass by. Confirmed pea-sized hail, strong gusts, and lots of lightning. Yep, I enjoy uh, talking about the weather. I'm trying my best to find uh, uh, questions in the chat that I haven't already answered. Really, the only thing that we're waiting for as far as the, the radar goes and whether or not to, you know there's anything else interesting to talk about there is that storm near Owensboro. Um, we're watching... You know, the little couple of things that are popping up ahead of the line there in Indianapolis, but nothing's really happening with that. I'm watching these storms here in uh, eastern Kentucky. I, I would like to uh, maybe see a, a flash of lightning on my drive home <laughs> uh, because it's been a while. Uh, but, I, you know, these storms really aren't doing much over here in uh, in my neck of the woods either. So it might be time to actually wrap it up. Uh, Andy's still here with me. Andy, you got any anything you want to say before we wrap it up or what? You got anything for us? Yeah, Ryan. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> You're tired. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. All right. Um, so as we've said a million times tonight, thank you guys for watching. Uh, the tornado, th the severe weather threat is going to be, can, it's going to continue uh, through the night. Uh, into the early morning hours tomorrow uh, or today, sorry. <laughs> uh, so just make sure you got a way of receiving warnings and go to sleep, get some rest, and uh, we'll see you very soon. Okay? We'll see you very soon. And uh, that's it.
That's all. Subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.